ABC News Live. Dan Macedo, we want to get right to our top story. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy is speaking out ahead of today's vote for a new Speaker of the House. It's unclear whether he has the votes to avoid an historic loss at this point, but he says he's not going anywhere. Uh, we, we did have an intense conference, and it's intense for a purpose. We have worked for a long time. I've been leader for four years. I came into this position and we had less than 200 members. We are now sitting in the majority. We put forth to the American public a commitment to America. There's times we're going to have to argue with our own members if they're looking at for only positions for themselves, not for the country. ABC News political director Rick Klein joins me live now along with congressional correspondent Rachel Scott, who's there on Capitol Hill. Rachel, you were there and McCarthy giving this speech touting his accolades, but it sounds like he's admitting that he doesn't have the votes. And Diane, I'm told that he admitted exactly that behind closed doors in that private meeting with Republicans. He acknowledged that he will likely lose on this first ballot when it happens, when the House uh, convenes at noon for the start of the new Congress. He knows right now that he does not have the 218 votes that he needs in order to secure the speakership. But you heard him say to us right there in that press gaggle that he is not going down without a fight. He's willing to drag this out for as long as it takes. He believes this is about a leadership about winning the majority and so he's standing his ground now I'm told that this was a very heated meeting behind closed doors with these Republicans at times McCarthy even uh, once used profanity I'm told and that led uh, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert who came out out at the right before Kevin McCarthy to come out and say that they're being uh, sworn at instead of being sworn in she says that she's now voting against him so at this point uh, his problems are stacking up but it's just no clear path on how he's going to get to that 218 and now, Rick, Congressman Matt Gates said we could see cherry blossoms before we have the next speaker, essentially saying they are ready to dig in and ride this out. What exactly do they want? Well, it's warm in Washington, but not warm enough for cherry blossoms quite yet. Uh, look, a lot of what they want is, uh, is symbolic and, and a little bit opaque to outsiders. But part of what they want is the ability to oust a speaker if they if they choose to do so. Uh, right now, Speaker McCarthy, or would-be Speaker McCarthy, has already negotiated down the threshold for any as few as five members of Congress to be able to go to the House floor and get an up or down vote on a speakership to continue. McCarthy says that's already a very low number, and it is, but these members want it to be just one, any individual member. And, as McCarthy called out a few minutes ago, many of them are looking for side deals. They're looking to be treated in certain ways, be allowed to have uh, special setups, even special counsel's offices and the like, uh, committee assignments at stake. So much of this is personal at this stage. And that's what was extraordinary about McCarthy is that he said these are members that are out for themselves as opposed to the good of the House Republican Conference. McCarthy recognizes if he gives these members everything they want, he may get those votes, but he loses power along the way, and he may not be able to keep that job uh, any, any longer than the fight has been to, to, to get it in the first place. So, Rachel, if McCarthy doesn't win, what happens next? <laughs> yeah, that is still very murky at this point. It's unclear necessarily where this goes from here. Look, we know that there will be a first ballot. If that does fail, that we go to multiple rounds of voting. That's something that has not happened in 100 years. But this is the first order of business for the House, which means that no bills can be passed. Members will not be sworn in until they elect a Speaker of the House. So this can drag on for hours. It could drag on for days. We could see the House adjourn and then come back in and then try and do another round of uh, voting, more ballots uh, that would be cast. At, at this point, there are two groups that have emerged here. You have the only Kevins, you have Republicans that are only supporting Kevin McCarthy, and then you have the never Kevins, and that is a small group of conservatives that will not support Kevin McCarthy, but that is enough to block his speaker's gavel at this point. Even though he's already moved into that office, he still does not have the vote. So at this point, he's still struggling and searching for the path, Diane. So, Rick, what happens to business in Washington in the meantime. If they can't get a vote on a speaker, what then? The House can't do anything until they get a Speaker of the House. It means you don't have any committees. It means you don't have any floor votes. It means you don't even have the, the ceremonial swearing in that, that would allow members of Congress to start doing their business. It's uncharted territory. The only time um, that, that this has happened in any substantial way was back in the 1860s, and Congress did a lot less back then. Uh, so there really isn't a way to do this, and that may be the biggest pressure on members of Congress to, to change some of the rules, to allow a vote to go forward, maybe with a, a lower number than 
218. There's precedent for that happening. Uh, there's also the, the possibility of just delaying it for a day until negotiations take forward. I, I don't think it's a reasonable scenario to say we're here to cherry blossom season or we're here to set new records as McCarthy just threatened. I think they come to some kind of a deal. But clearly at this stage, as McCarthy himself admits, when that when the con when the convening happens at noon and just half an hour from now, nobody has the votes to become the House Speaker. And Rachel, the other question is, even if he does win, if he does pull this off, how does he then unify the party after all this? Is this something where everyone kind of takes a strong stance to get what they want, and then once they find a compromise, everyone falls in line? Or does McCarthy have his work cut out for him one way or the other? Oh, he definitely has his work cut out for him. And I think Rick really knit, uh, hit the nail on the head when he said uh, that at this point, even if McCarthy does prevail, he's certainly coming into speakership as a more weakened leader. You have uh, members of his own conference that are saying that they have a trust issue with him, that they don't believe that he's conservative enough, that they don't believe that he is trustworthy. And of course, this all matters because we have this razor thin majority in the House here. So yes, certainly it matters today when it comes to voting for who will be the next Speaker of the House. But it's also going to matter for key pieces of legislation that could possibly emerge and get through the House. And will also matter because Kevin McCarthy has now made it easier for members of his own conference to essentially remove him if he is elected to become the next Speaker of the House. So he would certainly be entering uh, into leadership in a more weakened role. And that is concerning for any leader, Diane. All right, Rachel Scott, Rick Klein, thank you. And I want to bring in ABC News contributor Amanda Renteria, former national political director for Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign, along with conservative columnist and National Review editor Ramesh Panuru for more on this. Amanda, when you're looking at this scenario as a Democrat, are you happy or are you worried? I'm, I'm worried. This is an absolute disaster. You need leadership in the House to move anything forward. And e even as you start to lay the groundwork for what does 2023 look like? What are the key priorities that are possible to move through, particularly if we have a more economic challenging environment? So there's a lot of questions here. And you can see Democrats are going to be looking at not only what does this mean for Kevin McCarthy, but as you move legislation forward, who are you actually negotiating with in order to pass legislation? So that is also what is being decided, what is being looked at in order to have a productive Congress. Uh, Ramesh, what does this do for the power of the party in general? The, these majorities are not huge, and in the Senate, it is still the Democrats. So what does this say for Republicans if they can't figure this out quickly? You know, we have a shorthand when we talk about politics. We'd say things like the election delivered control of the House of Representatives to the Republicans. But obviously it didn't. Um, there isn't real control uh, because the Republican Party and the rules of the House are interacting in a way that is making the House ungovernable. And, and I do agree with Amanda, I think, in her implicit projection that not a lot is going to be able to pass through the Congress over the next two years as a result. All right, Amanda Renteria, Ramesh Panuru, thank you both. And we will have full coverage of that vote starting at noon Eastern right here on ABC News Live. Meanwhile, we're learning new details about the New Year's Eve attack on three New York City police officers. Investigators now say the suspect was on a watch list and they believe he was motivated by Islamic extremism. Senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky has the latest. Hi, Aaron. The 19-year-old suspect is facing attempted murder charges. Police said the FBI had interviewed Trevor Bickford last month in Maine, where his mother had reported a concerning drift toward Islamic extremism. Authorities determined he wanted to fight in Afghanistan, so they put him on a watch list to prevent him from traveling overseas. Instead, he boarded a train to New York, intent, police said, on attacking anyone in uniform. An NYPD veteran and a rookie officer were screening revelers on their way to the ball drop in Times Square when police said Bickford shouted Allahu Akbar and charged at them with a large knife. He ended up shot on the shoulder, but Diana Diary found at the scene indicated the suspect thought he would die a martyr. Diane. All right, Aaron Katursky, thank you. And the man accused of killing four college students in Idaho is set to make his first court appearance today in Pennsylvania. He's expected to waive his extradition hearing so he can be quickly brought to Idaho to face murder charges. This as police reveal new details about how they tracked him across the country. ABC's Kana Whitworth is in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania with the latest. 
Idaho quadruple murder suspect Brian Koberger just hours from his extradition hearing. His lawyer, Jason Labar, telling ABC News he remains calm and polite despite knowing the death penalty is on the table. He says Koberger understands the seriousness of the charges and replied to him, quote, this will be a long process. Now new details emerging about how law enforcement tracked Koberger down. Sources telling ABC News they use public genealogy databases like those used to catch the Golden State Killer. You have DNA from a crime, uh, but you don't have a suspect. He's not in a database. So you use public databases of genealogy looking for relatives. Eventually, you get down to the point where you can match the DNA potentially to your suspect. Recent students of his at Washington State University speaking out, one saying his appearance changed around the time the murders took place. He looked a little bit more disheveled. He had like some stubble coming on. His hair was a little, you know, messed up or whatever. I remember seeing him and thinking like, oh man, you know, finals must be really getting to him. 28-year-old Koberger remained a teacher's assistant, working towards his criminology PhD until the end of the semester before driving 2,500 miles to Pennsylvania with his father. His lawyer now telling ABC News that on that journey, he was pulled over twice for traffic violations in Indiana while driving that white Hyundai Elantra authorities have been looking for. Brian arrested in an early morning SWAT team raid at his parents' home in a gated community over two weeks later. Labar telling ABC News, Brian's father said they were told over a loudspeaker that the house was surrounded and their door was broken during the arrest. People in his hometown, shocked. How do you remember him at those parties? Uh, withdrawn, um, kept to himself. Koberger's lawyer says his client maintains his innocence and is eager to be exonerated in Idaho. Our thanks to Kena Whitworth for that report. And tens of thousands of mourners are paying their respects to Pope Emeritus Benedict. People are lined up throughout St. Peter's Square to view the late retired pontiff as he lies in state at St. Peter's Basilica. Meanwhile, preparations are underway for his funeral on Thursday. Senior National Correspondent Terry Moran is in Rome with the latest. Hi, Terry. People here were lining up in the pre-dawn darkness on this January morning in Rome to say their farewells to Pope Benedict. Uh, there were 25,000 by noon, 65,000 yesterday. That's far more than many people, many officials here expected. And it really is a remarkable tribute to this quiet, intensely cerebral pope who spent his last years away from the public in a monastery after his stunning resignation. Uh, Benedict planned his own funeral. We're told he asked for something simple, a simple ceremony. Of course, at the Vatican, simple doesn't necessarily mean small or modest. It's going to take place in St. Peter's Square uh, on Thursday, 930 uh, in the morning, and Pope Francis will preside. He'll concelebrate the Mass with many cardinals and priests who are close to Pope Benedict. World leaders, religious leaders, they're already flying in to be here, and they've set up 40,000 chairs. They're expecting a, a large crowd, really a surprise in some ways uh, for this pope who had withdrawn from the public eye, but especially for conservative Catholics. He was such an icon, and they do feel bereft now. Pope Francis has changed this church. He's made it more global, more diverse, more open to the modern world. Diane? Terry Moran, thank you. Coming up, what we're learning about NFL player DeMar Hamlin in critical condition after he collapsed on the field during Monday Night Football. Stay with us. Avatar The Way of Water is mind-blowing. You don't know what to expect. Unlike anything you've ever seen. What will audiences see in this film that they've never seen in a movie before? We were competing who was going to hold their breath longer. I made it to three minutes. I think I got to five. Seven minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Into the Deep with Avatar. It was just amazing. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast. Now streaming on ABC News Live. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings.
Zoo. 200. Oh, 200. 200 episodes of Dr. Paul. Oh. Music to my ears. It's been 10 years, and I'm still having the fun. <laughs> that rocks. He's got the moves that make your animals groove. Now we do the dance of joy. Yay! He's like the Justin Bieber of the night. <laughs> Headlining the hottest barns. Shut out. It's a show you won't want to miss. I'm not going to be here forever. Maybe. <laughs> the Incredible Dr. Paul. New episodes Saturdays at 9 on Nat Geo Wild. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. This is ABC News Live Prime. Thanks so much for streaming with us. Live reporting, breaking news, exclusives, award-winning, powerful, eye-opening. ABC News Live Prime with Lindsay Davis. Streaming weeknights. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. ABC News, America's number one news source. Welcome back. Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin is in critical condition at a Cincinnati hospital after collapsing on the field. The stadium fell silent as he fell to the ground moments after making a tackle during Monday Night Football. Now the team says he suffered a cardiac arrest. Our Alex Perez starts us off from Cincinnati. This is the last thing you want to see. Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin in critical condition after a frightening on-field collapse during Monday Night Football. To midfield and lowers the shoulder. The 24-year-old safety collapsing in the ninth minute of the game after tackling Bengals receiver T. Higgins on what appeared to be a routine play. Hamlin at first getting back on his feet, but three seconds later, he fell backwards onto the field. The Bills saying in a statement, DeMar Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest following a hit in our game versus the Bengals. His heartbeat was restored on the field. For 10 minutes, medics frantically administering CPR. Hamlin's teammates wiping away tears. The entire Bills team taking a knee on the field. Players uniting, holding hands and praying. With everybody watching, praying, and hoping for the best. Players from both teams kind of formed this human wall, uh, the shield around uh, what was going on, how uh, around what the medical personnel were doing. Players knew that we should not be seeing. They were trying to respect the privacy of their fallen teammate. Applause heard as Hamlin loaded into this ambulance and transported to UC Medical Center 30 minutes after the hit. ABC News learning Hamlin has been put to sleep to put a breathing tube down his throat. I've never seen anything like it. His teammates reacting. Bills quarterback Josh Allen tweeting, please pray for our brother. And his team sharing a montage of support. Among the stunned onlookers in the stands, Hamlin's own mother. Hamlin's family came down from the stands to be with him in the ambulance. As an eerie silence fell over the stadium, fans awaited word of Hamlin's condition or even the fate of the game for over 70 minutes before the league announced a critical late season matchup was postponed. You could see the, the heartbreak on their face. You could see the worry on their face. Uh, they were in such real pain, and you could see it. Uh, and you knew that they were not going to be able to play football uh, after having gone through something like this. Hamlin was a six-round draft pick for the Bills in 2021, becoming a starting safety for the team just this season. Before playing professional football, Hamlin started a foundation for the children who had been hardest hit by the pandemic, raising money through GoFundMe to support his community toy drive. Our thanks to Alex Perez for that. And ABC News contributor and columnist with USA Today, Christine Brennan, joins me live now, along with the director of the Center for Resuscitation Science at the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Benjamin Abella. Uh, thank you both for being on. Christine, let's just start with, with the update. What's the latest on Hamlin right now? Diane, such a tragic, horrible story. Uh, we're waiting for more news, as as the, Alex said in his report, that uh, he's been put to uh, into a medical induced, medically induced sleep um, to be able to have the intubation. And everyone, literally the entire sports world, uh, people are holding their breath, just wondering and waiting for more news. But as I understand, and the doctor I'm sure would know better than I, Diane, uh, I understand it could be a while. 
This could be 24 to 48 hours before we hear more, before he is start. they start to wake him and start to see um, his function, where he is and how, uh, how he's doing uh, at this point. So a lot of questions and very few answers. Now, Dr. Abella, we know that Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest after a hit. How does that happen to an incredibly fit 24-year-old? And what was your reaction as you saw medics perform CPR on him for 10 minutes? Yeah, it, it's harrowing. And I've studied CPR and cardiac arrest for 20 years, and I certainly have not seen this happen in a professional NFL game before, although it certainly happened in other sports. Um, soccer, for example, has had two examples of cardiac arrest on the field in the last decade. It's very uncommon. What happened here was a cardiac arrest requiring CPR, and we know that CPR was given for maybe nine or 10 minutes. CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, is the key intervention, and it was performed. What we don't know is why he had a cardiac arrest, and one shouldn't over-speculate until medical facts are known. Um, it is possible, for example, that his cardiac arrest was from a strong blow to the chest. This condition is known as commodio cordis, but we don't know that for sure. What we do know is he's had cardiac arrest and he's been resuscitated. And what will now follow is a several day complicated process in the ICU at University of Cincinnati. All right, Christine Brennan, Dr. Bella, thank you both for your analysis. Of course, so many praying for his speedy recovery right now. We'll be right back with more of the day's top stories. Stay with us. This is where I belong. This is home. Real dirt in the sunlight again. I'm very excited. Anything could happen at any moment. My heart is so happy right now. We're making magic. We're making magic. magic. Avatar, the way of water is mind-blowing. You don't know what to expect. Unlike anything you've ever seen. What will audiences see in this film that they've never seen in a movie before? We were competing who was gonna hold their breath longer. I made it to three minutes. I think I got to five. Seven minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Into the Deep with Avatar. It was just amazing. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. It's so much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. ABC News, America's number one news source. Welcome back to ABC News Live. Authorities in Jesseville, Arkansas say more than a dozen homes were damaged after multiple tornadoes hit the area. Thousands of residents there are now without power, and the threat continues. Severe thunderstorms and tornado warnings are in effect in several states, with the big threat zones spawning from Louisiana to Alabama and Tennessee. Ukrainian officials say as many as 400 Russian troops were killed in one of the deadliest attacks on the Russian military since the war started. The strike occurred in the Russian-occupied Donetsk region in the east. Moscow says 63 Russian troops were killed. The first Mega Millions drawing of the new year will be held tonight with a prize estimated at $785 million. Now, this is only the fourth time in history the jackpot is above $700 million, and the other three times it eventually hit one billion. Right now, the cash payout is estimated at just under $400 million. Not bad. 
And Celine Dion fans are outraged after she was left off Rolling Stone magazine's top 200 greatest singers of all time list. They're accusing the outlet of snubbing the My Heart Will Go On singer. And the whole thing is now causing a debate over who should be on the list to begin with. Chris Connolly has the latest. Aretha Franklin, she's number one. She's at number 60, Kate Bush. Bob Dylan, he's at number 15. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. Oh, and she is... Wait, what? Rolling Stone Magazine's 200 Greatest Singers list. Snubbing Celine Dion? The beloved Quebecois powerhouse? Who moved millions to tears with the Titanic theme, My Heart Will Go On? Ty Blue, co-author and director behind the Celine-centric off-Broadway hit Titanic, appalled that list makers failed to think twice. I was agog, I was aghast. It's not just that she has an incredible otherworldly voice, it's that her songs are literal like Olympic events. In their list's intro, Rolling Stone noting, this is the greatest singers list, not the greatest voices list. <laughs> But try telling that to longtime Celine impersonator Elisa Fur. She's not only an amazing technical singer, but she performs with all of her heart and her soul and compassion. With the late Whitney Houston, Sam Cooke, and Billie Holiday rounding out its top four, the greatest living singer, according to Rolling Stone, is Mariah Carey. Now, familiar as Celine is with music critics and proud of her many fans, she once told ABC News, I can be wrong like this for the rest of my life. And that's the way it is. Diane? That is the way it is. I guess she'll just have to walk away, but she still has the power of love behind her, Chris Connolly. I'm hoping that's enough puns for our senior producer, Molly, who is a huge Celine Dion fan. Our thanks to you for joining us. The power of love to you all this morning. I'm Diane Macedo. Stay with us as ABC News Live continues with more news, context, analysis, and Celine Dion. So much at stake in our world right now. We wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby! It was crazy. Behind the Table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. We're honored ABC's 2020 winner of three Emmy Awards for Excellence. Thank you for making 2020 Friday night's most watched and most honored news magazine. This is where I belong. This is home. Real dirt in the sunlight again. I'm very excited. Anything could happen at any moment. 
My heart is so happy right now. We're making magic. We're baby. making magic. So much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. But a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. We want to get right to our top story, the key vote for Speaker of the House set to begin shortly. Right now, it's unclear whether Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has enough support to avoid an historic loss. This morning, a group of Republicans announced they would not be supporting his bid, but McCarthy says he's not going anywhere. Uh, we, we did have an intense conference, and it's intense for a purpose. We have worked for a long time. I've been leader for four years. I came into this position and we had less than 200 members. We are now sitting in the majority. We put forth to the American public a commitment to America. There's times we're going to have to argue with our own members if they're looking at for only positions for themselves, not for the country. ABC's Jay O'Brien joins me live from Capitol Hill along with White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks and ABC News political director Rick Klein. Jay, it sounds like McCarthy is admitting here that he doesn't have the vote. Now, it's been about 100 years since the vote for speaker went to multiple rounds. So how are other Republican Congress members reacting to this as they show up to the Capitol today? Well, the reality is, Diane, he just does not have the votes. We've heard from, by my count, seven Republicans who have said that those remarks from Kevin McCarthy, that meeting that Republicans had this morning, did nothing to dissuade them. I even heard from some who said it further emboldened them to carry on their never McCarthy stance all the way to the House floor. We're at noon. Just moments from now, we're going to see lawmakers start to cast their first ballots for House Speaker. I caught up with Marjorie Taylor Greene just there, right on the steps on the House side of the Capitol, and I asked her, who's backing McCarthy, what she has to say to those holdout votes. She is in support of McCarthy. She says the conference needs to get together behind McCarthy. And she called those holdout votes ridiculous, but we're only seeing them grow in numbers now as the day progresses. So we know on that first ballot in any moment now, Kevin McCarthy is going to face some opposition. The question that hangs over him and his team right now is what happens on the second ballot, what happens on the third ballot, and how far does this go, Diane? Because they will keep voting until there is a speaker. Oof. Rick, talk about the big picture impact here. If Republicans can't settle on a speaker of the House, what happens to business in Washington and why should people watching care? Well, there can be no business in the House of Representatives so long as there isn't a House Speaker. That's the first thing they can do. Members can't even be sworn in, much less get seated on committees or start to vote on legislation. Uh, the bigger issue, though, I think to keep in mind is that this chaos that we're about to see play out, and we've seen playing out over the last couple of weeks, is, is a symptom and is not a cause. It is a symptom of a Republican Party that in a lot of ways has not reckoned with the reality of its own divisions, hasn't reckoned with the disappointing election results of about two months ago, and is finding new fault lines even at a time where they're looking to come together. The fact that uh, even though they enjoy the majority, they can't settle on a speaker, it has real-world impact in terms of the House's ability to function, but it also speaks to a Republican Party that right now is still trying to figure out what it is and what it stands for. And governing under this new era, at least these next two years of divided government with a Republican House, a Democratic Senate, a Democratic White House, it's going to be flat hard, if not impossible, if you can't even get out of the opening gate with a decision about who should lead the House of Representatives. And Mary Alice, what does this mean for the White House and for must-pass bills like budgets and other things that just keep the government running. 
Yeah, I think there's a question of practical governing, like Rick was talking about, and then a question of politics. I mean, for this White House that wants to make sure that there is a government that has the lights on, that basic bills are passed, this is incredibly tricky for them. Like Rick said, it's hard to even do any business in, in Congress, let alone around Washington, if you don't get through this first step. And we have a president right now who's made pretty extended overtures to Republicans. Who've, he said over and over that he would like to work across party lines. He's invited Republican leaders over to the White House. He enjoys uh, moments of bipartisanship and seeks them out. And at this point, he doesn't know who he's going to be working with or if that person will have any interest in working back with him. But that's sort of the practical governing part. Then there's the politics. I think the politics of this is great for Democrats. Anytime that Republicans look like they're in chaos and look like they're a mess, Republicans, uh, Democrats rather, can take advantage of that. And frankly, they end up looking a lot more unified and, and a lot more like they have uh, sort of their party in line. So, Jay, we're seeing the House, uh, it looks like they're in session now and, and, you know, gaveled in. What will this voting process look like once it gets started? It's going to be long, Diane. So it's alphabetical, and each member has to say the last name of who they're supporting for speaker as their name is called. You can vote present. That would change the threshold that Kevin McCarthy needs to become the next speaker. You cannot vote no. So the shorthand you hear sometimes is that there are a certain number of McCarthy no votes. That just means they're voting for someone else for House speaker. So every single name is called. They voice who they want to be the speaker. Then the results are tallied, and only then do we go on if no one gets 218 to the next ballot, then to the next ballot, then to the next ballot? The other thing you're going to see, too, from what I have heard from those who oppose Kevin McCarthy, is they believe early on in that alphabetical roll call vote that you will see five, six, seven Republicans, some of whom have not made their voices heard yet, according to, to again, the never McCarthy sources, so take it with a grain of salt. But they have said that you'll see early on in that alphabetical roll call vote opposition to McCarthy and a and an attempt to whip votes from McCarthy's team because they will realize early on in this vote exactly where they are. The other thing you're going to see is Kevin McCarthy, who is an expert at working the floor of the House of Representatives, try to whip last-minute votes to try to eke out a win on this first ballot, potentially the second ballot, or even the third ballot. Now, Rick, Congressman Matt Gates said we could see cherry blossoms before we have the next speaker. Realistically, though, how long can this go on? I mean, look, uh, hypothetically, he's right. You could see blooming and even those blossoms fall off a couple days later and still not have a House speaker. Realistically speaking, though, uh, this is not going to take longer than, than, uh, than a few hours, maybe a day or two at most. I don't think anyone thinks that is that realistically we're going to go weeks or months without a House speaker because the consequences are so dire. And Republicans know one of the consequences is potentially empowering the Democrats, letting them either choose the House speaker or help choose the House speaker if they don't come to their own. So there's something about that, uh, that potential that I think is going to force these negotiations ahead, even if we are in a situation where you're going to get more than one ballot. I don't think it's going to be that many more than one ballot, but we are in uncharted territory uh, going forward. A lot of times you're going, to, you're going to hear the biggest threats emanate right on the verge of this. That concession from McCarthy a few hours ago that he doesn't have the votes was a pretty stark one. Now they're going to have to go through this motion, and then the, 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 the interesting stuff happens. That's when the negotiations really begin in earnest. Now, Mary Alice, Republicans have pledged to investigate the Biden administration once in power. So could the president benefit from a drawn out battle here? Uh, potentially, though, I think there's also uh, the potential for those investigations to be harder, to be more intense. We've heard a lot of rumors about Kevin McCarthy uh, trying to broker deals with conservative members of his party who are more interested in some of those very hardline investigations. Some of them have been asking for committee assignments and, and chairmanships uh, that would be uh, new, would be out of order. And so if he does grant some of that, if he puts some of the most far right, most conservative members um, on some of these committees, committees in order to get their votes, we actually could be looking at some more intense investigations. And really, across the board, Republicans, from the more moderates to the more conservatives, have been pretty ready to launch these investigations. I think they're pretty united on that, and the administration is preparing for it. All right. Mary Alice Parks, Rick Klein, Jay O'Brien, thank you all. And I want to bring in our ABC News political contributors, former Democratic Senator Heidi Heitkamp and former Trump administration official Sarah Isger um, are commenting with more. Uh, actually, we're going to go back to um, 
some other top stories today before we check back in with the House while we wait for them to start that voting process. And one of our top stories this morning, Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin is in critical condition at a Cincinnati hospital after collapsing on the field. The stadium fell silent as he fell to the ground moments after making a tackle during Monday Night Football. Now the team says he suffered a cardiac arrest. Our Alex Perez has more from Cincinnati. This is the last thing you want to see. Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin in critical condition after a frightening on-field collapse during Monday Night Football. <laughs> to midfield and lowers the shoulder. The 24-year-old safety collapsing in the ninth minute of the game after tackling Bengals receiver T. Higgins on what appeared to be a routine play. Hamlin at first getting back on his feet, but three seconds later, he fell backwards onto the field. The bill saying in a statement, DeMar Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest following a hit in our game versus the Bengals. His heartbeat was restored on the field. For 10 minutes, medics frantically administering CPR. Hamlin's teammates wiping away tears. The entire Bills team taking a knee on the field. Players uniting, holding hands and praying. With everybody watching, praying, and hoping for the best. Players from both teams kind of formed this human wall, uh, the shield around uh, what was going on, how uh, around what the medical personnel were doing. Players knew that we should not be seeing. They were trying to respect the privacy of their fallen teammate. Applause heard as Hamlin loaded into this ambulance and transported to UC Medical Center 30 minutes after the hit. ABC News learning Hamlin has been put to sleep to put a breathing tube down his throat. I've never seen anything like it. His teammates reacting. Bills quarterback Josh Allen tweeting, please pray for our brother. And his team sharing a montage of support. Among the stunned onlookers in the stands, Hamlin's own mother. Hamlin's family came down from the stands to be with him in the ambulance. As an eerie silence fell over the stadium, fans awaited word of Hamlin's condition or even the fate of the game for over 70 minutes before the league announced a critical late season matchup was postponed. You could see the, the heartbreak on their face. You could see the worry on their face. Uh, they were in such real pain, and you could see it. Uh, and you knew that they were not going to be able to play football uh, after having gone through something like this. Hamlin was a six-round draft pick for the Bills in 2021, becoming a starting safety for the team just this season. Before playing professional football, Hamlin started a foundation for the children who had been hardest hit by the pandemic, raising money through GoFundMe to support his community toy drive. And Diane, that tone drive fundraiser had a goal of reaching $2,500, but it went viral overnight and has now raised more than $3 million. There have been fans uh, stopping by here outside the medical center to offer prayers and well wishes. Diane? So many praying for his speedy recovery. Alex, thank you. And ABC News contributor and columnist with USA Today, Christine Brennan, joins me now along with physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Alok Patel. Thank you both for being here. Dr. Patel, the team says that Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest after a hit. I know you're not treating him, so of course this isn't a diagnosis, but can you just explain how something like this happens? Absolutely, Diane. You know, cardiac arrest is a generic term for simply put when the heart stops. And based on the footage, the conversations I've had with cardiologists, one of the thoughts, one of the theories is that Damal Hamlin suffered from something called called commodio cordis, which literally in Latin means agitation of the heart. What basically happens in this situation is the right amount of force has to hit the right part of the chest wall, the anterior or the front chest wall, at, and this is probably the rarest part, at the specific time in the cardiac, the heart's electrical cycle, and this can actually send the heart into an abnormal rhythm, which is possibly what happened when he stood up and then fell back down. But I think the most important thing to take away from this story is that that quick acting CPR and use of the defibrillator is what got his pulses back and what potentially is keeping him alive. Now the team says that he's currently sedated and listed in critical condition. So what does that tell you? Why sedate someone? Does that give you any uh, idea of how he's doing? Well, Dan, generally speaking, when somebody goes under cardiac arrest, when we see 
teenagers, when we see anyone with this type of condition, cardiac arrest, brought into an ICU, we want to do everything we can to reduce the amount of stress on their body. And sometimes this means putting a breathing tube in them to take the stress away so that we're breathing for them. And sometimes this means cooling down the body or sedating the body so that the body can just focus on rest and they can focus on treating the underlying condition. We still have to wait for more details, but this all sounds like pretty routine preventative measures while somebody is in critical condition. Now, Christine, this happened in the first quarter of the game, and for a while it wasn't clear whether they would resume the game or not. Ultimately, the NFL did postpone it. So what did you make of that decision and that, that period of time that it took to make it? Diane, it was absolutely the right decision. The game had to be postponed. There was no way those players who had gone through so much watching this uh, develop on the field that they could possibly play a football game. Football, the NFL, is such a big deal the most popular sport in the country by far. And it became this tiny little thing as the, the, the nation, the world, and of course all the people in that stadium and the players just realized that a game was completely inconsequential compared to what uh, their concern over DeMar Hamlin and, and what they had just witnessed. I think the NFL, yeah, people are concerned that they it took a little extra time to make the decision that I can only imagine what was going on, talking to the players' union, talking to security people. You don't want to have a mass exodus out of the stadium and have any problem with the fans. So for me, I know people will be looking into this, uh, but for me, it seemed like it was the right decision. And if it took a few extra minutes longer than we might have thought, my goodness, an unprecedented situation. And I guess I would say as a journalist that, that the NFL certainly made the right decision, even if it took a few extra minutes. All right, Christine Brennan, Dr. Lok Patel, we appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up, the House is set to vote for its new speaker, but Republican leader Kevin McCarthy is facing opposition from some of his own members. We have the latest from Capitol Hill. There's a live look. We're going to come back to that right after this. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Bring them on. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated ABCNews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at ABCNews.com. And here's to everything ahead. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? <laughs> Let's go. How are you? <laughs> Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live.
my favorite show. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast, now streaming on ABC News Live. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Welcome back. You're looking live at the House floor where members elect are set to vote for a new speaker in just a few moments. Right now, it's unclear whether Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has the votes to avoid an historic loss. If McCarthy can't get the 218 votes he needs on this first ballot, the vote will then move on to multiple ballots until there is a majority support for someone. Earlier in a closed-door meeting, McCarthy told Republican members that he earned this job and isn't going away. But still, we heard from several members early this morning confirming, at least saying at that moment, that they would not support the House Speaker. Something like seven members, Republican Congress members, Congress members-elect, saying they will not support Kevin McCarthy for House Speaker. And that means he will not, if that's the case, reach the 218 votes that he needs. McCarthy responded by saying that he has always uh, conducted himself to benefit the members of the Republican Party in the House, but not to benefit certain members over another. Let's listen. Uh, we, we did have an intense conference, and it's intense for a purpose. We have worked for a long time. I've been leader for four years. I came into this position, and we had less than 200 members. We are now sitting in the majority. We put forth to the American public a commitment to America. There's times we're going to have to argue with our own members if they're looking at for only positions for themselves, not for the country. And ABC's Jay O'Brien joins me live now from Capitol Hill for more on this. Jay McCarthy took that opportunity to sort of, you know, tout his accolades and explain why he's not just caving to everything that these members who say they'll oppose him want. But ultimately, what really came out of that press conference was it sounded like he's admitting that he doesn't have the votes. Yeah, and the question that hangs over this whole process is, are those concessions enough? We saw leading up to today, McCarthy make key concessions on things that he previously did not want to budge on, the most notable of which is what's called this motion to vacate the chair. That's a provision that can allow members of Congress to oust the sitting Speaker of the House later in the Congress if they so choose. McCarthy changed his mind on that. He moved his opinion on the threshold that would trigger that provision, but he still hasn't caved entirely on it. But even those caves, even those acknowledgments and concessions were not enough, it appears, to get the support of some of those far-right members of Congress who have said under no circumstances will they vote for Kevin McCarthy. By my count, that number started at 5 this morning. It's now at least 7 as of this afternoon. But as this roll call vote starts to take effect on the House floor, which you're looking at right now, we'll see if the proof is in the pudding and what kind of support this so-called Never McCarthy faction has. Has, what support the only Kevin faction has? Can they come to some kind of an understanding? Do we go ballot after ballot after ballot? How does McCarthy do in that sense? And is there another consensus candidate that emerges who's not Kevin McCarthy, Diane? And Jay, we could see him try to whip up the votes right there on the floor. What does this process look like? So it's a it's an alphabetical vote. Members are standing. Our members have their names called, and they say the last name of who they want to be Speaker of the House. We go through every single member who's there, all four, 434 approximately, depending upon who shows up. You need 218 votes again, depending upon how many show up in our voting to be the next Speaker of the House. And again, that's the math that McCarthy has to confront because he's got seven people who say under no circumstances will they vote for him. So this is a long, drawn out process process just to get through the first ballot. And when you get through the first ballot, this is something that the Congress hasn't confronted in more than 100 years, as you know, more than one ballot. The last time we had more than one ballot was in the 1920s, Diane. Wow. Jay O'Brien, thank you. And that whole process is set to get underway in just a few moments. We're, of course, going to check back live on the House floor, and we'll be right back with more of the day's other top stories as well. Stay with us. Avatar, the way of water. 
is mind-blowing. You don't know what to expect. Unlike anything you've ever seen. What will audiences see in this film that they've never seen in a movie before? We were competing who was going to hold their breath longer. I made it to three minutes. I think I got to five. Seven minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Into the Deep with Avatar. It was just amazing. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast. Now streaming on ABC News Live. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. Welcome back to ABC News Live. Authorities in Jesseville, Arkansas say more than a dozen homes were damaged after multiple tornadoes hit the area. Thousands of residents there are now without power and the threat continues. Severe thunderstorms and tornado warnings are in effect in several states with the big threat zones spawning from Louisiana to Alabama and Tennessee. Ukrainian officials say as many as 400 Russian troops were killed in one of the deadliest attacks on the Russian military since the war started. The strike occurred in the Russian-occupied Donetsk region in the east. Moscow says 63 Russian troops were killed. The first Mega Millions drawing of the new year will be held tonight with a prize estimated at $785 million. Now, this is only the fourth time in history the jackpot is above $700 million, and the other three times it eventually hit one billion. Right now, the cash payout is estimated at just under $400 million. Not bad. And Celine Dion fans are outraged after she was left off Rolling Stone magazine's top 200 greatest singers of all time list. They're accusing the outlet of snubbing the My Heart Will Go On singer. And the whole thing is now causing a debate over who should be on the list to begin with. Chris Connolly has the latest. Aretha Franklin, she's number one. She's at number 60, Kate Bush. Bob Dylan, he's at number 15. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. Oh, and she is... Wait, what? Rolling Stone Magazine's 200 Greatest Singers list. Snubbing Celine Dion, the beloved Quebecois powerhouse, who moved millions to tears with the Titanic theme, My Heart Will Go On? Ty Blue, co-author and director behind the Celine-centric off-Broadway hit Titanic, appalled that list makers failed to think twice. I was agog, I was aghast. It's not just that she has an incredible otherworldly voice, it's that her songs are literal like Olympic events. In their list's intro, Rolling Stone noting, this is the greatest singers list, not the greatest voices list. But try telling that to longtime Celine impersonator, Elisa Fur. She's not only an amazing technical singer, but she performs with all of her heart and her soul and compassion. With the late Whitney Houston, Sam Cooke, and Billie Holiday rounding out its top four, the greatest living singer, according to Rolling Stone, is Mariah Carey. Now, familiar as Celine is with music critics and proud of her many fans, she once told ABC News, I can be wrong like this for the rest of my life. And that's the way it is. Diane? That is the way it is. I guess she'll just have to walk away, but she still has the power of love behind her, Chris Connolly. I'm hoping that's enough puns for our senior producer, Molly, who is a huge Celine Dion fan.
All right, thanks to you for joining us. The Power of Love to you all this morning. I'm Diane Macedo. Stay with us as ABC News Live continues with more news, context, analysis, and Celine Dion. This is where I belong. This is home. Real dirt in the sunlight again. I'm very excited. Anything could happen at any moment. My heart is so happy right now. We're making magic. We're making magic. Avatar, the way of water is mind-blowing. You don't know what to expect. Unlike anything you've ever seen. What will audiences see in this film that they've never seen in a movie before? We were competing who was going to hold their breath longer. I made it to three minutes. I think I got to five. Seven minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Into the Deep with Avatar. It was just amazing. Impact by Nightline, now streaming on Hulu. More Americans choose ABC News, America's number one news source. Hi, I'm Diane Maceda. We want to get right to our top story. The key vote for Speaker of the House set to begin shortly. Here's a live look at the House floor where members elect are set to cast their votes in just a moment. But right now, it's not clear whether Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has enough support to avoid an historic loss. This morning, a group of Republicans announced they would not be supporting his bid. But McCarthy says he's not going anywhere. Uh, we, we did have an intense conference, and it's intense for a purpose. We have worked for a long time. I've been leader for four years. I came into this position, and we had less than 200 members. We are now sitting in the majority. We put forth to the American public a commitment to America. There's times we're going to have to argue with our own members if they're looking at for only positions for themselves, not for the country. ABC's Jay O'Brien joins me live from Capitol Hill, along with White House correspondent Mary Alice Parks and ABC News political director Rick Klein. Jay, McCarthy's essentially admitting that he doesn't have the votes here. Can he still pull this off? Well, the reality is he doesn't have the votes right now, Diane. So we've seen over the last few months, since Republicans took the majority in the House in November, there's been a faction of five so-called never McCarthy Republicans who have said under no circumstances will they vote for Kevin McCarthy. Despite that, McCarthy has made repeated concessions to this group and a larger group called the House Freedom Caucus. He's made big concessions on what's called the motion to vacate the chair. But despite all of that, we now know of at least seven Republicans who have said on that first ballot and any ballot going forward, they will not vote for Kevin McCarthy. We also know of lawmakers who say they will only vote for Kevin McCarthy no matter what ballot. I spoke with Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's in the pro-McCarthy camp. She said she called any opposition to McCarthy. Some of the lawmakers opposing McCarthy, by the way, are Greene's staunchest allies in Congress. She called opposition to McCarthy from them ridiculous. I spoke with James Comer, who's the incoming chair of House Oversight. He said he believes believes McCarthy will clinch it here. But to your question, can McCarthy pull it off? Right now, the math is not in his favor. He has ballot after ballot after ballot in theory to get the votes in his direction. But right now, as we head toward this first ballot, unless something changes, he does not have the votes. Now, Jay, we're seeing him on the House floor right now. Uh, Kevin McCarthy taking pictures with lots of people. Uh, what happens if this goes on and on because I mean it's been a hundred years since it's taken multiple votes to vote in a speaker of the house. Well, here's two things while you watch Kevin McCarthy work the House floor here. And, and I can tell you this from watching Kevin McCarthy on the House floor. My colleagues could tell you the same thing. Kevin McCarthy is a master at political preservation and a master at working the House floor. He was the whip. He was the majority leader. Every time you look at the House floor, if you're sitting up in the gallery, Kevin McCarthy's standing with some, standing somewhere else talking to a different member. He's doing it right now. Just talk to those members. Now he's going over there. Kevin McCarthy knows how to work the floor. He knows how to get the votes. 
uh, for pieces of legislation. Now he's trying to get the votes for himself to become Speaker of the House. His second time trying to do so. What happens now if we go? If he loses on the first ballot, he goes to the second ballot. We see if there are any votes for him on the second ballot, and we go ballot after ballot after ballot until there is a Speaker elected. He can work the floor while that vote is ongoing, try to whip votes in his favor during that time. Also, if this really drags on, we could see the majority in that chamber vote to adjourn, to take a break in a sense. But one thing to keep in mind, you got to get the same number of votes to elect a House Speaker as you do to take a break under this position that Congress is in right now where they have no rules because there is no Speaker, so no rules govern their proceedings. So to do anything right now, elect a Speaker, take a break, change the rules, that's an uphill battle if you have any kind of opposition because of how slim the GOP majority is, Diane. Sounds like they might have a long day ahead of them. Rick, talk about the big picture here. What happens if Republicans can't settle on a Speaker of the House? Legislatively, nothing. Politically, maybe everything, Diane. There's nothing that can get done. The members don't even get technically sworn in. There won't be any committees. There won't be any mechanism to even bring legislation to the floor of the House until uh, or unless a House Speaker is chosen. But the action that will, that will almost certainly uh, follow the failed effort to get McCarthy the Speakership will be intense. And there'll be all sorts of possible uh, deal-making on the Republican side, maybe even the Democratic side, because the key thing here, Diane, is that this speaker is chosen by the full House of Representatives. Uh, it is unprecedented in modern times to have the minority party play any role in that. They vote for their guy. The Republicans vote for their guy. But there's at least that possibility of Democrats cutting some kind of a deal with Republicans or other Republicans coming in to bear other candidates who haven't made themselves known, uh, beginning to make themselves uh, evident as, as potential candidates. So that is where it gets interesting. And to Jay's point about McCarthy working the floor, that is where the fun will really begin. And it looks like he, uh, Kevin McCarthy, has just formally been nominated uh, now for that vote. Mary Ellis, how could all of this affect the White House? President Biden still has an agenda that he's hoping to pass with some bipartisanship. Uh, how does this affect that aspect of things? Yeah, Dan, it's hard to know without knowing how this ends and who exactly the president is going to be asked to work with in, in the speaker's role. You know, you're right. This is a president who has tried very hard to reach out to Republicans since the election, uh, since they knew that Democrats were losing control of the House. This is a president who has often uh, really made overtures to get bipartisan support on all of his big pieces of legislation and was definitely hoping to do that in this next few years just to make sure that anything could get done in this era of divided government. Uh, but it's hard to know if there will be someone that he'll be supposed to be working with who will feel the same and who will be willing to work with him at all. And Congresswoman Elise Stefanik is now speaking on the House floor after nominating Kevin McCarthy this formally. Let's Republican listen. Republican majority will stand up for an economy that's strong, a nation that's safe, a future that's built upon freedom, and a government that's accountable to the people. McCarthy is the proud son of a firefighter and a fourth-generation Californian from Kern County, home to wildcatters, frontiersmen, and the right stuff. Bakersfield embodies the American spirit to work hard and dream big. This spirit that built our great nation is what we need in our next speaker. Kevin McCarthy is a strong conservative. He is proudly pro-life, a supporter of our Second Amendment rights, and he is committed to stopping wasteful government spending and shrinking the size of government. When Republicans last held the majority, Kevin helped to reduce domestic spending and lower the tax burden on hardworking American families. And as a Republican leader over the past several years, Kevin has taken the fight to one-party Democrat rule on behalf of the American people. He helped bring this historic border crisis to the nation national consciousness, a crisis Kevin made sure Democrats could no longer ignore. He fought for and succeeded in repealing the ill-advised military COVID vaccine mandate. And he stood on this very floor and spoke for a record eight hours and 35 minutes to not only delay the vote in the House, but to make the case that ultimately defeated Joe Biden and House Democrats dangerous build back broke legislation. No one, no one in this body has worked harder for this Republican majority than Kevin McCarthy.
Since the day Kevin was elected as our leader, House Republicans have only gained seats and won. While Republicans in the Senate and state legislatures lost seats, House Republicans are the only ones who have consistently won because Kevin knows what we stand for, he knows when we should engage in the fight, and he knows how to build consensus. Importantly, Kevin has done the work of listening to all Americans, traveling to nearly every district in this country, fighting for conservative values, and fighting for the people that, we, that are committed to upholding them. Kevin has shown up in these communities of every member in our conference, and I can guarantee he has shown up in the districts of our many of our colleagues across the aisle as well. His relentless effort has yielded an extraordinary new House Republican majority that represents our country's greatness from all walks of life. When the last Congress gaveled in two years ago, every new Republican welcome to our conference was a woman, veteran, or minority. Today's House Republican Conference is the most diverse Republican conference in our nation's history. A seasoned legislator, an experienced leader, a friend to so many of us, a proud conservative with a tireless work ethic, Kevin McCarthy has earned the speakership of the People's House. Madam Clerk, as the chair of the Republican Conference, it is my high honor to present our conference's nominee for election to the Office of the Speaker of the People's House, the Honorable Kevin McCarthy from the state of California. And I yield back. The clerk now recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Aguilar. Madam Clerk, I rise today at the direction of the House Democratic Caucus to place into nomination for election to the position of Speaker All of the right, House. And I want to bring in Jay O'Brien again on Capitol Hill, our political director Rick Klein, and Mary Alice Parks, our White House correspondent, for a little bit more on this. Jay, we heard Congresswoman Elise Stefanik there touting uh, Kevin McCarthy's accolades, talking about all the reasons that she believes that he should be the next Speaker of the House and why, of course, she just formally nominated him. Is it enough? Yeah, and, and the show's going on now. So here's what happens. Elise Stefanik nominates Kevin McCarthy to be the House Speaker. What you just saw before you came back to me was Pete Aguilar nominating Hakeem Jeffries to be House Speaker. Democrats don't have control of the House chamber, so it, it is almost a, a remote, if, if not zero, possibility that Hakeem Jeffries would be elected Speaker. But you will see Democrats vote for Jeffries because you vote for the candidate who's in your own party for Speaker. Uh, but to, to backtrack to what Elise Stefanik just said, it wasn't just Elise Stefanik words that carried the most weight just there. It was who was in the side of the frame, which was Steve Scalise, who's the number two Republican in the House, someone I can tell you the never McCarthy members of Congress have repeatedly floated as a potential uh, candidate for speaker, someone they would support if McCarthy didn't get it. And Scalise up until this point, including just then, has repeatedly said he's behind Kevin McCarthy, he has Kevin McCarthy's back. And just there you saw, as Elise Stefanik was praising Kevin McCarthy, Steve Scalise kept repeatedly rising for those standing ovations, signaling to the rest of the chamber that he's behind Kevin McCarthy. He's not mounting some kind of dark horse or under the wire bid to unseat McCarthy. Now, does he have the votes? Again, we've heard from seven members of Congress right now, seven GOP members who say they will not vote for Kevin McCarthy. There are four 434 members of Congress who have shown up today to vote, which means Kevin McCarthy needs to get 218 votes to do all the numbers for you. There are 222 Republican members of Congress who so have seven say they don't want to vote for Kevin McCarthy, and those seven hold, and if their numbers grow particularly, that is a really, really, really rocky road for Kevin McCarthy. So Republicans face the task of whipping votes, of making sure all their members continue to show up for the votes, because depending upon how who shows up, that changes the threshold you need to win. There's a lot of consideration here and again if McCarthy loses on the first ballot we go to another ballot and we go to another ballot and they keep doing ballots until there is a speaker of the house now Rick the holdouts say that they will hold out as long as it takes to get what they want uh, McCarthy on the other hand says he's not going anywhere so realistically what are the chances that this comes out without Kevin McCarthy as the house speaker 
he is still the likeliest next speaker of the House, uh, and both sides have to dig in with the rhetoric at this stage. Otherwise, they would have no, uh, no position to, to withhold any of the concessions that, uh, that they'll have to be giving in the next coming hours. Uh, this is going to play out, as Jay said. There's going to be a vote. Uh, McCarthy's not going to get 218. Then, they'll, then the Republicans will have to make a decision. Do you continue to press forward with more votes today? Do you try to adjourn the House to another day? At some point, do you try to change the rules? I just, uh, I just was texting with someone who's on the House floor, a House Democrat, who says the buzz on the floor is that they're looking at a minimum of three ballots. Uh, the Republicans are saying that internally, that they think that this is going to go not just two, but three, maybe more than that ballots. Uh, there really isn't a set time frame for that. Uh, but that is the only scenario that I see right now still is with the likeliest one being McCarthy. Now, what gets interesting is if, if it becomes evident that McCarthy can't get it, all of that choreography you just saw with Scalise and, and, and Stefanik up to, to cheer, all of that changes very quickly if McCarthy makes the calculation that he can't get to 218. There is even some precedent for that. The last time uh, that there was a, uh, a surprise vacancy in the House, McCarthy looked like he was the heir apparent to John Boehner. When it became evident to McCarthy, though, that he wasn't going to get it, he threw his support to Paul Ryan. That would be the only, that would be the off-ramp that would uh, avoid a, a bigger debacle from the perspective of Republicans, which is Democrats having some significant st say in who the speaker would be. All right, and I want to bring in ABC News political contributors, former Democratic Senator Heidi Heitkamp and former Trump administration official Sarah Isger for more on this. Sarah, we're hearing from Congressman Matt Game, Lauren Boebert, some others here, some of the holdouts, you know, saying that they, they have demands that they want met if Kevin McCarthy expects their votes. What do you make of what they are asking for? At this point, I think it's pretty clear they've said they are willing to have this go to a plurality vote, as in lowering it from a majority threshold, that 218, to just whoever gets the most votes. That would mean almost certainly a leader, a speaker, sorry, Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic leader. They've said that's fine with them because they'll fight Hakeem Jeffries politically. It's to their advantage. They'll raise more money. Uh, really being in charge can have downsides, especially if you're a backbencher who doesn't think your legislative agenda is moving anywhere anyway. So, uh, you know, as one former Republican uh, House staffer said, weakening McCarthy is the point or whoever the speaker will be at this point is going to go in as potentially the weakest speaker of the House of Representatives in U.S. history. And right now on the House floor, we're seeing Congressman Aguilar nominating the Democratic leader of the House, Hakeem Jeffries. Let's listen. To see you through. Because he knows that our success means that we can raise the quality of life for our constituents, creating better jobs and building safer communities. He has guided every step of the way by his faith and his mom, his mom instilled in him Sunday mornings weren't always easy in the Jeffries house. The young man who knew he wanted to be a lawyer would argue with his mom about going to church that day. But failure is a good teacher. <laughs> he lost those arguments. And now Hakeem goes to church every weekend, sometimes that one where his church family is at Cornerstone Baptist or somewhere else in the district where he can meet his constituents where they are. He remembers that after church on Sundays, he'd go to Nano's house, where there was an open door at his grandmother's house for the entire neighborhood and their elders to come through with food and conversation. A young Hakeem listening to everything, but usually just trying to catch the score of the Jets game. <laughs> this is where wisdom gets passed down. And now guided by the faith and wisdom of leaders like Jim Clyburn, Greg Meeks, John Lewis, Steny Hoyer, Nancy D'Alessandro Pelosi. It is shaped by that guidance that we are prepared to nominate a leader who will open the door to the new generation of leadership. Madam Clerk, a Latino is nominating for leader of this chamber a black man for the first time in our history. <laughs> Madam, Madam Clerk, that's progress, and it's progress that the country wants to continue for this Congress and for our country. Therefore, as chair of the Democratic Caucus, I am directed by the vote of that caucus to present for election 
to the Office of Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 118th Congress, the name of the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries, Representative-elect from the State of New York. Congressman Akeem Jeffries, formally nominated as Democratic the leader of the House. I want to go back to our ABC News political contributors and bring in former Democratic Senator Heidi Heitkamp for more on that moment. Heidi, does it take away from this moment at all for Hakeem Jeffries for this to be happening at this historic moment where we might not see a Speaker of the House elected today? No, if anything, it elevates uh, his uh, resolve. It elevates his position. When you look at the unity of the Democratic caucus and the disunity of the, of the GOP caucus, it's really a stark reminder that Nancy Pelosi was an amazing leader. She set up the next generation for leadership. There's been no drama in that transition. The Republicans on the other side, it's not a good look. I mean, one of the things that isn't getting talked enough about, I think, is you start the uh, the new year with a discussion about a member of their new caucus basically falsifying every part of his resume, Santos, and now you have this fight. And, you know, what you would expect with a Republican majority in the House is a transition from Trump being the leader to the uh, Republican House basically defining the next priorities for the Republican Party. Guess what's not happening? It looks like chaos. It looks like a lack of leadership. It looks like a lot of bitterness. I think it's really interesting because I don't know when when a such a small minority of your caucus demands primary positions, it's going to embitter the entire caucus for a long time if those promises are delivered. So not a good look for the Republican Party, not a good look for, uh, I think, uh, the person who eventually will be speaker, and I think that's McCarthy. And it's going to be an interesting day as this plays out. All right, I want to take that point to former Trump administration official Sarah Isger. Sarah, what's your response to that? Oh, I think it's clear that, you know, this is big picture, the the symptom, um, not the problem itself, of weakening parties. I mean, this is part of the reason that we haven't seen this go to a second ballot in 100 years, because our political parties were so strong. They had carrots and sticks to get those backbench, you know, junior members in line. What we've seen over the last 20 years is the real deterioration of political parties in this country, uh, such that Nancy Pelosi, through, I think, sheer will and her her own history with her caucus was able to pull things together. Uh, but here we have Republicans not having that moment. All right, Heidi Heitkamp, Sarah Isger, thank you both. Coming up, the House is set to vote for its new speaker at any moment now, but Republican leader Kevin McCarthy again facing some opposition from his own party. We will be following the proceedings as they get started right after this. So much at stake in our world right now. We wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! Is this mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby! It was crazy. Behind the Table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. From America's number one news source comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter. And it can customize to you and your interests. If you love being in the know, you're gonna love this. Experience what all the buzz is about. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. 
We're honored. ABC's 2020 winner of three Emmy Awards for Excellence. Thank you for making 2020 Friday night's most watched and most honored news magazine. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. With so much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest story. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any other newscast. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast across all of television. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. Breaking news, incredible video, faster, smarter, and customizable to your interests. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. From America's number one news comes the all-new ABC News app. If you love being in the know, you're going to love this. Experience the all-new ABC News app. Download it now. You never know what you're gonna get on this show. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely, always. absolutely. That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right, they don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby! It was crazy. Behind the table, listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to ABC News Live. Authorities in Jesseville, Arkansas, say more than a dozen homes were damaged after multiple tornadoes hit the area. Thousands of residents there are now without power, and the threat continues. Severe thunderstorms and tornado warnings are in effect in several states, with the big threat zones warning from Louisiana to Alabama and Tennessee. Ukrainian officials say as many as 400 Russian troops were killed in one of the deadliest attacks on the Russian military since the war started. The strike occurred in the Russian-occupied Donetsk region in the east. Moscow says 63 Russian troops were killed. The first Mega Millions drawing of the new year will be held tonight with a prize estimated at $785 million. Now, this is only the fourth time in history the jackpot is above $700 million, and the other three times it eventually hit one billion. Right now, the cash payout is estimated at just under $400 million. Not bad. I'm Diane Macedo. Do stay with us as ABC News Live continues with more news, context, and analysis.
With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast, now streaming on ABC News Live. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. Get ready, America, every Friday. The hottest trends, styles, and must-have. What's the right stuff to buy right now? I really love that. It's time to buy the right stuff. Yes! And save big time, too. The right stuff. Fridays on GMA. You're going to love it. Everyone, I'm Kira Phillips, breaking news out of Washington right now. Congress starts its new term today with a new Republican majority in the House, but still no speaker. Live pictures right now. Members are actually voting, but it's still unclear whether Republican leader Kevin McCarthy has the 218 votes he needs to secure his spot as speaker and avoid a historic loss. Let's listen in. McCarthy. Carl. Next speaker of the House, 118 Congress, Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Carson. Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Carter of Georgia. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Carter of Louisiana. Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Carter of Texas. McCarthy. Cartwright. Jeffries. Jeffries. Kassar. Jeffries. Case. Jeffries. Caston. Jeffries. Castor of Florida. Jeffries. Castro of Texas. Castro of Texas. Jeffries. Chavez de Reamer. McCarthy. Sherfalis McCormick. Jeffries. Chu. Jeffries. Cicilline. Mary Bradley, Akeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Cisco Bonney. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Clark of Massachusetts. Akeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Clark of New York. The bad, brilliant brother from Brooklyn. <laughs> Jeffries. Cleaver. Jeffries. Klein. McCarthy. Cloud. Jim Jordan. Jordan. Clyburn. Jeffries. Clyde, Biggs, Cohen. I have eight times passed my vote for the greatest speaker of the generation, maybe the greatest speaker this house has ever known, Nancy Pelosi. I proudly cast my vote for the next great speaker of the House of Representatives. Jeffries. Jeffries. Cole. McCarthy. Collins. McCarthy. Comer. McCarthy. Connolly. Jeffries. Correa. Jeffries. Costa. Jeffries. Courtney. Jeffries. Craig. 
Jeffries. Crane. Biggs. Crawford. McCarthy. Crenshaw. McCarthy. Crockett. Jeffries. Crow. Jeffries. Quayar. Jeffries. Curtis. McCarthy. Davids of Kansas. Jeffries. Davidson. McCarthy. Davis of Illinois. Jeffries. Davis of North Carolina. Jeffries. Dean of Pennsylvania. Jeffries. As Duquette. we listen to the vote here live on Jeffries. Capitol Hill, it looks like uh, Kevin Della McCarthy, Cruz. who was fighting for his speakership, uh, has not McCarthy. received the votes that he needs, that it has failed. Delora. So the question is, where do we go from here? Our Rachel Scott has been on the Hill all morning and Jeffries. afternoon for us. Rachel, Del there Benning. are so many twists and turns to what we've witnessed today. It, it's quite remarkable, Delucio. historic uh, uh, on many counts. Uh, just. Tell us where, where we go Desanier. now. Well, Kara, Kevin McCarthy Jeffrey. at this moment is on the verge of losing the first Desanier. ballot in his fight for speaker for the first time in 100 years. I mean, this is a once in a century fight. At this point, we have six Republicans who have not supported Kevin McCarthy, which means McCarthy. right now he does not have the votes in yes, order to Ballard. claim the speaker's gavel at the McCarthy. end of this first round. So what we could see Deagle. next is that the House will just go on to the next ballot. There will be multiple Jeffrey. rounds of voting. And again, this has Ballard. not happened happened in 100 years. So what we are watching right now is history unfold right before our eyes. Donald's. And I could tell you that I caught up with Republican leader Kevin McCarthy just moments before McCarthy. he walked on to the House chamber for the fight of his life here when it comes to leadership and gaining the speaker's gavel. McCarthy. And he told us that he's willing to fight this Duncan. out. This will be a battle. He knows it, but he's willing to go on for as long as Duncan. it takes, Kira. How long could it take? I mean, they can keep voting and voting and voting. I mean, could this go on for, for days? Well, I could tell you, looking back in history, the longest took two months in the early, late 1800s, and then 133 votes. You have some Republicans like Congressman Matt Gates. He's saying that the cherry blossoms will bloom here in Washington, D.C. before we potentially see a uh, uh, Speaker of the House. At this point, it is unclear, right? Someone has to cave. This is a steering match between two different groups. One group is sort of the only Kevins, people that are only supporting Kevin McCarthy. The other group, are people that are never Kevins. And that is a small group of Jeffries. conservatives who have made it clear that they will Justice. not back him. The only issue is, is that is enough to keep that speaker gavel away from Kevin McCarthy at this point, Kira. Rick Klein, I know you're joining into the mix right now. I mean, Rachel so, really summed it up right there. It, it's a stare down, as McCarthy. Rachel has said. You've got the only wow. Kevins versus the never Kevins. It looks like round one here. Uh, not didn't go Kevin McCarthy's Thanks, way. So, so as we kind of watch history McCarthy. unfold here, um, as Rachel Anderson. mentioned, late 1800s, it took McCarthy. two months. What, what are your predictions? I know it's Vince hard Dad. to even really give a good prediction because this is unprecedented McCarthy. what we're seeing. Uh, uh, but it, it's no doubt the, the drama uh, that um, many of these Vince members Gerald. wanted. McCarthy is not getting it on the McCarthy. first ballot. Write it down. Uh, so far, we've already got this seven Patrick. votes by Republicans for someone other than Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy, and I think we're only through the D's or so alphabetically. It's very possible, if not probable, that uh, that, uh, that Congressman Jeffries, the Democratic leader, McCarthy. will get more votes for Speaker on this first round Fletcher. than McCarthy. That will make him Speaker. He's not going to become a Speaker. Jeffries. But these no votes have made themselves evident Flood. and put themselves forward on the floor. Just the quick math McCarthy. on this, 222 House Republicans. Foster. So that means that he could McCarthy could lose as many as four 
and the fact that he's at seven already and alphabetically we have way more than half of the House of Representatives to go means he's likely to be Jeffries. significantly short of where he Jeffries. needs to be. Uh, talk to a House Democrat on the Jeffries. floor a little while ago who says the buzz there Fox. is that they're looking at about three votes minimum. Uh, but of course there's no way to know because the individual Lowe's concessions Greenhold. are going to be what matters. But what it is clear now Jeffries. as they go through the motions here alphabetically is that Kevin McCarthy will Greenhold. not become the House Speaker on the first ballot. McCarthy. All right. Now, I believe it was you, Rick, Lost. more than an hour, maybe a couple hours ago, said, and we could see Jeff another Lewis. candidate appear. Uh, and well, sure enough, uh, the name Andy Biggs McCarthy. has now been tossed into the hat. It explained Bolter. what happened, and it happened very quickly, I guess, McCarthy. within the last half an hour, 45 minutes Biggs. or so. What does this mean now to have another player Biggs. in the mix? Well, Andy Biggs' name was put into nomination, uh, which at least qualifies him to technically receive these votes. Uh, his colleague, Paul Gosar, gave a short nominating speech. No, no one that I've talked to Gallagher. thinks that Andy Biggs is going to become the House Speaker. Uh, the question is going to be whether someone else emerges. There were a few scattered votes so far for Jim Jordan, uh, the congressman from Ohio who's in line to, to lead the Judiciary Committee. He has said outright that Garrett he is a Indian. McCarthy supporter, but this may be a signal uh, of some Republicans who say, Jeff I don't want to go with necessarily with the Freedom Caucus far-right person. Barbarino. I also don't want to go with McCarthy, McCarthy, maybe you have to plant that vote elsewhere. So I think at this time, Mike if there is Garcia. another speaker's candidate to emerge, that person is not being voted on in this McCarthy. round of voting. What would have to happen functionally Robert is that Garcia. if McCarthy realizes he doesn't get the votes, he throws his support Jeffries. to someone else. Maybe that's Steve Scalise, maybe even Elise Stefanik, Garcia who put his Illinois. name into nomination. But yes, you're seeing a, a coalescing of, uh, of non-McCarthy or never McCarthy Garcia votes around a few other people right now. I don't think either Jeffries. of those or any of those people are, are going to be the last person standing against them, though. McCarthy. You know, Rick, how how disastrous Golden do you think? I don't I don't mean to be negative. Jeffries. However, <laughs> um, no functioning Golden Congress means you can't get anything through. So is is Jeffries. if the voting continues and and uh, uh, there is no speaker, um, then this just prolongs so many other issues, including Gomez. things that everyday Americans are concerned about, like Jeffries. the economy. The biggest thing McCarthy has going for him is that dynamic exactly, McCarthy. Kira. That and the fact that so many members of Congress Justin want to get Jay on to do other Gonzalez. things. They've got friends and family in the gallery. They want to get on to receptions and dinners and the like. That Jeffries. might motivate them as well. But the fact that Good. they're paralyzed, Virginia. the fact that they've got this moment that they had dreamt about, that they finally Thanks. take over the House majority and can't do anything with it until they have a House speaker, ultimately I think that is what is going to drive the negotiations to get someone over the top to become House speaker, either with that magic Texas. number of 218 or by changing the, the, the rules McCarthy. of the threshold to a lower number. All right, Jay O'Brien also there on the Hill for us, a part of our uh, top Thanks. political team here. Where are we now, as Rick and I were talking, Jay, bring us up to date on where we are, the number of votes, uh, what letter. Go ahead, you've got the floor, no pun intended. Yeah, well, well thank you. We've got that, we're in the G's now. We're looking at at least seven to eight plus McCarthy. no votes by my count. Uh, and, and by the way, when you say a no vote, they've got to vote for somebody else, nine actually now. So nine Republicans who have voted for someone else other than Kevin McCarthy. I can tell you from my conversations with that never McCarthy crowd for weeks leading up to this day, this is the exact scenario that they predicted, that there was enough of a grouping of lawmakers who would come out against McCarthy Early on in the alphabet, we're only in the G's here, right? And essentially make it known that McCarthy would not succeed on this first Jeffries. ballot. And they believe, and this is where we're getting Green into their Georgia. planning and not what has happened, but they believe that McCarthy. that will demonstrate to the other members in Congress that McCarthy has even less support McCarthy. than they thought he had Obama. as he went into this vote. And Jeffries. that will allow on the second ballot, on the Rose third Green. ballot, some kind of deal making. Obviously, the Never McCarthy crew yes. wants that deal to emerge as a candidate who is not McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy. The Jeffrey. only McCarthy crew wants Kevin McCarthy to find his way to that 218. And then you have hey, some lawmakers who I've heard who are kind of stuck in the middle. I, I can tell you, I've heard from lawmakers who say that they're Parker with McCarthy on the first ballot and on the second ballot, but not with him Jeffrey. on the third ballot. I've heard that from a few lawmakers. Harris. So as this progresses today, you're going to see the situation yeah. on the 
floor shift and you're gonna watch it play out in this exact way that you're watching it play out. It doesn't look like high drama. It looks like someone reading off the last names and then the member says that person's last name. But I can tell you in that room, there is a lot of opposition to Kevin McCarthy Marsh, and Marsh. the drama comes from the fact that there was more McCarthy. opposition to Kevin McCarthy than was even telegraphed nice. prior to this. I'll give you an example. Lauren, Lauren Boebert comes out today. She had been on the fence about Kevin McCarthy. Yes. She says that she's a no or she's voting for Her. someone else. And so that put the Never McCarthy, McCarthy group into the six. Then we saw uh, Eli Crane, who was a, it was a rep elect, saying that he uh, would, was on the fence, and he just on the floor said that he was voting no. Mike Cloud, who had not said whether he was on the fence or no or yes for McCarthy, just came out and voted for Jim Jordan. So you're seeing lawmakers who had not telegraphed where they were in this process come out against Kevin McCarthy, and I can tell you that is the exact strategy that the Never McCarthy group was hoping to implement. So at least as of right now, things are going their way. But again, we're only on the first ballot here. The assumption is uh, from the lawmakers that I've spoken with that the deal making is going to start to happen at the end of this alphabet ballot, uh, you know, closer to the end of the alphabet here, and then the second ballot, and then the third ballot. Because again, and as we've been saying, they do not stop voting until there is a Speaker of the House or until a majority in, of the Congress decides to take a break and everybody goes to their respective corners and tries to figure out what's going on. But, but we'll see if that it happens at all, Kira. Okay, a couple questions. Let's define deal making. What kind of deals are we talking about? <laughs> McCarthy. Well, that's a really good question. Is Kevin McCarthy, to a degree, Jeffrey. has made some very serious concessions. He's, his McCarthy. biggest concession has been on what's called the motion to vacate the chair, which is a mechanism that can be used McCarthy. to unseat the current Speaker of the House. It would be used, in theory, later on in the Congress. McCarthy. He lowered the threshold that would be in place I in the House rules to trigger that motion to vacate Jeffrey. the chair. But we have Jackson still heard from Illinois. Republicans, some of whom said motion to vacate the chair was the big concession they wanted out of McCarthy, Jeffrey. that they still don't feel that Kevin McCarthy Jackson, has gone far North enough. Carolina. I was speaking with one source who is close to these negotiations Jeffrey. between Kevin McCarthy and what, as of last Jackson, night, was those five Texas. never McCarthy Republicans. And they said to me they didn't feel McCarthy. there was anything Kevin McCarthy could do, as of Jackson, last night please. at least, to get the support of those five never McCarthy Republicans, which, if they stay together, would prove fatal to his bid to the speakership. So there is a sense from some lawmakers that they will be strictly opposing McCarthy at any turn, no matter what concessions he makes. But he only needs to peel off a few of those core five never McCarthy and, and, and try to get back some of the votes that he's lost from the others to become speaker. So there can be some deal making on the floor that includes committee assignments, that includes just plain political pressure. Kevin McCarthy is very good at working the floor. Um, but there is a sense, at least from some lawmakers, that there's nothing Kevin McCarthy can do at this point uh, to earn their vote, Kira. So you can be present here on the floor, but you don't necessarily have to vote, right? And, and, and have we seen that yet? Or so far, has everybody given a yay or a nay? I haven't. I'm looking now at my tally here. Um, it, it looks, no, we have not seen a vote of present yet. Now, what present does is if one person votes present or a couple lawmakers vote present, it changes the calculus and it changes the number of votes that Kevin McCarthy needs because it's a majority of the lawmakers who are physically there and voting. Not a majority of all the lawmakers in the House, not a majority of all the members who are there but not voting and voting present, a majority of those who are there and voting. So if some people vote Joyce present, that changes the number of ballots McCarthy. that McCarthy, or excuse me, it changes the number of votes McCarthy Can't needs to become the next speaker. And we've heard uh, we've heard some consternation as to whether or not that's the way out Jeffrey. for some of the never McCarthy members who have said that they will never vote for Kevin McCarthy. They could vote present in theory and lower the threshold that he needs to clear to become the next speaker. But uh, that's countered Jeffrey. by some of those never McCarthy members who say they are not going to vote present. They are always going to vote for someone. Uh, one more further point here, Kira. You have to vote for a last name. You don't vote no. You don't vote yes. You vote for Kevin McCarthy or you vote for someone else, or if you're a Democrat in this case, we've seen all the Democrats vote for obviously their Democratic leader, Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. So you're always going to hear a last Kelly name called out. Mississippi. The question is, does Kevin McCarthy get enough last, uh, get right. enough people to say Kelly, his last name? He hasn't right now. We'll see what happens in the next ballot. McCarthy.
Okay. Whew. Let's bring in uh, former Democratic Senator for North Dakota and ABC News political contributor Heidi Heitkamp, also former Republican Kidding congressman for Georgia, Georgia, Tom Graves, also an ABC News Parking. contributor. Uh, I, I guess, first of all, I just want to generally ask both of you, Heidi, I'll, I'll start with you, just what, how you're seeing this play Jones. out, how you're feeling, what you think. Um, we, we now know where things are going on the first ballot, but just as, as a former senator, what do you make of what we're witnessing so today? Well, I think the first thing is there is no yeah, joy on the Republican it. side. They're pretty grim while the Democrats are having, you know, a, a great time voting for their new uh, majority or minority leader. And so that's pretty exciting for them. Um, I think that the second thing that I'm seeing is, is a lot of disarray in the Republican Party, and that is not a good look uh, for starting out in this new Congress. And when you, when you I, 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 as a former member, I think, Okay, so I'm a loyal soldier. I'm going to vote for McCarthy. But if you start handing out all the bennies to the naysayers, how is that fair to me? And so this is going to further divide their caucus if Kevin McCarthy doesn't uh, draw a line in the sand, say, I've given enough concessions. It's now time to get on and, and expect the rest of the membership to pressure the no votes or the, the never Kevin votes. You really think he'll do that, Heidi? Um, you know, I, I don't know who's the deal maker. Usually in these situations, you find somebody who everyone likes and you have them be the embassy, you know, basically be the ambassador. What can we do? What can we do that's fair to the rest of the caucus, fair to the rest of the membership? And so I think that there's probably going to be that person, whether it's Tom Cole, who I know personally, who is a great guy. Maybe he does, uh, tries to make a deal. Somebody's got to step in and try and make a deal. And I think it weakens Kevin McCarthy if that deal maker is him. Jeffers. So let's say it is Tom Cole. Uh, you right. know him. How, how would, I mean, McCarthy. just hypothetically, how, how would he Returner. try to make the deal? I think he's got it. Well, how I would try and make a deal if I were Ball. Tom is I would try and figure out who are the soft nose? McCarthy. Who who can I siphon off with a good mm -hmm. logical yeah. argument? You're not going to get Matt Glance, and if you let him be the negotiator for the never Kevin vote, you're not ever going to win. And so you've Jeffries. got to find a new leader of the Maine opposition of and go to them and say, okay, what's reasonable to get done here? Maybe in, in that Adams. case, Kevin loses uh, four votes Jeffries. and becomes the Speaker of the House. Lee so so it's all going to be a, a game of uh, inside baseball. And I'm Jeffries. sure Congressman Graves probably has a different Pleasure perspective Fernandez. than I do. But I think that it's it, if I were them, I would try and find a rational person in the never Kevin ranks that could, in fact, provide leadership on that Let's side. Go. All right, Tom, now it's your turn. Pardon Is there a rational person that could actually do that? I feel like I'm, I'm watching a combination of uh, high school debate team meets, uh, you know, a bunch of lawyers Lemon. in a courtroom, all this negotiating and convincing Jeffries. and let's make a deal. Uh, and we can even bring back <laughs> the old TV show, Let's Make a Deal. I mean, this is Jeffries. just wild to watch this all happen Lemon. live, especially when Jeffries. you just consider um, how historic this, this moment is. McCarthy. So, Tom, I guess let, let's start with, Lucas. is there a rational individual that McCarthy. is going to make a deal here um, and save just the, the disarray, as Heidi says, uh, that we're witnessing within the Republican Party right now? Jordan. Well, I mean, this is uh, certainly a challenge for the Republicans right now. Uh, when I when I look at there's a couple of observations from my perspective. One, uh, you know, Leader McCarthy has had two months McCrow. to work towards an end here. To McCarthy. He's had all the levers, all the tools to negotiate Lynch. with. And uh, to go all the way into a 930 meeting this morning Jeffries. and come out with more votes Mace. against you than you went in with potentially tells you a little bit. Kevin. It tells you that uh, one, either it's just impossible or maybe he's just not a great negotiator. But I know he's a great negotiator. That leads me to it may just be impossible. For him in this moment, Malio but the Thomas. other option is, is that he's not really working the uh, the room right now. I'm curious about that. Why is he not working the room? And then secondly, or thirdly, Man. I guess, is uh, you know where, where does it go from here? If it's not Kevin Man. McCarthy, I suspect that Kevin McCarthy will be the Jeffrey. one who uh, anoints Nasty. whomever the next person might be if it McCarthy. comes to that. So, so Tom, when you say Mass. you're surprised to not see Kevin McCarthy working the room. Are, are you? Were you expecting to see him 
on the floor going Jeffries. member to member the saying, to, you know, you, you support me, support me. Let, let me just convince you right now. Jeffries. Well, there, there are a lot of surprises that popped up, right? So you're at 9, 10, 11 votes, and you knew of five. So surely there's one or two there that you didn't know about. I, I would think you might go to them and go, hey, wait a minute, what, what is this? I thought I thought you were with me, or I didn't know. What is it I can do to, to comfort you in your decision to vote for me? And I, I haven't noticed that. He's a former whip. And, you know, and that's that's one thing whips do is that they're very active working the floor and having a conversation and communicating. Well, he, he just worked the room for a second there. He stood up and voted for himself, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was certainly expected. And look, I've known Kevin for a long time. He is a, um, you know, he's been in politics for a while, whether it's in the California legislature or now here in Congress. And he's really good with people. He's very friendly. He's well-liked. And I know right now it has to be really difficult for him because he's probably reached a point where he knows this is nearly impossible. I've given all I can give. I don't know what else to give. And uh, he's probably trying to okay. sort it out. Where does it from here? So, Heidi, you heard Tom. He says he's known Kevin a long time, that he gets along with a lot of people. He's a well-liked guy. Uh, however, <laughs> with that said, I think you might have another side to this story. I think he has uh, definitely angered uh, a, a number of people, including those within his own party, even today, throwing under the bus members of his own party. As he said, he's going to stick this out. He's going to battle it out. And, and, and even saying that members of his own party have been, quote, quote, unquote, Jeffries. out for themselves Jeffries. here. Um, so so Heidi might have a little different uh, opinion about how folks feel about Kevin McCarthy right now. Uh, he's not as popular as all that, obviously. And I think the other thing you're seeing is even though Elise Tavonix went through, well, you know, we've gained members, this was not a good midterm for Kevin McCarthy. And I think you're seeing some frustration as a result of that, saying, you know what, you didn't deliver the kind of majority that we expected we were going to get in the midterm. So, um, you know, maybe you aren't the kind of leader that is going to secure this majority into the future. The problem is you don't have an alternative. And, and to me, if McCarthy were running around that floor right now, buttonholing members, he would look incredibly weak. And so he's going to sit there and he's going to be stoic McCarthy. and then he's going to send some emissaries Mills. off to try and figure out how we can get the number of votes that he should get. And that's that's the bottom line. The bottom line is he can't just keep giving to the to the no votes. You're going to pick up no votes because if I'm if I'm looking for a, a, a piece of great real estate in a committee seat, I'm going to be a no vote because then you're going to have to come negotiate with me. And it's really not fair to the rest of the caucus. And I think he understands understands that. I think he's moving forward um, probably with a, with a second plan, and uh, this is going to play out. But people who were expecting to go to um, their uh, parties um, after they're sworn in, they're going to be sitting in those chairs for a long time today. So I want to get both of you to, to respond to this question, but Heidi, I'll start with you. Just to sort of back things up a bit and, and look at McCarthy's background, his relationship with the former president, Donald Trump, uh, how he's continued to, to support Donald Trump. You know, why are we at this, in your opinion, Heidi, and then Tom, I'll get you also to, to, to weigh in. Heidi, why do you think we are even in this position? Um, you know, what is it you think that McCarthy did, didn't do um, that, that led to this point? I, I think, number one, McCarthy may be well-liked, but I don't think he's well-respected as a leader. I think he's always been second choice. He couldn't secure the leadership um, when Boehner stepped down. He's always been kind of the second choice. And so it has opened him up to criticism from uh, the, the right flank of his, of his party. Um, I also think that there is a sense that whatever we've done in the past didn't work, and we need new leadership. We need a new look. Um, but if that new look is uh, is Biggs, let me tell you, that's not a look the Republican Party should want. And so I think it will be interesting to see how Kevin's image uh, is tarnished or embellished as a result of this. If he comes out victorious, I think that he'll be perceived as a stronger leader than if he had just won by one vote in this first ballot. Tom, uh, well-liked but not well-respected Kevin McCarthy. Do you agree with that? Norman. Well, I mean, there's clearly people who um, 
maybe don't like him, right? That, or maybe they like him, they just don't like his governing leadership style, potentially. Maybe that's the best way to characterize it because, uh, uh, I, I mean, I yeah, think a lot of these folks have probably been to dinner with him, they probably spent time with him, uh, but when it comes to making this type of decision, they struggle with seeing him as the leader of the party for the House of Representatives. Over I think Senator Heikamp was bringing up a good point. And this is probably just bubbled up over the last decade. You know, when I was elected in the 2010 class, that was a Tea Party movement. Speaker Boehner struggled with that. And he, I mean, there was a coup planned in his second term to remove him uh, when he was being elected as speaker. And he hit the number just right on the mark. And the coup, you know, was was sort of, uh, I, I guess, disposed of because one or two or three people uh, fell away uh -huh. and, uh, and and it, it exposed the attempt, so to speak. Jeffries. And so do you see that happen here later oh, on? Well, they've all exposed themselves. Uh, they all, everybody right. knows who it is. I think 13 plus Hello. votes right now. Uh, against him. And so where do you Jeffries. go from here is the big question. And uh, I think, uh, you know, if the House continues on, he okay. has to get up and talk to folks Canada. at some point. If the House is to move into the next series Jeffries. of round of votes, the results aren't going to change Thomas. a whole lot of what they imagine. If they adjourn, then that's Jeffries. a whole other situation. Then he has the opportunity to reconvene and uh, meet with members and see if he can make Jeffries. additional concessions. But what's left to give? Okay. And so I can't, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. I mean, when you go into this election and you know that the only way you can get elected is to say that you can re remove me tomorrow Jeffrey. if I don't like something you do, that's a Pelosi. tough that's a tough point of leadership. That's a tough point in which to operate from for him. Yeah. All right, we're and now in the piece. Go ahead, Heidi. Well, and, and, and he already made that concession, and I think he started out saying never, no way, that would be too disruptive, and he gave that concession, and so now what we're doing Kind of in the back groups is we are hearing uh, him Tola. basically uh, uh, yeah. saying, I want chief committee yes. assignments. Well, that's not going to happen. I mean, that's not fair. Uh, second standing ovation. The first was for Kevin McCarthy, who st stood up and voted for himself. Now the second standing ovation, no surprise, Heidi, uh, was for Nancy Pelosi there just moments ago. Uh, the Democrats are having fun today. <laughs> are they having fun really oh i think so i think uh, anytime your opposition is in this kind of disarray you're feeling better about your chances of moving legislation of working within your caucus our the, the democratic caucus is very united we started out two years ago thinking nancy pelosi was going to have our time basically getting the speakership that didn't happen and so you know this is this or four years ago this is a good day for the democratic party and a bad day for the gop we don't know how the day will end but that's the optics that you have to say is true right now. Porter. Tom, is it really that bad for the GOP? Jeffries. I mean, today is the day. I mean, it is a moment in time, clearly, for the GOP going through some, some growing pains, some governing pains, right? We've always known this wasn't going to be really a governing majority. It was going to be a political majority. So it is a tough day for the Republicans, but they have to get through this. They have to work through this. Quickly. Democrats will enjoy it, but it's just a moment. Jeffries. And then at the end of the day, whether it's today, tomorrow, or later on, when the cherry blossoms are, are blooming, uh, the Republicans will have a Republican speaker. And and regardless of who that speaker is, legislation will probably be voted on bipartisan as it comes through the House Jeffries. to get to the president's desk for signature. So I, I think what we're going through now may, you know, we may have a different, I don't know, a lot of different things happening Russia for the next couple of days, but the outcomes in the long term will probably be the Pardon. same. That's a little bit of gridlock with Rogers a lot of bipartisan of votes to get things to the president's desk. Our John Carl uh, tweeting out uh, right now, Rogers Republican defections so far, eight for Biggs, three for Jordan, Pardon. one for Zeldin. Uh, Heidi, thoughts? We already heard what you thought uh, about Andy Biggs, that that would uh, not be a, a good move. Rose. I think Jim Jordan would be worse. He carries a lot of baggage, um, kind of hit much, much better known nationally and much uh, a, a lot of uh, national yeah. criticism. Plus, his past history will become an, an issue. I don't I mean, I think that that in the end of the day, if I had to predict, I think Kevin McCarthy will be speaker. The question is, Ross. what's the strength of his speakership? How does he get there? And how does he hold his Ross. caucus together afterwards when when one vote could be? Uh, be basically a, a vote of non-confidence that could remove you. And so the, 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 the important thing to remember is if he can build a coalition today, he can bring in enough votes. Donald. 
and even even if he loses three or four of those votes, he then has a solid kind of base on which to stand. And so I, I, mean, I think that the congressman pointed out that when Boehner won, he only won by that one vote and later on had a hor horrible time managing the, the majority in the House. Um, Kevin McCarthy is going to have to figure out uh, once he gets his majority, you know, if he does, how he's going to lead and what that's going to look like. But again, I want to point out all of the loyalists that are there that said only Kevin. If they see all the goodies that the speaker can hand out going to the dissent, why wouldn't you dissent? Why wouldn't you be a no vote today? That way, if somebody comes to you and says, what will it take? You say, well, really need this for my district, really want this committee assignment. And then I think I can vote for Kevin. It puts you in an, in an unfair kind of advantage Perfect. over uh, members who have been loyal all along. And so this is really a tough Ryan. kind of dynamic for any leader of a caucus. Salazar. Well, Heidi is, is saying, Tom, that uh, it does look like eventually at the end here, McCarthy will, will get the majority uh, and take this. But how will he hold the party together? The Jeffrey. question is, how would he lead moving forward? Yeah, that'll be a challenge. I mean, a governing majority doesn't Jeffrey. exist. And so it'll be a battle, especially if there's a vacate the chair. Uh, you know, rule that's in the in the House rules Sorry. that allow you know, one to five members to, you know, have a vote of no confidence. Then we're back in Still doing is. this again, uh, you know, potentially next week or the week Sorry. after. And that's not good for governing. That's really Stand not good up. for policy. It's not good for the American people. Jeff so Reese. at some point it has to settle out. The Chicago question is, is, is do those detractors who yeah. are maybe 14, 15 right now, do they, is there anything they, they will give? You know, when I, I think about Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi had to, went through this very same thing a few years ago, but she had uh, those that were opposed to who, who were transactional. They had something of interest that, whether it was a piece of legislation or, you know, something that helped them advocate for their cause or their position. They were willing to negotiate and work with that. It doesn't appear here that these members have those same type of interests. They're not as transactional, not looking for better governance on behalf of themselves or something they're advocating for. It seems to be just Tom McCarthy, and that's that's really hard to negotiate with. You can't change if you're Kevin McCarthy. You just can't change who you are. Um, you got a lot to work with. That's hard to hard to change. Political Director Rick Klein, let's bring you in here. Uh, as the voting continues, uh, two standing ovations, one for Kevin McCarthy, who voted for himself, and then, of course, uh, Nancy Pelosi. No surprise you'd see support uh, like that for, for those two. But where do we stand right now, Rick? We also heard the first ever word spoken by the embattled George Santos on the House floor voting for Kevin McCarthy just moments ago. That said, there are 18 and counting Republican votes for someone other than Kevin McCarthy. Sherman. Another way of thinking about this, that means you need to change at least 14 minds in the subsequent ballots, and there will be subsequent ballots. Also worth noting, every Democrat so far has voted for Hakeem Jeffries. None have voted Jeffries. present. That means you don't change the threshold. We're still looking at a magic number of 218. As of now, it looks very likely that Jeffries is going to end up with more votes McCarthy. than Kevin McCarthy in this first round of voting. Neither one of them, of course, is going to get to 218, but that is a statement in and of itself. Uh, this is a larger number of defections than anyone in the McCarthy camp or, frankly, in some of the, the rebel camps uh, that are trying to elect someone other than McCarthy saw as, as plausible. Uh, it may be that McCarthy's uh, revelation this morning that he didn't have the votes have freed up some surprise people to vote for other candidates and then allow some of the horse trading to, to begin when this vote is wrapped up. <laughs> you know, you mentioned uh, George uh, uh, Santos. Uh, he's definitely come to Washington. It's all already been quite awkward, hasn't it? Uh, he only said one thing, and that was that he was going to uh, vote for McCarthy. Uh, he didn't answer any other questions, no surprise. But let's just take a moment to, to talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, basically, makes up his resume, um, garnering attention for that. Now, uh, Cl clearly people paying attention that he that he voted for McCarthy but where do things stand with George Santos at this point yeah, I mean, talk about an elephant in the room. He's being treated almost like a leper in the room uh, in some corners. Our, our, our colleague Ben Siegel reporting that uh, that he was by himself in the last row of the uh, of the ch of the chamber, seated no, nowhere near other Republicans. That one member did come up to him at one point, uh, Congressman Ken Calvert, but uh, seemed to to then run away pretty quickly when he realized who he was. It is going to be an interesting existence in Washington. Uh, he's already been besieged by reporters outside his office. Uh, he avoided questions on his way in, on his way around. He is going to come into contact with lots of members 
members of Congress who don't want him there, that don't think he That's should right. be there, that are moving to refer him to the Ethics Excuse Committee or to have him expelled. Uh, but his first action, right. his first order of business may speak to, to a survival Speaking strategy, is that uh, Kevin McCarthy really can't speak out against him, given that he needs his vote and to other people in his conference that feel like there shouldn't be repercussions right. against someone for something they did when not inside the House chamber. I guess there's one thing that we have learned, and that is um, you can still lead and be under investigation. <laughs> we saw that with the former uh, president of the United States. So um, he is, federal McCarthy. prosecutors are looking into George Santos, well, yes, so he can be sworn in, he can continue to lead as those investigations continue, right? Well, he can certainly continue to, to, to vote and perform duties as a member of Congress. Lead may be another question. I don't imagine there's going to be many members of Congress that want to appear at news conferences with him or put their names next to his on legislation. But uh, he, is, he is now Jeffries. a duly elected and uh, soon to be officially sworn in after the, the speakership is, uh, is settled. But uh, it is going to be a, a very interesting and maybe a short-lived career, particularly if those investigations come to bear. Uh, nothing that forces him out of Congress, even if he's convicted Johnson, of crimes, California. although that would, I think, fuel efforts to expel him. That gets a little bit ahead of him. It's been a whirlwind couple of weeks for Mr. Santos, who disappeared for a while uh, right after the allegations came out. Finally, over the, right, right, around, right around Christmas, acknowledged Johnson, that he had lied about aspects of his resume. Um, we've had more and more information exposed that is sort of head-scratching in, uh, in its complexity of all of these lies. But uh, as of now, he's a member of Congress. So, Rick, what's your, your take on, on what Heidi said, uh, Heidi Heitkamp, regarding Heidi. Kevin McCarthy, that he's a well-liked guy, and Tom Graves Jeffrey. says uh, he's known him a long time and, and says Please. the same thing, but Heidi adding he's just not well-respected. Um, but it does look like he, he may be on track to lose this Jeffrey. first vote, but at the end of the day, uh, he up. more than likely is going to, to get the majority and, and he will win. Um, your sources, uh, your time cover Kevin McCarthy, do you think Jeffrey. he's lost uh, more respect Jeffrey. over time, especially when he has associated himself so tightly with Jeffrey. the former president? Donald Trump. That's one of the interesting things about, about all of this, Kira, is that, uh, that Kevin McCarthy in some ways um, saw a challenge like this coming and made that fateful decision right after the inauguration of Joe Biden when, uh, when, when Donald Trump was disgraced and in exile and impeached for a second time. He made that trip to Mar-a-Lago calculating that he needed the MAGA movement, that he needed the Trump forces behind him. Well, fast forward two years and he's got Donald Trump's support. He's got the support of a lot of Trump supporters, but he doesn't have some of the hardest line MAGA forces. They aren't taking cues because they feel Jeffries. empowered, emboldened to, to speak up in this way. And that does speak to Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. It also speaks to the vacuum in true and Republican true. leadership, particularly in the House, but not limited to the House in McCarthy. these last couple of years. This is a lot of chickens coming home to roost ben for Don. Kevin McCarthy. A lot of deals that McCarthy. he's had to cut, a lot of negotiating and pliability ben over time. Gordon. It's often been said about him that he's everyone's friend, but doesn't really stand McCarthy. for very much. What does he actually want to be House Speaker Marcus. for is a different question than do you get the job. And he Jeffries. has done so much in pursuit of this gavel. So for him to be thwarted here on the first vote does go down as an embarrassment. And even if he does get there eventually, I think he will be uh, um, among the weaker speakers that we've seen in recent decades. So weaker speaker, not well respected, um, <laughs> facing a tremendous challenge moving forward. Um, how would he hold the party together? Well, the biggest thing he's got going for him is that they get to, to, to vote against the Biden agenda a whole bunch and, and start some investigations. That's the easy stuff if you're a Republican right now to, to, to run the Republican House right now. In some ways, you can get lots of messaging bills through. You can do lots of bills that are going to be dead on arrival that are sent over from the Senate or demanded by the president. Where things get much more complicated is when it comes to keeping the lights on, the funding bills around government. When it comes to raising the debt ceiling, which will have to happen in the early months of the Republican control of the House, there are hardliners on that floor right now who feel like Lots no Republican should assist Democrats in any way. They'd rather see a default on the national debt. I don't think that's Kevin McCarthy, but if and when he gets to a position where he either puts a bill forward with Democratic Jeffries. support or puts his Letter own support behind something, that is going to severely test McCarthy. that leadership. And that's one reason that I think you see Webster, him not willing to give away the store right now on the question of how easy it would be to McCarthy. replace him if he becomes Speaker. He's got to have some lines Winstrup. here. Otherwise, it, it will be these rank-and-file members that hold that over of him every Webster. moment of his speakership. And it could be uh, not just a, a very chaotic speakership, but a very short one. Wexton. Mm. Jay O'Brien, uh, where are we now? What, what letter have we entered? Where do we stand? 
I'm the I'm the where are we now in the alphabet guy. Um, we're in the <laughs> W's. We're just about to wrap up the first ballot here. And let me just look at my running tally in case anyone's voted. In the meantime, we've got 19 Williams, Republicans Georgia. who have, so this juncture, have voted against Kevin McCarthy. That is far more than the five never McCarthy Jeffers. Republicans that emerged after the Williams, election. That's York. more than the Republicans uh, that said that they were McCarthy. on the fence, plus the five never McCarthy Williams, Republicans. So we've seen some voting against McCarthy. McCarthy, who have emerged just during this floor vote. Again, 19 Republicans saying that they will not vote for Kevin McCarthy. He can only afford to lose four Republicans. So this is a tough place for him in terms of the ending of this first ballot, uh, which is just about to wrap up moments from now. And what we understand, what I can tell you, is the sense from lawmakers Wilson, is that Carolina. when this first ballot ends, that's when the wheeling and dealing is going McCarthy. to begin. Both the pressure exerted on those Whitman. Republicans who are opposing McCarthy, but also the potential, as we've been talking McCarthy. about all morning and afternoon well, long, for some kind of a deal uh, to potentially emerge yeah, so. that keeps Kevin McCarthy as the GOP nominee for speaker, perhaps Thank gets you. him to those 218 votes he needs to be the next speaker of the House. On the number of votes one needs to be speaker, I just want to reference one thing. Right now, Hakeem Jeffries has 211 votes. There are 212 House Democrats. Uh, while Hakeem Jeffries has more votes right now than Kevin McCarthy, Jeffries has 211, McCarthy has 199. We don't elect speakers of the House by just pure vote totals. We elect speakers of the House by who gets the majority of the members who are voting, which means because there are more Republicans in the House than Democrats, it, it is almost a certainty that a Republican will lead this new House and become the next speaker once Republicans can agree on who is going to be their leader. To become the Speaker of the House, you need 218. And while Hakeem Jeffries is in the lead right now, he would need six Republicans, uh, potentially even seven, to switch over his side. So as of right now, he, he, there's very, very little chance, almost no chance, that Hakeem Jeffries would be the Speaker of the House. And the only reason I bring that up is because I'm getting texts from family members uh, who are watching this all play out, as you might be at home as well, and they're saying, well, okay, Hakeem Jeffries has more votes. Would he become the Speaker of the House? And the answer to that is no. And, and it looks like, by the way, while I I was just pontificating there that we've wrapped up on the first ballot, Kira. And it uh, looks like Kevin McCarthy has lost the first boat, vote. So now that we see Kevin McCarthy is starting to work the room a little bit, we also saw Hakeem Jeffries step up. Uh, he's working, as we say on these live pictures of Kevin McCarthy, it'll be interesting to see if we go right into round two, Jay, or if they will take a bit of a break. Any any sense of what, what might happen now, if they'll keep going or, or adjourn for a bit? Well, as of right now, they got to keep going. So you're watching Kevin McCarthy work the floor. He's actually talking to Jim Jordan, who got a number of votes from some anti-McCarthy lawmakers um, who may be going to talk to those lawmakers right now. I don't know where Jim Jordan's going, but he's certainly talking to McCarthy. Um, Jordan wasn't wanting to run. He didn't want to be the Speaker of the House, but he got some protest votes from anti-McCarthy Republicans. So you're seeing Kevin McCarthy do here uh, what he does best, which is work the floor of the House of Representatives. He was a whip, which means you're in charge of whipping votes for legislation. He was majority leader, so he knows that floor well. He knows those members well. Um, the question now becomes what happens next, to your point. Right now, the rules of the House, well, there are no rules of the House because the House still has to elect a speaker before they can adopt their rules. But right now, the procedure is you go right in to the next ballot. Uh, that should begin, in theory, any minute now. To adjourn, to take that break, Kira, to your question, there would have to be a, a, a vote of the majority of the members of the House to vote to take a break. Because the first thing that the House of Representatives does is elect their speaker. The next thing they do is agree to the rules that the House will be governed under. So right now, there's no rules. It's the Wild West. It's the Thunderdome. You have to have a majority to do anything. So you have to have, at least has been explained to me by former people who are involved in the House process, that you need a majority to vote to take a break. So you go ballot after ballot after ballot until there's some kind of an agreement to take a break. Um, so right now we're seeing kind of that interval between the votes, but at least if they stay with the procedure that's been described to me and that they, they did, you know, 100 plus years ago or 100 years ago exactly, um, they will go right into another ballot. But here's the other question, Kira, which is... So much of this is uncharted territory, which is why I'm hedging a little bit on what happens next, because the House has not had to confront this 
for exactly 100 years. The last time we had multiple ballots for Speaker, 1923, exactly 100 years ago. The most ballots we've ever had for Speaker was 133 in the 1800s. That took two months to elect a Speaker of the House. So while there is precedent for going in on multiple ballots and, and figuring it out, a lot of this is uncharted waters for the members standing on that floor right now. None of them were in the House. None of them were alive the last time we went multiple ballots for a Speaker of the House. So they are very much figuring this out to a degree as they go along, just like we are. When Kevin McCarthy did not get the necessary number of votes to become the next Speaker of the House just moments ago, when you watch that play out, you watched history. You watched something play out on that floor of the House of Representatives that has not occurred in a hundred years, Kira. So again, they are figuring out a lot of this as they go along. Wild West, the Thunder Thunderdome. I'm thinking more of like the Ice Bowl, um, <laughs> where you are seeing uh, some frigid temperatures in there, some some looks, uh, so a few disses here and there. I noticed Kevin McCarthy started uh, talking to uh, some some members immediately, others uh, not engaging him. It's sort of interesting, boy, just to to be there on the floor and listening to these conversations, Jay, uh, would be amazing. Uh, seeing on one side uh, Nancy Pelosi, and then also it looks like. Kevin McCarthy and Hakeem Jeffries both exited um, the floor. So clearly uh, they're taking a, a bit of a break, but before they come back in, uh, a number of, of the members uh, still remaining. But it, Jay, also I'm noticing um, a lot of family members there, it looks like, um, kids, uh, parents even, I noticed um, of some of the members uh, there to be a part of this and, and watch it all go down. Just to add a little color here. It's not a typical uh, day on the floor at Capitol Hill. Well, that goes to the broader point here, which is that this is usually a pro forma thing. This usually has no drama, right? Members bring their families, they get sworn in, the House elects its speaker, you move on to adopt all the rules, and, and you do all that good stuff. And then, you know, the members get sworn in in what is a, a, a ceremonial thing where family members are done, some members have gatherings with their friends from back home. And, and instead, what you're seeing is that this drama over who will be the Speaker of the House has clouded a day uh, that is usually supposed to be a celebration for these members. They're entering Congress, some of them, for the first time. Others are continuing long careers in Congress. You have not seen, and again, I keep saying 100 years, but you have not seen something like this on the floor of the House of Representatives, a day that is typically a celebration full of a lot of pro forma votes. You've not seen something like this play out instead in a very long time, Kira. I should also point out, when we see everyone going here to their respective corners, McCarthy, it appears, has left the House floor, although there is chatter that he wants to pick up onto a second vote very quickly. Um, it, this is the exact scenario that I had sources from that five Never McCarthy group lay out for me weeks ago, uh, who said in their belief, it was their belief more than a month ago, that there would not be enough Republicans supporting Kevin McCarthy on the first ballot, and in fact, there would be a number of no, uh, never McCarthy votes early on as the clerk was going through the alphabet, as it was described to me uh, before the G's, they believed, these never McCarthy Republicans, that there would be enough votes to derail McCarthy on the first ballot. And that is exactly what played out now. A and what I, from what I've heard from those never McCarthy Republicans is that they believe right now is when McCarthy, his allies, start to work the vote and start to exert pressure and start to say, okay, uh, you've had your fun, you've had you know, your protest vote, now it's time to get everybody in the same boat and vote for Kevin McCarthy. So that is what, at least as, as was described to me weeks ago, the Never McCarthy Republicans were bracing for come this second ballot. If that happens, remains to be seen. The other thing that they're expecting is pressure. I, I had one Never McCarthy Republican say that their watchword, their, their phrase today was pain resistance, meaning how much pressure can be exerted on our votes before we bend, before we break. We know that former President Donald Trump was even working the vote here alongside Kevin McCarthy, trying to support Kevin McCarthy. So how that pressure potentially is exerted on those McCarthy holdout votes is another open question. But I can tell you, Kira, again, we began after the election with five Republicans saying that they would not support Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy, it's a lot harder to exert pressure over 19 members of Congress, all of those who voted for someone else other than Kevin McCarthy, than it is over five. 
Semper Gumby, as we uh, say, definitely a lot of pressure, a lot of flexibility. Who knows what's going to happen next? Political Director Rick Klein, we've got about 30 seconds or so. Uh, what do you think happens next? What are you guessing? Two big camps here, 10 votes for Andy Biggs. No one thinks he's seriously going to become House Speaker. But the nine votes for other candidates, including some for Jim Jordan, those are the people that McCarthy is likely to focus on next to try to get him into the fold, tackle this one problem at a time. Unlikely to see this happen just a second ballot. I think we're looking at three plus in terms of how this gets settled. Well, we saw that that uh, Kevin McCarthy uh, or Jim Jordan actually came down to Kevin McCarthy and had a quick, quick chat there. That's about loyalty. He's trying to tell him, I think, that, uh, that he is still on his side. But we'll have to see whether that loyalty stays if, uh, if we're, we're into this into an extended overtime of voting. Representative uh, Kevin McCarthy loses his first speaker vote, getting ready for a second round. He has left the floor. He will be coming back shortly, taking a little bit of a short break. You can see the members there. This is where the deal making happens, folks, uh, as we enter in the second ballot. Now to David Muir and our. This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon. We're coming on the air because we have been witnessing here something extraordinary from Capitol Hill, an historic and much more complicated changing of the guard in the U.S. House of Representatives. More complicated than most Republicans wanted on this first day of the 118th Congress. More complicated, certainly, than Kevin McCarthy wanted today as Republicans now assume control of the House from the Democrats. The results of this first round of this high-stakes vote for a new speaker have now come in. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy had hoped to take the gavel immediately after after the first ballot, that will not happen. The voting will continue this afternoon. He faces an uphill battle within his own party, a select few against him, but enough of them to keep him from getting the votes he needed, at least in this first round of voting, this first ballot. Leader McCarthy had spent the morning behind closed doors trying to secure the 218 votes needed to become the next speaker and to avoid having to go to another round, another ballot, which he was not able to do a short time ago. And we should point out that in not doing so, he has made history. The last time the vote for speaker had to go past the first ballot was some 100 years ago. McCarthy McCarthy, who already moved into the Speaker's office, rejecting some of the latest demands from some hardline conservative members of the Freedom Caucus. He did make some major concessions, hoping to sway his critics, including making it easier to remove him from the position if he's elected. Republicans have a razor-thin majority in the House. McCarthy could only afford to lose some four votes from his party. Uh, he lost far more than that by the end of the first ballot. And in fact, Akeem Jeffries, the Democrat, uh, the leader for the Democrats in the House, actually surpassing McCarthy. That also uh, made history. It's the first time the party not in power in the House actually leads at the end of a ballot for the Speaker of the House. Of course, that's just the first. You need to get a majority in the House in order to be named Speaker. And so they will continue to do multiple rounds of voting until there is a Speaker. It's believed that will be Kevin McCarthy. But again, we're watching history unfold. Let's get right to Rachel Scott, who covers Congress on the Hill. Rachel, you spoke with McCarthy just before he entered that chamber today, and he indicated to you that no matter how many rounds this takes, he'll see this through. David, Republican leader Kevin McCarthy is defiant. I caught up with him just moments before he walked onto the House floor, and he told me that he was willing to battle this out for as long as it takes. He met privately behind closed doors with Republican members of Congress earlier today, and he gave a very impassioned, fiery speech, telling them that he is not going anywhere. But that appears to have done more harm than good, because conservatives leaving, saying that they were sweared at instead of being sworn in today on this this very first day of the new Congress, we were expecting at least five Republicans to not support McCarthy. That number has grown to 19. And of course, this essentially paralyzes the House. They cannot move forward until they have a speaker. Rather extraordinary, Rachel. Let's get right to John Carl, our Chief Washington Correspondent. John, you have interviewed Kevin McCarthy often. Uh, tell us what's going through his mind, if you could guess at this point. And are Republicans not concerned about the optics of this, given the fact that they're making history, but history they didn't want to make today? I mean, the optics for Republicans is terrible. They've taken control. They've won control of the House by a narrow majority. The first ha act of this uh, first House of this uh, Republican House, more votes went to the liberal Democrat uh, candidate for speaker than went for Kevin McCarthy. Think about that, David. Hakeem Jeffries got more votes than Kevin McCarthy for speaker in this round. Uh, this is something uh, Kevin McCarthy has fought for. He was just 
steps away from being speaker uh, years ago and lost out, had to give way uh, to Paul Ryan. Now it's happening again. John Carl, Rachel Scott will continue to monitor us on the Hill. As soon as we do have a new speaker of the House, we'll come back on the air. For many of you, the tribute to Barbara Walters on The View continues in moment. This has been a special report from ABC News. Thanks, David. And our breaking news coverage continues here on ABC News Live. Let's get right to Capitol Hill, where everything is happening right now. Our Jay O'Brien, uh, following that first uh, uh, vote there on the, the, the first ballot, uh, McCarthy uh, failing to clinch uh, the speaker's gavel there. Uh, Jay, now they're taking a bit of a recess as we can monitor maybe those live pictures from the floor. Uh, we did see Kevin McCarthy uh, exit the floor, as did Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, still members there are gathered as we are getting ready to cover that second vote. Do we have live pictures? Do we have our eyes on the floor? There we go. Uh, Jay, you, you hear me okay? I do. I hear you just fine. Okay, great. All so, right, so it does I, look like they, they're taking a, a little bit of a break here. They're not going right into a uh, second round of voting yet. Yeah, I, I, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out what rule this is under, if this is actually an adjournment or it's just, you know, taking the clerk time to finalize uh, the, the count and then call the roll again. It doesn't look like it's an adjournment because, again, not to be the rules guy, but the House would have to, in theory, adjourn to a specific a date and time because uh, they can't adjourn in the way that they normally do because again everything is thrown into upheaval until you elect a speaker of the house so what we're watching play out instead is is this lull between these two ballots but as david said as rachel said as john just said the fact that we are even going to a second speaker ballot is absolutely historic. The last time the House did this was in the 1920s, 1923. Exactly 100 years ago did we have a Speaker of the House ballot go into multiple ballots. The longest this ever took was in the 1850s. It took two months. In fact, Kira, the history of this is fascinating because the last two times where you had really lengthy, protracted Speaker of the House battles, the country was marching towards civil war. It was in the 1850s. And so the fact that we're going to another Speaker of the House battle, again, it happened sometimes after that. It happened in 1923. But it's a history-making moment, the likes of which the modern House of Representatives has not seen. There is nobody on that floor right now. There is nobody in Congress who was around the last time we went into two Speaker of the House battles. So when we talk about the rules, the reality is uh, there's not many members in there who, who may know the rules or have, have, have read in on the fact that, you know, uh, who knows what happens after you miss the first ballot with Speaker. We do know, uh, we are hearing that a second ballot is coming perhaps soon, it, it appears soon. Um, and then we will see if there's been any deliberations, any whipping of votes in this time between the ballots, if McCarthy allies were able to get with some of those never McCarthy lawmakers or even the, the lawmakers who oppose McCarthy on the first ballot but who might be malleable, again, McCarthy can only afford to lose four Republicans if everybody who voted on the first ballot comes back and votes on the second ballot. Those are the rules of the House. And right now, he lost 19 Republicans, so he significantly has his work cut out for him. Uh, it's worth pointing out again, just in terms of clarification, even though Hakeem Jeffries is beating Kevin McCarthy in votes, he'd have to flip Republicans to his side to become the next Speaker of the House. You're not elected by the majority of votes on the floor there. You're, or you're assuming you're not elected by the number of votes cast. You're elected by the majority of lawmakers voting on the floor. So anyone who wants to be the next Speaker needs 218. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries' path to 218 is, is is non-existent. Kevin McCarthy's path to 218, despite the fact that his party is in control of the House of Representatives, uh, is a lot rockier than he would like it to be. And as we're watching live pictures, Jay, Kevin McCarthy uh, back on the floor now. And just a, a few moments ago, we, we still saw the clerk there that uh, is formally counting up all the votes uh, that were cast and has yet to announce the total breakdown. So I think that might be what we're waiting for before we enter that second round uh, of voting. Um, so, you know, you've brought this up, Rachel has brought this up, the fact that Kevin McCarthy uh, spent most of the morning behind closed doors, 
um, trying to secure the 218 votes that he did not get. Um, so clearly he's got to do something differently. And, and I know sources were telling you, sources were telling Rachel that behind closed doors, he was raising his voice, even cursing. He was quite defiant. I don't know. I think of every time that I <laughs> yell at my kids, uh, I never get what I want. So I'm uh, not sure if that was the right approach. It clearly didn't work. So he's going to have to start rethinking uh, his negotiation skills and as he's talking to members now on the floor do you think he's really has uh, do you think he he knows what what's yet to come or you think he really is holding out hope that he can change people's minds in 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 the second go around yeah, and we've got colleagues who were there near the House floor, and they've heard from the Kevin McCarthy team who've said that they were bracing for something like this. But you're exactly right, Kira. I mean, you could be a, a House leader uh, because from what I heard from the Never, Reparthi, Never McCarthy Republicans, that, uh, that aggressive speech that he gave, uh, holding firm in that meeting with House Republicans, it was met with a, uh, with a positive reception. But then for those five who don't like Kevin McCarthy, they were, it only served to embolden them. So, John Carl, Chief Washington Correspondent, you know Kevin McCarthy, you have interviewed him numerous times, you have covered him. Uh, what do you think, what does he need to do here, and, and can he do it? I, I mean, he's in a position where the optics aren't great for his party, they aren't great for him. It's uh, an embarrassing loss on the first go-around. Um, you know, what gives? Well, Kevin McCarthy has known that this moment was coming for a long, long time, uh, before the midterms, really uh, not long after the 2020 election. Uh, he knew uh, that should the Republicans win control of the House, that he was going to have to battle uh, to retain the leadership to be elected speaker. He knew this. He knew that he had uh, a core, a small core, he believed, uh, that was dead set against him. And I think that McCarthy, in preparing for this moment, uh, his strategy's been, been simple, which which is uh, he'll dig in and he will fight. He will dig in and he will let this voting go ballot after ballot after ballot because uh, he knows uh, that nobody on the Republican side has anywhere near as many uh, votes uh, as he does. And uh, certainly none of the none of those that got votes in this in this first round. Uh, but how he convinces those 19 and make no mistake, 19 is a big number of defections. It's significantly more uh, than, than he had anticipated. Uh, I'd also like to point out one other key factor here, Kira, uh, that has not really been talked about much yet. McCarthy had a major Republican figure in his corner who had endorsed him publicly and who had made calls on his behalf uh, to convince uh, defectors to vote for him. That big Republican figure is Donald Trump. These people didn't listen to Trump. I mean, this, 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 this the defections came from the Trump wing of the party, to be sure, and they didn't give a damn that Donald Trump came out publicly and said, vote for Kevin McCarthy. Rachel, you were the first one, actually, to, to grab Kevin McCarthy as soon as he came out from behind closed doors. You were talking about it this morning. Uh, you were giving us color for what his demeanor was like, how he was trying to convince uh, various members uh, to, to jump over uh, onto his side. You described how he was defiant, even cursing uh, at, at folks there in that room. Uh, he came out. You got him right there at the mic. He said he's going to battle on, as you refer to it now. It's it's. It's the stare down. Um, you know, what are you predicting? What are you seeing here? What is he going to have to do differently? Because clearly what he did behind closed doors didn't work. Yeah, Kira, well, I think if you're Kevin McCarthy at this point, you're questioning whether or not this approach that you're taking is actually working and what is actually going to get you the numbers that you need in order to claim the speaker's gavel. Because right now, you're right, it is a complete and total stare down between these two groups. And both are digging their heels in. No one is moving at this point. Kevin McCarthy doesn't seem like he wants to make any other concessions. He's already made quite a few, including making it easier to actually remove him from the position of speaker if he were 
sure to be elected, but members want higher positions on committees. Uh, they want to vote on this border bill that they've been talking about. They want to see more from Kevin McCarthy, and they've made it clear that they don't trust him. So then at the end of this, even if McCarthy is able to prevail, you have to think about what position he would be entering leadership in. It would certainly be a weaker one than he wanted, but he's firing right back at those conservatives. He told us just moments before walking onto that floor, he said if they would have fought like this to win the majority, they would have had a much wider margin. Of course, this is the slim majority that he's faced with that has him in this position in the first place, Kira. I mean, he's in a terrible situation <laughs> when you think about it because he tried, he tried two different tactics here. Uh, earlier, he tried giving in, as, as yeah. Rachel mentioned, all these concessions, concessions on the, the uh, being subject to the call of the chair, the ability to throw him out, concessions on a number of issues regarding how the House actually operates. He even put those concessions in writing yeah. Uh, faced with those five hardcore no votes. And what happened when he did that? Well, that was seen as a sign of weakness. And then you had nine other conservatives come out and said, whoa, wait a minute, this is all too little, too late. Suddenly the opposition, after he made concessions, went from five publicly to 14 publicly. So then he tried the reverse. Well, um, enough of the concessions, I'm going to get mad. Uh, you know, and, and the, uh, you know, chewing out those uh, who, were, who were opposed to him. And uh, that didn't work either. So it's unclear what he can do at this point, uh, but it's also entirely unclear who in this narrow Republican majority would actually have the vote to get 218 uh, to be elected speaker. Yeah, and, and just Kira, you know, for the sake of the American people too, why does this matter? Well, the House is paralyzed at this point, right? They cannot move forward with any business, legislating, passing bills, swearing in members until they have a speaker of the House. So we're just essentially in this long waiting game here. I mean, there's a reason why we haven't seen this for 100 years. <laughs> right, because you know. it's a disaster. When you don't have a functioning yeah. Congress, right, you yeah. can't get anything through, and that does nothing for the country. Uh, just, you know, you, you have a bit of a, 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 a sideshow here going on, and, and there's people, everyday people, wondering what's going to happen to the economy and, and everything else in, in the new year. So let me ask you both. John, let me start with you. You know, how much does the relationship uh, with Kevin, the relationship that Kevin McCarthy has had with the former president, Donald Trump, play into all this, right? You had the red wave that wasn't. Uh, we all know that Kevin McCarthy has been a huge supporter of, of Donald Trump. We also know that every time, or many times, when he steps up to the mic, it is a screaming match. It is throwing members of his own party under the bus. As Rachel was reporting and you were talking, you know, behind closed doors, it was the same type of behavior, which sort of reminds you of Donald Trump. He did not like it if you didn't like him or didn't do what he wanted you to do. Boy, he let you know. And he many times did it publicly or he did it on Twitter. So how much, John, do you think McCarthy's relationship with Donald Trump has played into this historic moment on the floor today? I think it's central. I think it's absolutely central. He had a very close relationship with Trump when Trump was in the White House. Uh, you remember I, I, I described a, a walk I took with, with Kevin McCarthy around the National Mall on, on January 2nd, uh, just days before the January 6th attack on the Capitol, uh, where I was asking him if he was going to stand up and finally come forward and say, you know what, Joe Biden won the election, we've got to put this stuff aside. Uh, McCarthy did not do that. He chose another path, which was uh, to really do everything possible to placate Donald Trump, um, to, to do basically, you know, to, to show himself as the guy that would stand there and be loyal uh, to the president, now the former president. Uh, one small exception, one exception that really only lasted a few days is when he stood up and he said that Trump bore responsibility for January 6th. But he, you know, made a calculation that there was no way that he could become Speaker of the House unless he was seen as absolutely and totally loyal to Donald Trump. And guess what? That failed. Uh, he got Trump's support and it didn't matter. And you wonder, and I'm sure McCarthy is now wondering this himself, about the path not taken. Uh, if he had stood up and he had, had he said what I firmly believe he believed uh, about the election and he had not done all he did to placate Donald Trump, to go down to see him in Mar-a-Lago just weeks after uh, January 6th, you wonder what would have happened. Because what we have seen here is Republicans are willing to stand up and defy Donald Trump, including his most fervent supporters, uh, stand up and survive. So I, I, I think Trump is central to all of this. McCarthy took a path, and that path uh, has led to this day.
So we could see uh, Kevin McCarthy reciting Robert Frost, uh, the road not taken, and sort of looking at what maybe he should have done, could have done. Um, Rachel, do you want to weigh in on, on that as well, just the relationship between McCarthy and Trump and how it's played into all of this and what you've observed and what you've heard from your sources, those that are not supporting Kevin McCarthy? Yeah, Kira, well, you know, as John was talking, I was really thinking about the tale of two chambers that we are seeing play out. Sure, the House has all the drama today, but it's also the start of the new Congress. So over in the Senate, you have a different uh, leader, Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, who, as you remember, was very blunt in condemning former President Donald Trump. Uh, after uh, January 6th, he has been very blunt about his role in having a very small majority uh, and placing the blame on Trump for a lot of what unfolded folded and what it was a disappointing midterm for Republicans and still he was elected as the minority leader of that party and so I think that you do see these two different strategies playing out in these chambers as Republicans are trying to figure out what their path forward is. I mean it was extraordinary. So, I'm, sure you re I'm sure you remember uh, Kira when I, 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 not all that long ago I, I asked McCarthy I think it was like four or five times yes. is did is Joe Joe Biden the legitimate president of the United States did he legitimately win the 2020 election and he would not give me an answer to that he would say he lives in the White House he is president which are facts that we know <laughs> but 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 he wouldn't say whether or not he uh, won that election won that office legitimately and again because he was afraid of doing anything to get crossways uh, with Donald Trump and I mean, I know, I know that Kevin McCarthy knows and believes that the election was free and fair in 2020, but he couldn't step up and say that publicly. So then if he, okay, I think we're going to, all right, John, Rachel, stay with us. We're going to go ahead and listen in uh, on the floor again. The House will be in order. The House will be in order. The tellers agree in their tallies that the total number of votes cast is 434, of which the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the state of New York has received 212. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of California has received 203. The 
the Honorable Andy Biggs of the State of Arizona has received 10. The Honorable Jim Jordan of the State of Ohio has received six. The Honorable Jim Banks of the State of Indiana has received one. The Honorable Lee Zeldin of the State of New York has received one. The Honorable Byron Donalds of the State of Florida has received one. No persons having received a majority of the whole number of votes cast by surname, a speaker has not been elected. Following the procedure used by the House in 1923 and recorded in Canon's Precedent, Volume 6, Section 24, the clerk is prepared to direct the reading clerk to call a roll anew. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio seek recognition? I rise to nominate Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. Uh, th thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I think we have three objectives this Congress, three fundamental things we have to get done in the 118th Congress. First, pass the bills that fix the problems. In two years' time, we have, went, we, ha we have a border that is no longer a border. We have a military that can't meet its recruitment goals. We have bad energy policy, bad education policy, record spending, record inflation, record debt, and a government that has been weaponized against we the people, against the very people we represent. So we, we need to pass legislation to address all that. And I hope my Democrat colleagues will join me. I really do. But I have my doubts. And if they don't, and if Chuck Schumer says, no, we're not going to take up that legislation that we pass, and if Joe Biden won't sign it, so be it. They'll have to, they'll have to answer to the people in 2024. Second, second, we can never, ever let a bill like the one that passed 12 days ago, $1.7 trillion spent, we can never, ever let that kind of legislation pass again. We, we, have to, we have to pass a budget that makes sense, that's good common sense, then do the 12 appropriation bills that, that, are, that recognize it's the people's money, not ours, and send it to the Senate, and then stand firm on that legislation. And again, if they won't take it up, and Joe Biden won't sign it, we can stand firm on a CR or something. We can have that fight. But we are not going to have what took place a week and a half ago ever happen again. And then finally, third, and this is important, we got to do the oversight, do the investigations. We have to do the oversight and the investigations that need to be done. This idea that bureaucrats who never put their name on a ballot but think they run the country who have assaulted our constituents' First Amendment liberties, they need to be held accountable. That has to happen. We need to do it. We need to do it in a way that's consistent with the Constitution, but we need to do it vigorously and aggressively. That is part of our duty as members of this body. My friends here on this side of the aisle, I would just say this. The differences we may have, the differences between Joyce and Jordan or Biggs and Bacon, they pale in comparison to the differences between us and the left, which now unfortunately controls the other party. So we had better, we had better come together and fight for these key things, these three things. That's, that's what the people want us to do. And I think Kevin McCarthy is the right guy to lead us. I really do, or I wouldn't be standing up here giving this speech. I, I came in with Kevin. We came in the same time 16 years ago. We haven't always agreed on everything, but I like his fight, I like his tenacity, and I like the, 
remember Kevin told me, I actually wrote about this in a book. I remember Kevin told me, he said, when the, the toughest times in life are when you get knocked down. The question is, can you come back? And I've always seen him be able to do that. We need to rally around him, come together and deal with these three things. Because this is what the people sent us here to do. My favorite scripture verse is 2 Timothy 4, 7. Paul's the old guy giving advice to the young guy. And he says, fight the good fight, finish the course, keep the faith. I like the verse because it's a verse of action. Fight, finish, keep. Not wimpy words, words that I think fit America. That's what the American people want us to do. They want us to fight for the things they care about and they elected us to do. And we should all remember, we should all remember, only about 12,000 people have ever had the opportunity to do what we're doing today, sit in this body, serve in this Congress. It is a privilege. It is an opportunity. We owe it to them, the American people, the good people of this great country, to step forward, to come together, get a speaker elected so we can address these three things. I hope you'll vote for Kevin McCarthy, and that's why I'm proud to nominate him for Speaker of the House. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Thank you, Madam Clerk. We're witnessing history here today. I wasn't, for half of that, I wasn't quite sure who the gentleman from Ohio was nominating. He was nominating himself. And Is the gentleman rising to place a name and nomination? I am. I, I am, Madam Clerk. I am. I'd just like to be afforded the, the same opportunity that the gentleman from Ohio took, Madam Clerk. Consider, consider all that's happened. The last time an election for speaker went to a second ballot, leader Jeffrey's beloved New York Yankees had not yet won a World Series. Consider all that's happened since then. The work that the body has entertained, the work that we've done for the people over that time. We are unified behind a speaker who will continue that progress despite the chaos on the other side, Madam Clerk. We are gonna stay here to get this done. We are unified and we are all gonna support Hakeem Jeffries for speaker. The lead vote getter, the lead vote getter in the last ballot. Madam Clerk is chair of the Democratic Caucus. I'm directed by the vote of the caucus to present for election to the office of Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 118th Congress, the name of the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries, the representative elect for the state of New York, once again, and we will be unified once again in our support for him. For what, what purpose, purpose does the gentleman from Florida rise? To nominate a candidate for Speaker of the House. The gentleman is recognized. Well, sometimes we have to do jobs that we don't really want to do. And sometimes we have to do jobs that we are called to do. And so, my colleagues, I rise to nominate the most talented, hardest working member of the Republican conference who just gave a speech with more vision than we have ever heard from the alternative. I'm nominating Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan is humble, perhaps today humble to a fault. Maybe the right person for the job of Speaker of the House isn't someone who wants it so bad. Maybe the right person for the job of Speaker of the House isn't someone who has sold shares of themselves for more than a decade to get it. Maybe Jim Jordan is the right person for Speaker of the House because he is not beholden to the lobbyists and special interests who have corrupted this place and corrupted this nation under the leadership of both Republicans and Democrats. Maybe Jim Jordan would be the right person for Speaker of the House because he wouldn't fight us when we try to get a term limits bill on the floor. Maybe Jim Jordan would be the right person because he wouldn't fight us when we try to put a balanced budget on the floor and vote for it. And maybe Jim Jordan is the right person because he would endorse the plan that was built by the Texas delegation to finally secure our border. Mr. Jordan said in his nomination that there are certain bills that we have to pass to fix the problem. The challenge is the alternative has been someone voting for the very bills that have caused these problems. 
Mr. Jordan says that we cannot accept legislation like the omnibus, and I fully agree, and if Jim Jordan were Speaker of the House, if he were the leader of the Republican team, we wouldn't have that circumstance choking the economy of our country, increasing inflation, and diminishing the prospects of a better life for our fellow Americans. And finally, Mr. Jordan said we must engage in rigorous oversight. Every one of my Republican colleagues knows that the person who can lead that oversight effort, who works on it every day, who has the skill and the talent and the will, is Jim Jordan. I'm nominating him, and I'm voting for him. The reading clerk will call the roll. Yeah. <laughs> sure. That wasn't on an existential. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeffries. Adderholt. McCarthy. Aguilar. Jeffries. Alford. McCarthy. Allen. McCarthy. McCarthy. Allred. Jeffries. Amode. McCarthy. Armstrong. McCarthy. Arrington. McCarthy. Auchincloss. Jeffries. Jeffries. Babin. McCarthy. Bacon. McCarthy. Baird. McCarthy. Balderson. McCarthy. Ballant. Jeffries. Banks. McCarthy. Barr. McCarthy. McCarthy. Vertigan. Jeffries. Bean of Florida. McCarthy. Beatty. For the second time, I proudly cast a historic vote. Jeffries. Bennett. McCarthy. Barra. Jeffries. Bergman. McCarthy. Byer. Jeffries. Bice. McCarthy. Biggs. Jordan. Bilarakis. McCarthy. Bishop of Georgia. Jeffries. Jeffries. Bishop of North Carolina. Jordan. Lumenauer. Jeffries. Blount Rochester. Jeffries. 
Bobert. Jordan. Bonamici. Jeffries. Bost. McCarthy. Bowman. Jeffries. Jeffries. Boyle of Pennsylvania. Jeffries. Rakeem. Jordan. Brown. Jeffries. Jeffries. Brownlee. Jeffries. Buchanan. McCarthy. Buck. McCarthy. Bouchon. McCarthy. Budzinski. Jeffries. Burchett. McCarthy. Burgess. McCarthy. Burleson. McCarthy. Bush. Jeffries. Calvert. McCarthy. Kamek. McCarthy. Caraveo. Jeffries. Carbajal. Jeffries. Jeffries. Cardenas. I vote for the first speaker of color of the United States House of Representatives, Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. <coughs> Carey. McCarthy. Carl. McCarthy. Carson. Hakeem Sekou Jeffries. Jeffries. Carter of Georgia. McCarthy. Carter of Louisiana. Carter of Louisiana votes Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Carter of Texas. McCarthy. Cartwright. Jeffries. Jeffries. Kassar. Jeffries. Jeffries. Case. Jeffries. Jeffries. Caston. Jeffries. Caster of Florida. Jeffries. Castro of Texas. Jeffries. Chavez de Reamer. McCarthy. Sherfellis McCormick. Jeffries. Chu. Jeffries. Cicilline. Jeffries. Siscomani. McCarthy. Clark of Massachusetts. Jeffries. Clark of New York. Jeffries. Cleaver. Jeffries. Klein. McCarthy. Cloud. Jordan. Clyburn. Jeffries. Clyde. Jordan. Cohen. Jeffries. Cole. 
McCarthy. Collins. McCarthy. Comer. McCarthy. Connolly. Jeffries. Correa. Jeffries. Costa. Costa. Courtney. Jeffries. Craig. Jeffries. Crane. Jordan. Crawford. McCarthy. Crenshaw. McCarthy. Crockett. Jeffries. Crow. Jeffries. Quayar. Jeffries. Jeffries. Curtis. McCarthy. Davids of Kansas. Jeffries. Davidson. McCarthy. Davis of Illinois. Davis of Illinois. Jeffries. Davis of North Carolina. Jeffries. Jeffries. Dean of Pennsylvania. Jeffries. Deget. Jeffries. Jeffries. De La Cruz. McCarthy. DeLauro. DeLauro. Del Bene. Jeffries. Deluzio. Jeffries. Desanye. Jeffries. Desjardins. McCarthy. D'Esposito. McCarthy. Diaz Bellart. McCarthy. Dingo. Jeffries. Doggett. Jeffries. Donalds. McCarthy. Duarte. McCarthy. Duncan. McCarthy. Dunn of Florida. McCarthy. Edwards. McCarthy. LZ. McCarthy. Emma. McCarthy. McCarthy. Escobar. Jeffries. Jeffries. Eshu. Jeffries. Jeffries. Espayat. Jeffries. Jeffries. Estes. Evan McCarthy. McCarthy. Evans. Jeffries. Jeffries. Ezel McCarthy Fallon McCarthy Feenstra McCarthy Ferguson McCarthy Finstad McCarthy Fishbach McCarthy. Fitzgerald. 
McCarthy. Fitzpatrick. McCarthy. <laughs> Fleischman. McCarthy. Fletcher. Jeffries. Flood. McCarthy. Foster. Jeffries. Fushi. Jeffries. Fox. McCarthy. Lois Frankel. Jeffries. C. Scott Franklin. McCarthy. Frost. Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Fry. McCarthy. Fulcher. McCarthy. Gates. Jim Jordan. Jordan. Gallagher. McCarthy. Gallego. Gallego. Garamendi. Jeffries. Garbarino. McCarthy. Mike Garcia. McCarthy. Robert Garcia. Jeffries. Jeffries. Garcia of Illinois. Jeffries. Garcia of Texas. Jeffries. Jimenez. McCarthy. Golden of Maine. Jeffries. Jeffries. Goldman of New York. Jeffries. Jeffries. Gomez. Jeffries. Tony Gonzalez. McCarthy. Vicente Gonzalez. Jeffries. Jeffries. Good of Virginia. Jordan. Jordan. Gooden of Texas. McCarthy. Gosar. Jordan. Jeffries. Granger. McCarthy. Graves of Louisiana. McCarthy. Graves of Missouri. McCarthy. Green of Tennessee. McCarthy. Green of Texas. Jeffries. Green of Georgia. McCarthy. Griffin. McCarthy. Grijalva. Jeffries. Grothman. McCarthy. Guest. McCarthy. Guthrie. McCarthy. Hageman. 
McCarthy. Harder of California. Jeffries. Harris. Jordan. <laughs> Harshberger, McCarthy, Hayes, Jeffries, Hearn, McCarthy, Higgins of Louisiana, McCarthy. Higgins of New York. Jeffries. Jeffries. Hill. McCarthy. McCarthy. Himes. Jeffries. Jeffries. Henson. McCarthy. Horsford. Live pictures from Capitol Hill. We have been watching the grandstanding, the arm twisting, the deal making, whispers on the floor, and the vote hunting all centered around Kevin McCarthy's quest to be named House Speaker. But at this point, a victory not looking good second time around. This is now the second Speaker vote, and Kevin McCarthy is on track to lose once again. For more, let's get to Jay O'Brien on Capitol Hill. ABC News political director Rick Klein, along with former Democratic senator for North Dakota and ABC News political contributor Heidi Heitkamp, and also former Republican Congresswoman Hudson. for Virginia, Barbara Comstock, also McCarthy. an ABC News contributor. Huffman. Jay, let's go right to you. The headline so far, uh, McCarthy does not have the votes uh, in the second ballot, and the Jeffries. never McCarthy votes appear to be coalescing Hi, all around Jim Jordan. McCarthy. That's exactly right. I mean, he can only afford to Hunt. lose four Republicans. He's lost McCarthy. 11 so far. And what we're seeing, to your point, is... Members who were voting for a scattering of other names on the first ballot, Andy Biggs, Jim Jordan, other members, uh, Byron Donalds was thrown in there, are now all, as you said, getting behind Jim Jordan. And that's really noteworthy because Jim Jordan is the one who just nominated Kevin McCarthy here on the second ballot. He gave a speech at the beginning of the second ballot saying, in essence, let's stop this, let's get ahead, let's get involved, let's get to our priorities in this new Congress. And don't vote for me was his signal, vote for Kevin McCarthy. Then, right after that, you had Matt Gates of Florida, perhaps the most vocal of the Never McCarthy Republicans, stand up and say, I nominate. Jim Jordan to be the next Speaker of the House, despite the fact that Jordan moments ago had said he didn't want the job. That was something that Gates said was a credit to Jordan and is why he should get the job. So now what you're watching is this never McCarthy vote. Get behind Jim Jordan. Try to put him forward as the person that they wanted. Uh, it, it was made clear to me weeks ago uh, by sources very close to these deliberations that they don't feel that Jim Jordan, even if he wanted the job, would have enough votes to become the next Speaker of the House because there are certainly five Republicans who might oppose Jim Jordan as there are five Republicans who oppose Kevin McCarthy. Uh, but the question that hangs over all Johnson, of this Georgia. is how many ballots do we go? Republicans, uh, the House entirely, will keep voting until Johnson. there is a speaker. And also, Johnson, what kind of deal making yeah. can be done still going McCarthy. forward? Is there still a path? to Kevin McCarthy Johnson. becoming the next Speaker of the House. I've heard from a, a person close to those five uh, Never McCarthy Johnson. Republicans Johnson. who have said there is nothing that Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy can give them at this point uh, that would get their vote. And instead, they want him to step aside and for them to coalesce behind some kind of other candidate. But again, uh, does McCarthy still have a path forward? And, and what does this do to the House GOP conference, given the fact that there is, is to a degree, disarray? Uh, and particularly when you look at the Jim Jordan aspect of this, because it's Jim Jordan saying, I don't want to be the speaker, and it's members of the House GOP conference saying, we want you to be the speaker regardless. Uh, so at minimum, the second ballot is a wash. We go on to a third. Uh, the question that hangs over the conference is, do we go to a fourth? Do we go to a fifth? Do we go even further, Kira? You know, Jay, we talk about opening day, you know, is, is always uh, the most exciting time uh, in sports. Uh, but no matter which way this goes, this opening day uh, for Congress, this new Congress, is, is just um, unlike anything we have seen in decades. A lot of power dynamics at play here. 
Yeah, we haven't seen a Speaker of the House vote go multiple ballots for a hundred years. So there is no institutional memory, uh, really, for the members in Congress right now about what to do in a protracted speaker fight. You heard the clerk of the House, uh, as she was reading off the totals and going into the second ballot, say, we're operating under the rules from 1923. That's the last time a Speaker of the House went multiple ballots, and that's the guidebook right now for lawmakers who are trying to navigate this process. To your point about this being a celebration, this is the first day of a new Congress. Republicans taking the majority, something that they wanted for such a long time. This was a day that members and members elect and members who were about to be sworn in brought their families. You saw kids sitting on the House floor there for the first vote. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I see any kids here for the second ballot because of how long of a process this could take. Uh, but this is a day that's supposed to be, for new members of both parties, a celebration. A and instead, what they're encountered with is the potential for a protracted speaker fight, certainly a speaker fight that's going in uh, to a second ballot. And, and now it appears, unless something were to drastically change a third ballot, because Kevin McCarthy does not have the votes right now on this ballot uh, to win speaker. You bring a good point about seeing all the kids on the floor and the family members and the parents. I was recognizing uh, some of them there on the floor earlier. And Jay, I mean, this is the day to skip school, right? I mean, you can't get a better uh, civics course, government's course. They can go back and, and uh, do a show and tell like no other. Um, it's quite the, the story. It, it's what everyone's talking about today. Can't get a better education than being there with the hands-on experience. Um, uh, it is, it's, it's quite incredible. Uh, let's bring our, our Rick Klein back into the mix here, our political director. So what's the strategy going forward now for Republicans as we watch uh, uh, Kevin McCarthy on track here to, to lose the second vote? Yeah, Kira, this, 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 we were now guaranteed a third vote, and that might be the most difficult, maybe the defining vote for, uh, for Kevin McCarthy. And, and here's why. They, they played it as straight as they could the first time, basically trying to say, look, I've been elected the House Republican leader. You have to vote for me. Then they played probably the best card they could, which was maybe the backup candidate of Jim Jordan, of some of the conservatives, some of the Freedom Caucus folks, and say, look, he is now going to say publicly, vote for Kevin McCarthy. Well, now you're showing, rather than just telling Kevin McCarthy that he doesn't have the votes, what happens in this next ballot becomes critical, because it's hard to imagine any of the 11 plus now that have voted for Jim Jordan, now that you know, we've seen the, the coalescing behind Jeffries. Jordan of any of the anti-McCarthy crowd, Leonard it's hard to see how you shake them. So that's where it becomes interesting. Is there someone else drafted Jeffries. into the movement? So far, things have played out Let's about go. as well as you could expect for the anti-McCarthy forces. McCarthy. But what is their end game? Is Let's Jim go. Jordan the answer? I think almost certainly not. Is McCarthy. the answer to try to urge the McCarthy forces Levin. to support a consensus candidate, to, to, to recognize that they're not going to be able to get Blue. their guy across the finish line? Then does Steve Scalise Jeffries. or Lee Stefanik or someone else entirely come into Love view as a, as a potential House speaker? I think this Jeffries. next vote that this sets up is going to be the Love one that kind of smokes out the, the biggest moves that are left for either McCarthy. of these sides. Okay, so l let's just, let's be, Lucas. try and be somewhat practical here and, and take a guess at how long this could Luke go Meyer. because the first time around McCarthy. there were some other nominations. Uh, yeah. Folks like Andy Biggs, uh, Lee Zeldin, Jordan. didn't make the second round of nominations, but as you mentioned, Jim, Jim Jordan uh, did. It's, it's uh, Kevin McCarthy, Hakeem Jeffries, Jim Jordan, you said. Right the now trail. it looks like 12 12 votes now for, for Jim McCarthy. Jordan. So it, it, the, the, let's Lynch. say McCarthy does not. Uh, he's on track to lose this. So we have to go into Lynch. round three, right? The third ballot. Um, could we McCarthy. see other nominations, experimentation Magaziner. here of throwing in some other names to see if that sort of Jeffries. rattles rattles some cages, changes Malio votes? Um, and at what point McCarthy. does... I mean, does Kevin McCarthy Man. at any point say, okay, enough is enough? I mean, McCarthy. what are what are the, what's the, Manning. I guess, the, the number of options Jeffries. that we could witness here? Um, because McCarthy has said he's staying in for the entire battle, right? McCarthy. Yeah, but, Kira, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if they try to take some Mast. kind of a break after this, go back to their corners and strategize McCarthy. again. Because clearly, if you just go up with the same candidates, Mast. you're not going to get a different result. So either right. another name has to come forward, or the negotiations Mast. have to continue in a different way. But here's the thing: Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy's been trying to, to engage in these negotiations McCarthy. for two months, including uh, as late as this morning, McCarthy. trying to get across the finish line with these folks. To hear what Matt Gates said about Kevin McCarthy, saying that he 
he's sold pieces of his soul piece by piece McCall. over the last decade. That's really hard to come McCarthy. back from. Matt Gates is not going to be on your side. But of the others, McClain. how determined are they really? I think this McCarthy. next round is where we're likely to see a different name McClintock. begin to percolate. Uh, and it might be part of a strategic McCarthy. play that uh, that both sides are involved in. But I, I can't McCullum. imagine them going forward immediately with a third vote Jeffries. without some kind of another option and some kind of another end game. It's not that they haven't anticipated these things. It's just they're, they're flat aren't good answers right now McCarthy. because the math is as stubborn as it's always been. McCarthy. So we really didn't see Kevin McCarthy work in the floor Jeffries. after after the first vote, right? McCarthy. He he actually left the floor, Jeffries. took a bit of a break, came back. We saw him chit chatting McKinley. with a few people like Jim Jordan. But uh, I mean, I was, when we were talking to Tom Graves, former Meeks. congressman for for Georgia earlier, he Jeffries. said he was actually surprised. He says he knows Kevin Car McCarthy really well, and he was surprised that he didn't see Kevin Jeffries. McCarthy jumping up and really working Man. the room and trying to make deals in Jeffries. the moment. So if they they do take User. a break. Is is it time for Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy. to really get serious here and just say, hey, I want to meet with you, I want to meet with you, I want to meet with you, let's go behind closed Jeffries. doors, let's figure this out. I mean, does it intensify? Because he's already been pretty defiant, right? Jordan. Yeah, I, I think it's not going to play out on the House floor, and that's the is likely to do be behind closed doors as he tries to figure out what his options are. The big play that McCarthy Miller forces had after round one was to say to Jim, McCarthy. have Jim Jordan be the next person to nominate him, uh, and that Miller obviously has not worked. Uh, likely to have fewer than 19 McCarthy. non non McCarthy votes this year, but but we're still it's hard to get that to whittle that number down, particularly McCarthy. if you you know that we started at that five dead Mills. set never ever forever uh, Kevin McCarthy. They had to prove it and they've McCarthy. proven it and they've overperformed with their numbers now for a second Molinera. straight vote i think that's why the the, the real intensity McCarthy. moves behind closed doors after this Molinar. all right well we are now into McCarthy. that second vote looks like uh, representative kevin mm -hmm. mccarthy is on track to learn to lose this McCarthy. one as well he already lost the first uh the Four first of of speaker vote uh, we are going to continue to monitor this we're just going to take a More quick break Utah. and we'll be right back McCarthy. with our star political team more of wisconsin so much happening these days, it's hard to keep up. Things change hour by hour, minute by minute. The historic weather that's now unfolding. The worries on Wall Street. We're bringing you the right now. Been a nationwide teacher shortage. The right now look at the day ahead. An alert this morning for dog owners and the key takeaways from the biggest stories. World News Now and America This Morning, America's number one early morning news. Today does feel a little different. Early mornings on ABC News Live. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. After an extraordinary newsmaking year, thank you for making ABC's This Week America's number one news and politics show on Sunday mornings. You never know what you're going to get on this show. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yes, Whoopi! This mic on? Can you hear me out there? Behind the scenes is always a better show. Absolutely. 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 That's what people don't see during the commercial break. Right. They don't. What happened? I had no idea really what I was getting myself into. That day that we walked out, I, I treasured that day. I just, I couldn't sit there. You're doing good, Joy. You're doing good. Oh, yeah, baby! It was crazy. Behind the Table. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. We are honored. ABC's 2020, winner of three Emmy Awards for Excellence. Thank you for making 2020 Friday night's most watched and most honored news magazine. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. More Americans choose ABC News America's number one news source. Hey. Palmer. McCarthy. 
And welcome back to our Canada. breaking news coverage. I'm Kira Phillips. You are looking at live pictures from Jeffries. the House floor there on Capitol Hill. We have been watching Jeffries. all the grandstanding and the arm Jeffries. twisting, a lot of deal making going Cass on, Brown. seeing whispers on the floor among members as that vote hunting around Kevin McCarthy Jeffries. continues and his quest Kane. to be named House Speaker not looking so good at this point. Uh, a victory uh, did not happen Pelosi. the first time around. He is on track now Jeffries. not to get the second speaker vote Peltola. as well. For more, let's get to Jay O'Brien on Jeffries. Capitol Hill, uh, ABC News political Pence. director Rick Klein also. Uh, Jay, let's start with you. Um, as, as we've been joking throughout the morning Jeffries. and afternoon, um, you've been giving us Pence. our ABCs all day. Where are we Jordan. right now in the uh, second count? What letter are we on? Where do things stand? Well, let me hear this next name because I don't know where we've Peters. yet gone in the alphabet. I'm trying to, you were Jeffries. in the P's, there you go. You just heard from Peters. But where Peterson. we are in the vote count is that there are 16 Jeffries. Republicans who have said that Jeffries. they are not going to vote on this ballot for McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy. And that is fatal on Phillips. this ballot for Kevin McCarthy. He can only afford to lose Jeffries. four Republicans. He's got 16 Pingree. saying that they're voting for somebody else. Now, on Jeffries. the first ballot, what we saw okay. are those, quote unquote, never McCarthy Jeffries. Republicans and the ones who just said Porter. that they were playing not going to vote for Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. They were scattered amongst uh, a couple of different candidates and names. Andy Biggs, um, uh, Jim Jordan, Byron Preston. Donald's got one vote, although Byron Donald's does not want to be the speaker, neither does Jim Jordan. Jeffries. Now what we're seeing is Whitley. that never McCarthy faction coalesce Jeffries. and start voting for Ramirez. Jim Jordan. Uh, and that's really notable because Jeffries. Matt Gates stood up he nominated Raskin. Jim Jordan to become the next speaker, but only Jeffries. a few moments before, Jim Jordan Russian stood up and had nominated Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy for this second ballot and said, Rogers in a sense, to his colleagues, don't vote for me, let's vote for Kevin McCarthy, McCarthy and get on with the business of this Rogers Congress. I can tell you that uh, from my colleagues, Catherine Falders McCarthy. and Will Staken, who are standing right outside of the House floor, right outside the, of that room that you're watching, they caught up Rogers with Jim Jordan, who said Jordan told Matt Gates not McCarthy. to nominate him, but instead Matt Gates decided to nominate Jim Jordan anyway. And, and to Rick Klein's point McCarthy. earlier today, that was one Rose of the Dan. biggest uh, opening salvos of this second vote Jordan. from the McCarthy team, saying to Jim Jordan, who had been uh, a, someone who had been considered, you know, by the far right, a contender to McCarthy, someone who had gotten Stanton. some votes, about nine votes on the first ballot, having him come up, nominate McCarthy Jeffries. was meant as a means of, it appears, taking the wind out of the sails of the Nevin McCarthy faction. Instead, it's had the opposite result, and you're seeing the Nevin McCarthy faction vote for Ross. Jim Jordan and Mass. And also, Jeffries. you're seeing 17 Never Browser. McCarthy votes so far, no, you know, votes against McCarthy so far. McCarthy. And we're only in what I think is the J's here in the Boy. alphabet, so there is some runway to even potentially on the Jordan. second ballot outpace, uh, we're in the R's, excuse me, outpace the 19 Republicans who said uh, who said no to Kevin McCarthy on the first ballot, although, or in, it's unclear here. The thing I can Luis. tell you is we haven't seen any Republicans switch from another Jeffries. candidate to Kevin McCarthy on the second ballot, which Cooper's is bad murder. news for Kevin McCarthy. He needs people to switch to him. Jeffries. We've only seen the change in vote from voting for a different Luther. kind of candidate to voting for Jim Jordan. So this is a, a, a difficult position for Kevin McCarthy on the second ballot. Ryan. It, it appears he's going to have to reassess and start Jeffries. working on the third ballot. Um, and again, on. Kira, as we've been saying this morning, but it's it's worth McCarthy. repeating consistently. You are watching Selena. on your screen right now history in the making. Jeffries. The last time the House had multiple ballots for a Sanchez. speaker was a hundred years ago. It's only happened a, a, about a dozen times in American history. A uh, one time it Santos. took two months. So this Carson. is something that will be recorded in Sorry. the history of the United States House of Representatives, no matter how it ends. Uh, but certainly Kevin Scalise. McCarthy has his work cut out for him to make sure it ends in his favor. McCarthy. Yeah, and apparently 100 years ago, Scanlon. it took to uh, getting to the ninth ballot. Jeffries. So if we are only on number two, this could be a very long me. day and a very long Jeffries. night. So he, clearly, Kevin McCarthy has to do Jeffries. something differently here, Jeffries. Jay, right? So after this, Snyder. unless he wants to kind of, you know, wants to keep Jeffries. seeing repetition over Skulls. repetition, there's going to be, has to Jeffries. be some type of break. And then he's got to start trying Schreier. to make some deals. He's not going to be able to do that Jeffries. on the floor. He's not getting up and working the floor. He's going to have Schreier. to take folks behind closed doors and say, look, we get, this is, you know, quid pro quo here. Austin Scott. Well, and, and the question that hangs over McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy and his team is what deals are left David there Scott. to be cut 
Uh, he's Jeffers. caved largely, and although not entirely, Scott, on Virginia. something that was a big sticking point for him earlier, which was the Jeffers. motion to vacate the chair. That's a Self. mechanism that can be triggered to Jordan. remove a sitting Speaker of the House. McCarthy said he wasn't going to budge on that. He budged uh, to a large part on that, although not all the way. And something Session. that I've heard repeatedly from this Never McCarthy group is that they feel, McCarthy. amongst the five of them, the five Sue. core McCarthy holdouts who, if they stay together, could deprive McCarthy of the speakership, Jeffers. although their numbers have grown. But that was five say that there's really nothing Sherman. Kevin McCarthy can do to earn Jeffers. their vote other than drop Sherman. out and throw his weight behind someone else. Jeffers. And then, of course, someone else would be the GOP, the leading GOP nominee Session. for speaker. Um, again, whether that's Carton. just bluster or whether that's an actual Slacking. tactical battle plan is Jeffers. unclear. But as of right now, Smith Kevin McCarthy, Missouri. the question that he confronts going Carton. into this third ballot soon is what does Smith he have left to offer and, and, and to deal with? Um, and, and his options over the last few weeks as he's made repeated concessions have gotten slimmer and slimmer and slimmer. Uh, political director Rick Klein, let's bring you in on this. I mean, clearly, as, as Jay Jersey. points out, Kevin McCarthy is going to have to change his battle Pardon. plan um, and convince uh, various soldiers uh, to, to fight for him in order to Jeffries. take this uh, to the next level. Smuggling. So in addition to that, uh, what are the chances Pardon. are of seeing someone else being nominated here Sorenson. that is a true player? I, Jeffries. Right now, this vote is is, uh, is a complicated uh, political Soda. kabuki. Uh, the, Jim Jordan is a stand-in <laughs> right now for the anti-McCarthy votes, and as Jay pointed out, it doesn't appear that they have budged. Jeffries. So I think if you're looking at the vote right now is between uh, between Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan, I think it's in, 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 in part Stansburg. you're missing the, the larger theme that's at play right here. McCarthy's still the likeliest Jeffries. person to be speaker, I would argue, but his chances are diminishing with every passing vote. Uh, of course, we've talked about Hakeem Jeffries. He's not going to be the speaker. The Republicans won't let that happen. I'm pretty pretty confident in that. I think, though, uh, Jim Stand. Jordan is probably not where everyone Jeffries. lands. And I think his name is now being put forward to show the, the way that this anti-McCarthy group Martin. can stand together, to show that this wasn't just four, five, Steel. six. This is now 19 and counting McCarthy. Republicans who are, who are uh, con Stefani. committed to not voting for Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. That gives them an opportunity, though, as you see Elise Stefanik vote for Kevin McCarthy. It gives them an Martin. opportunity to maybe cut some kind of a deal. Stupid. Maybe at this point is where they McCarthy. would approach the McCarthy team and say, look, McCarthy's not going to get Stevens. it. But what about Steve Scalise? What about Jeffries. Elise Stefanik? What about someone else that we're not talking about Stewart. right now? Uh, where can we join forces McCarthy. here? Because you heard in Jim Jordan's speech, they, uh, they want Republicans to remember why they're Republicans and that they have a lot more in common with each other uh, than they Jeffries. are with their, their differences with the Democrats. And that gets Strong. lost in the, in the utter debacle McCarthy. that is the, the, the second round Swallow. of voting and counting today. Jeffries. And so what could be Sykes. Can you give some examples of some Jeffries. deals that that could be made here? Um, you know what what would Kevin McCarthy need to do to sway uh, more members um, to come Tim. to his side? Uh, can you give a few examples of, of what well, could work, what he might be Tim thinking about, what could be at play here when when he's trying to make these deals? The thing that would seem to do it um, immediately would Canada. be to agree for any one member to be able to offer a motion to replace the speaker. Now, does McCarthy want a Jeffries. job that he knows he can't keep under those circumstances? That's a question of, that only Kevin California. McCarthy can truly answer. Uh, and does that then embolden others Jeffries. to start to ask for other things? Does that make everything else unravel? Thompson, Beyond that, we've heard talk about uh, empowering um, rank and file members to, to have a legal entity that's Thompson, separate from the House of Representatives in case they wanted to pursue legal action against McCarthy. Democrats, uh, commitments to different types of oversight. That's the easy stuff. Maybe a commitment even on what you do for the debt McCarthy. deal, but it's very hard. There aren't a lot of arrows left in his quiver. Timmons. Presidential historian McCarthy. Mark Updegrove joining the conversation now. Tiny. Mark, it's definitely not an exaggeration to say that we Jeffries. are making history today. The last time Please. we witnessed uh, something like this was about 100 years ago. So just put this into perspective for us from a historical Jeffries. standpoint. Well, you nailed it, Kira. It's, it's been 100 years, literally 100 years Jeffries. This month that this happened, Tonko. Frederick Gillett was a Republican from Massachusetts Jeffries. that took nine ballots 
to, to secure the speakership. So this is not Jeff unprecedented, Bush. but it hasn't happened for a long time, partly because when a party Torres takes power, they're organized, right? They have a plan. Jeff and this is a reflection of a very Trahan. fractured, very riven party, partly because of the, the legacy of the previous Republican Jeff President, uh, uh, D Donald Turner. Trump, who left not only the nation Carter. more divided, but his party more divided as well. Underwood. Okay, am I putting you on the Jeffries. spot if I say let's uh, go Valadeo. back 100 years and talk more about McCarthy. the last time that we did Van observe Trump. what we are observing now, uh, m moving into the, the, the fourth ballot, uh, or the ninth ballot, I guess, rather, uh, where a vote was, was finally made. Um, what was McCarthy. the scenario? What was that time in history? What Van was taking Dine. place? Warren Harding was president, Kira, it was, a, it was a very different time in America. There were just undercurrents in the Republican Vargas. Party, divisions in the Republican Party that made Jeffries. selecting a speaker uh, a little uh, perilous, a little more difficult at that time. But I think Jeffries. what, what uh, I would be concerned Easy. with, and, and I think uh, Rick uh, alluded Jeffries. to this, what I would be concerned about Velasquez. if I were Kevin McCarthy is if I Jeffries. do get the speakership, what it portends for my Wait. leadership going forward. Am I able McCarthy. to bring this party together to actually accomplish Walmart. something in, in this Congress? McCarthy. That's what I would be worrying about if, if I were Kevin McCarthy. He also, I think, must realize the, the very big shoes McCarthy. he fills with Nancy Pelosi. We Washington saw Schultz. two years ago the divisions in the Democratic Party as Jeffrey. Speaker Pelosi took the leadership, but she quickly Waters. consolidated power. I, I suspect that will be far Jeffrey. more challenging for Kevin McCarthy if indeed he secures Watson the Coleman. speakership. So Jeffrey. how do you think Kevin McCarthy is going Weber to go, whether he secures the speakership or not, uh, how is he going to go down in Western history after this? Well, first of all, he has to make history <laughs> by becoming the speaker. Uh, and that has that remains well to be made. seen. So Webster, Florida. <laughs> we'll see if that happens. I think, Kira, it depends on what he can get done, obviously. Um, and that will necessitate bringing a coalition McCarthy. together of Republicans who at this point, Western. many of whom at this point are McCarthy. stridently opposed to his taking Weston. the speakership. Even if Kevin McCarthy does Jeffries. get it, though, he's still dealing with uh, a, 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 an Jeffries. upper chamber, the Senate, which is dominated by Williams Republicans, albeit by a very thin margin, and a Democratic Jeffries. presidency with Joe Biden Williams at the helm. York. So he's not going to be able to accomplish Pardon. a great deal. He can probably block Williams a lot of, that, uh, of the Biden agenda. Sometimes Pardon. you get credit in history not for what you do, but Wilson for what doesn't Florida. get done by virtue of you being in place. So that's probably the better way that Jeffries. Kevin McCarthy will make history by Wilson preventing the Biden administration from getting through its legislative agenda. McCarthy. Well, as we know, I mean, as long as this continues, uh, we don't have a functioning McCarthy. Congress, right? So, so nothing Wilson. can get through. So there are a lot McCarthy. of other things uh, that could make yeah. history, <laughs> good or bad, uh, not looking real great, if you don't have a functioning <laughs> Congress. That's exactly McCarthy. right. I, mean, I suspect that the Joe Biden uh, White House knows that, th that they will mostly get things done in these next couple of years through executive orders. Since you don't have a, do a Democrat-dominated uh, House of Representatives, you do have, uh, again, as I mentioned, a very thin margin in the Senate. So uh, the, 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 the Biden White House, too, will the have its challenges over the next couple the of years. Here. of the representatives elect who did not answer right, the first call in. The vote just the wrap, Mark. Jeffries. So it looks like some members were late to the party. I remember when they called out Deloro and uh, she didn't get a 
a vote, uh, and now now she is. So it looks like there are a few members. Gallego. That have shown Jeffries. up now, and they are making their uh, choices heard. Representative Kim McCarthy still on track to lose uh, the second speaker vote, but there are a few Smith members here that have just Nebraska. shown up. McCarthy. Every vote counts. Let's see who else. Webster of Florida. McCarthy. Okay, now I think that's everybody. Uh, Jay O'Brien uh, still with us up on the hill. Jay, it looks like possibly there were some uh, folks late to the party, or is it possible that they they were there, did, didn't uh, didn't call out a name? I, I, this, now this is one of the technicalities. I'm not quite sure uh, what happened. Possibly they weren't in the room. Now they are. Had had it, what, what what just went down? Yeah, you have to be there at the beginning, but then you may not have been there when your name was called, which is what you're seeing them them finish off with, with the members that they may have missed over the roll call vote. Um, but it, the, the key point is this. Right now, and it will end this way in the vote, uh, actually the vote's over, you're seeing it now. 19 Republicans voted against Kevin McCarthy. He did not move a single vote in his direction. He did not change a single mind from the first ballot to the second ballot. The only changes we saw are the far-right Republican members who opposed Kevin McCarthy all got behind Jim Jordan. So you didn't have a bunch of other different kinds of nominees picking up a single vote there or a single vote here. Instead, you had 19 Republicans vote for Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan, who began this vote by saying, by nominating Kevin McCarthy and saying he does not want to be Speaker of the House and saying to his colleagues that they should throw their support behind Kevin McCarthy and begin the work of the new Congress because the new Congress is stalled, it's frozen until you elect a Speaker of the House. Matt Gates came up after Jim Jordan and said, I hear everything, and I'm paraphrasing here, but I hear everything Jim Jordan just said, but I'm going to nominate him for Speaker anyway. And Jordan goes on to get 19 votes for Speaker. That is a significant impediment for Kevin McCarthy. The fact that he was unable to move a single vote in his direction from the first ballot to the second ballot is very, very, it creates a much rockier road for his team. Case in point, when Kevin McCarthy emerged from the chamber after the first ballot, he said to my colleagues who are standing right there in front of the chamber, Will Staken and Catherine Falders, that his team relatively expected this to happen, that they expected that kind of resistance on the first ballot. Now the question becomes, did they expect that kind of resistance on the second ballot? And what is their plan for the third? All right, Jay, thanks. We're going to get straight to our David Muir now and join the network. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon. We're coming back on the air for this extraordinary and historic battle unfolding on Capitol Hill at this hour. On this, the first day of the 118th Congress, the first day of the House under Republican control. And for the first time in a century in this country, the vote for House Speaker has gone to a second ballot and still no leader. Kevin McCarthy failing to get the votes he needs. The math essentially did not change in the second round of balloting. What did is that the 19 Republican votes that did not go to Kevin McCarthy, this time all went to Congressman Jim Jordan. You see there on the screen. This will now head to a third round of voting. Congressman Jim Jordan, who received six votes in that first round, had actually nominated McCarthy this time before the second round of voting began. But then Jordan receiving even more votes the second time after Congressman Matt Gates nominated Jim Jordan for speaker instead of McCarthy. Also making history today, for the second time today, the leader of the party not in power in the House anymore, Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries in the minority party, earning more votes than the majority, twice in the first round and in the second round of votes. He led in that first round as well. Again, this will now head to a third ballot. McCarthy vowing to fight as long as this takes to win the gavel. But the question at this hour, as we watch history unfold here, will these 19 votes, these 19 members of Congress, be determined to block him, to block Kevin McCarthy? Will there be somebody else who emerges? 
Let's get to our congressional correspondent, Rachel Scott, on the Hill. Rachel, this is uncharted territory. What happens next here? <laughs> well, this is essentially a steering contest between two groups of Republicans, the ones that are backing Republican leader Kevin McCarthy and the ones who say that they will not. At this point, if you are Kevin McCarthy, you are starting to wonder whether or not your strategy here is working. He has already made some major concessions, including making it easier to remove him from the position of speaker if he were to be elected. He's huddled with Republicans behind closed doors this morning, making an impassioned plea for them, telling them that he will not stand down, that he's willing to battle this out. One by one, we've seen members actually go into his office. He's actually moved into the Speaker's office, even though he does not have the votes to be the next Speaker of the House. We know that he's currently leaving the chamber. We can imagine that he's going to be trying to make another pitch to some of these Republicans, trying to convince them that he deserves to be the next Speaker. But at this point, it's clear he does not not have the votes. And I just checked in with a source close to McCarthy who told me that nothing has changed at this point. He is willing for this to go on as long as it takes. And again, David, the House is essentially paralyzed at this point. Quick no legislating, no bills can be passed until there's a Speaker of the House. Paralyzed at this point. Fairly new early in the new Congress. But again, as Rachel points out there, and Rachel, we'll get a follow up here for you. Uh, no business can proceed until they actually have a Speaker of the House. Uh, Rachel, you mentioned that Kevin McCarthy they moved into the speaker's office uh, ahead of time, ahead of this vote, still confidence, confident he will be the speaker of the House when this is all said and done. Uh, a question for you, and it might be impossible to answer at this point, but folks at home are going to start wondering, you, when, you, when you've got Jim Jordan uh, essentially endorsing Kevin McCarthy on the floor, and then Matt Gates coming out and endorsing, you know, uh, Jim Jordan, then he gets the 19 votes. Is this something that they knew was going to play out here today? Was this part of some alternate plan? Did Jim Jordan know this was coming? I don't think uh, Congressman Jim Jordan knew this was coming. He actually told our colleagues that uh, he didn't see this coming at all. He didn't want Matt Gates to nominate him for speaker because he is supporting Kevin McCarthy. But as you can see, this is sort of a back and forth. And as you mentioned, this is, in fact, unchartered territory that we're moving into because no one here in this Congress right now was obviously here 100 years ago for the last uh, fight that when this came down to a, a, nominee, a nominee losing the first ballot. So right now, it is unclear just exactly where we go from here. If this comes up for a third ballot, we could see um, these 19 Republicans back another Republican. Uh, but at this point, it's still clear that Kevin McCarthy just does not have the votes, David. And Rachel, you mentioned Jim Jordan didn't know this, says he doesn't want to be Speaker of the House. So is there a possibility here that somebody else now emerges as a potential sort of alternative to Kevin McCarthy, given the fact that these 19 members of Congress appear to be determined to keep McCarthy from the role? Yes, that is a possibility, but then the question is, can that person get the votes that they need in order to become the next speaker? If Kevin McCarthy can't do it and he has the support of the majority of the conference, will someone else, the number two uh, in leadership, Steve Scalise, so will the number three, Elise uh, Stefanik, will they be able to capture the Republican support that will be necessary in order to clinch the speaker's gavel? Right now, no one, no Republican at that point has the numbers, which is why we are seeing this move uh, to ba multiple ballots, multiple rounds of voting, the first time that this has happened in a century, David. Incredible. Rachel Scott, great reporting as always. Let's put the numbers up on the screen for folks at home so they can see this uh, as we take this to John Carl. And again, so quite something, John. Kevin McCarthy with 203 votes. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries with 212 votes. The second round of balloting where you have the minority party, uh, the leader of the Democrats actually beating the Republican. Obviously, he doesn't have the majority that he needs to become House Speaker. But this is quite something to have this happen in two rounds with uh, no answer on where this is all headed. No answer and the exact same number of Republican defections, 19 Republicans voting for somebody other than Kevin McCarthy. What changed in the second round is that all of them coalesced around a single alternative, that's Jim Jordan. And a little bit of uh, Republican House history is in order. It was eight years ago when McCarthy believed he was in line to become Speaker of the House uh, after the Republicans had won back control in 2014. And it was Jim Jordan who led the opposition uh, to Kevin McCarthy back then and sunk his chances uh, to become Speaker, ended up becoming Paul Ryan, of course. Since then, Jordan and McCarthy have worked very closely. Um, Jordan has been supporting him. But I have to tell you, uh, David, I sat in that chamber and listened to Jim Jordan's nominating speech for the second round. He stepped forward to put McCarthy's name in for this se second ballot. And that was a speech 
that said almost nothing about Kevin McCarthy. He was speaking about the way the House operates. He was speaking um, uh, about uh, basically what, how he thought things had to be run differently. He did, you know, his first couple of sentences were about Kevin McCarthy, but the rest of his speech was a speech that sounded like a campaign speech uh, to become Speaker of the House. That said, Jordan did not vote for himself in that round. He voted for Kevin McCarthy, but we clearly have a long way to go here. Uh, I think we will not just see a third ballot. I think we will see a third, a fourth ballot, and who knows beyond that. Yeah, that was quite a speech. Uh, was extraordinary. Mentioned Kevin McCarthy in the beginning, but then, as John points out, went on to talk about what these 19 members want instead, the issues that they believe are most important. And John Carl, that was quite something when uh, Matt Gates, Congressman Matt Gates, got up there, endorsed Jim Jordan, and then essentially said that Kevin McCarthy had sold himself along the way. And, you know, and keep in mind, this started as a rebellion of five Republicans, because that was all you needed. Uh, you know, th th this, margin, this majority is so narrow that five Republicans uh, can sink a speaker. So it was the five, you know, hardline conservative Republicans led by Matt Gates who, uh, who stood up and eventually, you know, led to that first ballot where you had 19 of them voting against. But here's the thing. Uh, if, if we go on further here and, there, and, and there's a movement towards Jim Jordan, there may well be at least five or more moderate Republicans in the House that don't feel comfortable with Jim Jordan as, as Speaker. Uh, so I, I, again, you, you asked Rachel about you know, new names emerging. I mean, I, I, I was looking uh, very closely at Steve Scalise uh, sitting uh, just across the aisle from Kevin McCarthy as all this was going on. He's quietly supporting McCarthy over and over again. Uh, you know, he's somebody to watch, and there are others. John, Rachel, our powerhouse team there. One more question for both of you. I wonder if there's a lesson in here about not moving into the speaker's office before you have the vote locked up. <laughs> and how long could we be here? I mean, we're, again, in uncharted territory, as I mentioned. Uh, you have to go back well more than a century uh, to, to see multiple rounds of balloting beyond the second round. I mean, look, we saw, Rachel mentioned the, uh, what was it, 1856? Yep. Uh, I think that was before your time. Uh, it, it went for two months. Uh, it went uh, well over 100 rounds of balloting. I, I don't expect it will go that long, although, uh, you know, Gates is out there talking about how the cherry blossoms could be, uh, could be blooming. That happens in March, as you well know, David. Uh, uh, so th this could go on for a long time. And Members Rachel, one here last... are expecting for a very long night, David. That's for sure. Yeah, and <laughs> Rachel, a quick question for you because you've talked to so many of the centrist Republicans, more moderate Republicans, uh, in in that chamber. There has got to be a lot of frustration about what they're witnessing unfold today. It does not look good for them. The optics are simply horrible for those who did want Kevin McCarthy as their leader. Oh, oh, definitely. And this is supposed to be a day. I mean, we are talking about how historic this is, David, but the first day of a new Congress, we have families sitting in the chamber. Members bring their children. They're supposed to get sworn into office. None of that is happening at this point. So you have a group of moderate Republicans that are growing extremely frustrated, especially because they're supposed to be riding this high after clinching a very narrow majority in the House. Listen, it wasn't the wide majority that they wanted, which is why Kevin McCarthy is in this position in the first place, but they are ready to get on with it so they can start moving on to the business of Congress, David. All right, going to be a long night ahead. Rachel, John, we'll both be on World News. We'll see you a short time from now. Uh, for that, let's get to our political director. A quick question before we go to Rick Klein, because Rick, a, a bit messy as we watch history unfold today, uh, but the Republicans will still maintain control of the House. What does this mean, though, if Kevin McCarthy does, in fact, become the speaker at the, at the end of this day or end of these 24 hours, uh, uh, or perhaps somebody else emerges as well? Republicans still in control of the House. What does that mean for the Biden administration moving forward? David, this was supposed to be the easy part. All they're doing is choosing a leader, and they can't do that. And now the question is, how much more negotiating room does Kevin McCarthy have? What else is he willing to give away about his own power as House Speaker? This next vote may be an absolutely critical one for his future, as well as for the contours of the speakership in this era of divided government. Republicans off to a flat, terrible start. Not what they envisioned when they looked back and saw their opportunities in the midterms. Not what they thought would happen when they took back control of the House. And Rick, Kevin McCarthy already conceded to this group of Republicans Republicans that he would make it easier to get rid of the speaker if they wanted that uh, down the road. Uh, what does that mean about should he become speaker here, his control of Republicans in the House and trying to get them to coalesce around any sort of agenda moving forward as, a, as, as one party? 
That's, that's the central issue. Look, he could get this done right now if he were to empower any one Republican member to have a vote on his, on, on his job at any given time. That would make things happen for Matt Gates and all the holdouts. But as of now, he doesn't want to give that because he recognizes that puts a sword over his head as the, uh, as the House Speaker. Now the task of actually governing is going to become just that much more difficult. And we saw that key number of 19 holdouts not budging between the votes. That begins to shift the pressure, not from those holdouts, but to Kevin McCarthy himself. He's the guy that has to deliver for Republicans. If he can't get his own members to budge, that's not a great sign either. Yeah, and if he gives in on that, we'll be going through this all over again a number of times in the future here, uh, if and when he does become Speaker, if he were to uh, give in on this potential idea that any one member of Congress could say, we don't like the job you're doing. All right, uh, Rick Kleiner, thanks to you. We're looking at live pictures there. That's the outgoing Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, Hakeem Jeffries, certainly uh, a day of history for the two of them as well, though not expected in quite this way. Hakeem Jeffries in two rounds of ballot now uh, leading Kevin McCarthy, uh, also something we have not seen. Again, uh, extraordinary that uh, the party in power uh, not able to elect a speaker. We haven't seen this in 100 years uh, in this country. Uh, we'll see what the next few hours brings. Our coverage will continue on ABC News Live, abcnews.com. And of course, as I mentioned to John and Rachel there, they'll both be back with me, the entire team for World News Tonight. I'm David Muir in New York. Until then, see you soon. Good day. This has been a special report from ABC News. And David, thank you. I'm Kira Phillips here with our breaking news coverage that continues on ABC News Live. Kevin McCarthy, now the first person to lose a House Speaker vote on the first ballot in nearly 100 years, and the second vote wasn't any better. McCarthy could only afford to lose five votes he lost 19. So what happens next besides more votes? Well, that's an open question. Let's get straight to our former Democratic senator for North Dakota and ABC News political contributor Heidi Heitkamp and former Republican Congresswoman for Virginia Barbara Comstock, also an ABC News contributor. Uh, Barbara, we're getting you to join in on, on the mix here. So I will start with you. Your overall impressions of what we have been witnessing now for the past what, four hours plus uh, on the floor? Did you ever imagine that you would um, be watching this? The last time it happened was 100 years ago. Your thoughts as this all unfolds? No, well, listen, you know, you live by MAGA, you appease MAGA, you know, this is what you get. Uh, you know, death by a thousand cuts here. And regardless of what happens, if Kevin does it eventually you know, keep going through these various ballots and, and gets at the whole purpose of these dead-ender guys who are attacking him is to weaken him and to make them in control of everything. Because you have to understand, there's nothing you can really bargain with these guys, because these aren't guys who pass legislation. When you heard that Matt Gates speech, the reason they like Jim Jordan is because Jim Jordan votes against all the budgets for the most part. He usually votes against all the appropriations bills. He never wants to raise the debt limit. He's basically against governing. He just wants to investigate. Um, I don't believe Jim Jordan has really ever passed any substan substantive, if any, legislation while he's been in Congress. So they don't want to govern. In fact, if, if they don't even form a Congress today, Matt Gates and Bobert will be happy. You know, they don't care. So there's nothing you can do um, to make them happy. That's the problem. So I don't think you're really going to see movement here um, unless maybe you have some of the governing wing of Republicans maybe say they're going to vote for Steve Scalise, because then I think you could see some coalescing and then maybe a change. ABC News Congressional Correspondent Rachel Scott weighing in with us now here. So, Rachel, it was the on the first ballot, and also our Chief Washington Correspondent John Carl as well, the two together there on the Hill, guys. Rachel, you know, just to kind of piggyback off what Barbara Comstock was saying about Jim Jordan, and, and, and I, I saw that you were asked the question, do you think Jim Jordan saw this coming, 19 votes, by the way, uh, and, and you said, no, you didn't think so. However, there was a moment right after that first speaker vote when, when Kevin McCarthy lost that Jim Jordan came down and they were whispering together. So I sure would have loved to been a fly on the wall there <laughs> to hear if they were conspiring something here. I mean, is it possible that this is a part of the new battle plan? I don't know. 
<laughs> you know, Kira, I don't think any of this is part of the plan at this point. I think everyone is just rolling with the punches here as we are sort of in this, I mean, not unprecedented territory, but certainly a, a historic one. But Jim Jordan, at this point, you know, he was not expecting this. He actually told Matt Gates that he did not want him to nominate him for speaker because he wanted to show that he was uh, rallying his support behind Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. So at this point, it's a question of who can actually get the votes that are necessary because it's not going to be Kevin McCarthy as of right now. It's not Jim Jordan. It's not Andy Biggs. So who is that Republican? And that is the question over everybody's minds here on Capitol Hill. <laughs> So, John, maybe Jim Jordan was saying to Kevin McCarthy, oh, boy, glad I'm not in your shoes. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's being nominated. And he's got 19 votes. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's been my sense. And I'm Rachel. I'd be curious what, you, what your take on this. But it's been my sense that Jim Jordan truly has had no interest in being Speaker of the House. You know, he's going to be the incoming chair of the Judiciary Committee. He can use that platform through all kinds of investigations of the Biden White House. He doesn't seem... Like, at least my sense, and, and, and from conversations I've had with him, but also conversations I've had with people close to, to Jordan, he doesn't seem to want to take on the responsibilities that come with being Speaker of the House or the, all the fundraising that entails, all of that. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of glamour to that job, but it is, it is a lot of responsibility and not necessarily what, at least what people close to Jordan have told me, uh, what, what he has sought. But, I, you know, who knows where this is going? Um, I'm not, I, I, I think it's far from clear whether or not Jordan could, even if McCarthy were to drop out right now, I don't know that Jordan could get uh, the votes to be nominated, uh, to be elected speaker. I, I really don't. So is it possible, uh, Rachel, John, that we could see another name tossed into the, to the ring here? Oh, definitely. I think that is what we're all sort of expecting, and we're asking ourselves, okay, who is going to be the next person that uh, some or all of these 19 Republicans back? Because from our understanding at, at this point, they are holding firm, and both sides are just really dug in here. And there's got to be somebody that those 19 support, but also that can get to 218. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's probably not going to be a hard liner. All right, our Dale Bren also on the Hill there, uh, watching everything for us, covering this for Thanks, us uh, since the early uh, morning hours. Jay, uh, clearly, uh, Kevin McCarthy is going to have to change his battle plan. Well, as of right now, he didn't have a single vote flipped to him from the first ballot to the second ballot. That period between the first and second ballot where they were tabulating the official results is actually the same period we're in right now. That was supposed to be the time where Kevin McCarthy, that was going to use that time to whip votes and to try to change the outcome of the second ballot. I can tell you from my conversations with the never McCarthy Republicans from days, weeks ago, that's what they expected to happen right after the end of the first ballot. One of them told me they were very much expecting that after McCarthy loses the first ballot, which is this calculus they had created, that they would get whipped very, very hard. That, that, you know, they would get pushed by McCarthy's allies to change their vote to the second ballot and back McCarthy. That didn't happen. We saw nobody change their vote. The only votes that changed was that that never McCarthy faction coalesced around Steve Scalise. So to Rachel and John's point just a moment ago, the conference has to look to who they can coalesce around. Is there a path for Kevin McCarthy to try to make some kind of a deal, change his position even further on motion to vacate the chair, which is a mechanism you can use to remove the Speaker of the House, something that he has previously not wanted to change his positioning on, although he made some big concessions on it earlier. Could he make even more concessions on that, even more concessions on a number of other fronts, and hope to earn some of those holdout votes? Or is there another candidate somewhere in the wings that's going to step forward. Uh, one of the things that holds some of these candidates back is that there is what's called this only Kevin group who have said they will vote for Kevin McCarthy on every single ballot. And, and John brought this up a moment ago, but any kind of other candidate, even one that might have broad support, can't afford to lose five votes. It's the same position that Kevin McCarthy is in. So if Jim Jordan were to actually want to become Speaker of the House, although it appears he does not, if Steve Scalise were to try to step forward and put his name forward, or any other kind of coalesced, you know, consensus pick, 
you could still have five more moderate Republicans who've been backing McCarthy this whole time put a wrench into those gears, and this process starts all over again. And it can be a long process because as you've been watching this entire afternoon, they go methodically, name by name by name, alphabetically, and then if nobody wins on that ballot, you go to the next ballot and the next ballot and the next ballot. Again, to Rachel's point earlier, the longest this took was two months at one point in the 1850s. Um, a lot of these speaker fights, these long protracted speaker fights, were from when the country was marching towards civil war in the mid-1800s. The last one was in 1923. So there is just no institutional memory in this Congress for how to deal with a long, drawn-out speaker fight of this nature. Certainly there are no members who've been around for something like this. So everyone is kind of building the plane as they fly it here, particularly the McCarthy team that's trying to whip votes to make him the next speaker. Well, let's hope some type of plane is built quickly and it flies and lands in the hangar because meanwhile we don't have a functioning Congress, which means uh, <laughs> nothing's going to get passed. Nothing's going to, uh, there'll be no movement. Uh, it'll, it'll stop down until we have a speaker. Well, the House floor is frozen. You can't really do anything on the House floor until you elect a Speaker of the House. There are technically no rules on the House floor until you adopt the rules package, which comes after you elect a Speaker of the House. So right now, anything they do, like if they wanted to take an extended break, this is not really a break. We're just waiting for the calculation of the votes. But if they really wanted to take a break and adjourn, you'd have to have a majority vote for that. You'd have to have a majority vote to practically do almost anything on the House floor right now. Because again, there are no rules. In terms of rules, Congress, a building that is built on rules, it's like the Wild West on the House floor right now because there's no rules governing this entire process. So again, that is just one example of how this further forestalls Congress's actions. And that's the argument that Jim Jordan tried to make to his Republican colleagues when he nominated Kevin McCarthy on the second ballot. He said, let's get to the business of governing. Let's get to the business of passing a bill about the border, which is one of the first things Republicans said they wanted to do. Let's get to the business of passing a bill about defunding aspects of the IRS, something Republicans said they wanted to do on day one. And instead, what we're seeing is this protracted battle to become Speaker of the House. And we're also seeing that that argument Jim Jordan made seemed not to work because nobody switched to Kevin McCarthy on the second ballot. We'll see what the third ballot has in store. Uh, but this is a, a position that Congress just has not been uh, in the modern era, Kira. Yeah, it's really uh, quite fascinating to, to watch. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries there chatting with some folks uh, in the back as the cameras sort of scan the room to give us an idea of what's happening there on the floor as that second uh, speaker vote has concluded and uh, Kevin McCarthy has lost both the first and second vote. ABC News political director Rick Klein jumping in now. Democrats in full attendance, Rick, for both votes so far today. Do you think that'll continue? Yeah, this could be an interesting ally for uh, for Kevin McCarthy. Uh, the clock and, and the an anxiousness that some of these members may feel after multiple ballots to, to get off the House floor. Right now, all of the Democrats have showed up for both votes. They've delivered more votes to Hakeem Jeffries, all 212 Democrats to Hakeem Jeffries, uh, making him the numeric leader, even though he has no shot of becoming speaker, of course. But keep in mind that the only reason that the magic number is 218 is that all 434 members of the House are so far voting. No indications that's about to change. But that is something that McCarthy and his forces could potentially use to their advantage, uh, simply waiting out the other side, not just the 19 recalcitrant Republicans, but some of those Democrats. Uh, they've got friends and family in town. Many of them have receptions to get to, dinners to get to. They want to get on with their lives, get on with their business. It would be interesting to see whether McCarthy pushes toward more votes today, essentially trying to make the other side weak of showing up, changing that margin, um, potentially also his, even his, some of his own members may want to, to be done with it at some point because they see the, the nagging embarrassment. So that's just another wild card factor to keep in mind is that uh, 218 only matters in as much as all of the, the members of Congress are voting. They're doing that so far. Democrats, I think, are popping some popcorn over there if you on that side of the aisle. But does that last all night? Does that last into tomorrow and beyond? That, to me, becomes an open question. There are at least some Republicans who are rooting on fatigue to, to, to help them get over the finish line for McCarthy. So fatigue, nagging embarrassment, um, you know, at what point does Kevin McCarthy make some sort of drastic move or do you think he will? Do you think he is truly in this to the bitter end, uh, ballot after ballot after ballot? 
he cannot talk his way out of this one. He's not going to be able to, to just make uh, big statements about how the United Republicans are. Uh, there's only an, only some the limited extent to which he can make this a member by member transaction. We've talked about his skill in negotiating. He knows these folks. They've been talking to them for, for, for weeks now about these very issues. It's hard to imagine that suddenly, after weeks of not agreeing to the concessions, he's got something magic in his hat that he's held back for this occasion. The big question is, when does he realize those 19 aren't going to shrink significantly enough that there's no way for him to become speaker? And then how does he play it? And the precedent that you have to go back to, or at least I'm going back to now, is when John Boehner unexpectedly stepped down in the middle of the Congress uh, and everyone thought that, that Kevin McCarthy was going to be the House Speaker. When it became evident to McCarthy that he wasn't going to get the votes, he stepped down. And before he stepped aside, he told Paul Ryan he was supporting him. Even though Paul Ryan didn't want the job at the time, it took some cajoling. That might be where we land. We're not there yet. Uh, not there yet necessarily. But I do think this next vote is going to be a critical one. Because if you can't move the votes between one and two, and you can't move him again between two and three, then it's going to be the pressure on McCarthy to show that he's got something different than he can do. All right, so as we're watching these live pictures on the floor, uh, Rick, we're looking at Matt Gates right now, who, as you know, nominated Jim Jordan, who got 19 votes there. Um, is, I haven't seen uh, Kevin McCarthy, as I've been kind of watching the rolling shots here, uh, don't they don't believe he's he's still there on, on the floor. Um, so what it kind of... I mean, do we really know when this next vote could take place? And is it possible that Kevin McCarthy right now has gone behind closed doors with certain members uh, to try to strike some deals? Well, I think he's got to figure out what his next move is. You can't just go out there with the same playbook. And uh, they, they played the best card they thought they had before that second vote, which was to take the person that was starting to get some support from the holdouts and say, have him go out and make the nomination speech. Say, I want, I want you to support him. Well, 19 people didn't listen. Uh, and the only thing that changed between votes one and two is that all of the anti-McCarthy votes have consolidated behind one candidate. So there's really nothing that Jim Jordan can say or do or Kevin McCarthy can just say at this point that's, that's likely to change that. So I think he'd be considering some options here. Um, the, the, the backup to the backup option is dropping out and supporting someone else. I don't think he wants to do that. I don't think his, his instincts are to, to, to just get behind Jim Jordan and give, give in to, to Matt Gates and those holdouts. Uh, but he's still got some significant cards to play. He's still the guy that has the most votes. He's still the likeliest speaker. Uh, and and hope, his hope is that he can at least start to reduce that number uh, and not have to give away everything in route to doing that. My guess is right now, though, he's, he's kind of uh, whiteboarding out some different options that, uh, uh, before they decide when and, and how to have a third vote. <laughs> Better hold on to that whiteboard. One more question. <laughs> um, so it looks like the, the White House briefing uh, did take place while all this was, was going on, uh, Rick. And uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre, uh, press secretary, uh, was asked by our Mary Bruce uh, about what was happening here on the floor. And uh, apparently uh, she said that the... Um, as ha that certainly the the White House is not going to insert themselves uh, in what is going on here on the floor, uh, but they are looking forward to working with the new Congress. Uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre Guyon saying the president is willing to work with Republicans who are willing to continue to deliver for the American people. He's very optimistic on what lies ahead and how we are going to move our country forward. So really no news made out of the White House. But I guess my question is to you is can President Biden intervene here in any way? Hurt? Uh, I think the I don't, there's, there are cards that Democrats can play here, and I, I don't think it's likely to happen yet, but they could approach some Republicans about cutting a deal that would either have them not go to the House floor, uh, reduce that magic number, as discussed, or uh, potentially even supporting another candidate entirely, or telling Kevin McCarthy, hey, we'll vote for you, but you have to give us some concessions. The thing is, there are other votes to get. There's all of those Democrats right now that have held together. So it's, it's a, not a zero proposition. There's no precedent, I don't think, in American history of that happening, although there's been some people arguing this is the greatest time you can imagine for a consensus speaker candidate to emerge. Hard for me to imagine Republicans uh, handing over effective control to the White House to the Democrats after their victory uh, of a couple of months ago, but we are in uncharted territory. So I, I, don't think there's a, I don't think there's a play right now for President Biden or for Hakeem Jeffries as the, uh, as the, the new Democratic leader or Nancy Pelosi, who's now a, uh, a backbencher in the, in, in the new Congress. Uh, but it isn't to say there, there won't be, and there won't won't be a time that someone will uh, will want those votes that the Democrats could provide for House Speaker. 
All right, Rick, as we continue, let's bring in former Democratic senator from North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp. Uh, we are definitely in uncharted territory, as, as Rick just mentioned. So where do we go from here? And what do you make of those remarks by Jim Jordan just a little while ago? Well, first off, I, I, I didn't hear anything about Kevin McCarthy. Um, and so everybody who is so certain that Jim Jordan wasn't complicit in a, in a nomination, I think you shouldn't uh, be so quick to judge. I think if he really wanted to persuade people to vote for Kevin McCarthy, he needed to talk about Kevin McCarthy and not his vision. And so I thought it was a weak nominating speech and the results speak for itself. The one thing that we haven't talked about yet is no one has defected from McCarthy. McCarthy started out with 203 votes. He still has 203 votes. I, I, I think this idea that he's going to walk across and start negotiating, if I'm him, I say I have 203 votes. And as long as I can hold those votes and continue to roll those votes, the exhaustion level and the pressure will build on the 19 votes to change and to come around. And, and so I think for McCarthy to cross the aisle and start saying, what more can I give you when he's already given plenty. I think she is a show of weakness. I think he's going to sit in that chair and he's going to take his 203 votes. And when this thing breaks is when somebody uh, who is uh, solid with him at 203 decides to vote the other way. But I agree with Rick. There's, there's an intriguing idea of maybe moving a, a, a measure that would allow for a plurality. If you, if you would elect a speaker with a plurality and not a majority, we'd see how tough those 19 votes were if the potential was that it would be a Democratic speaker. And so I think there's some rules things that can happen. But for the most part, I think this idea that McCarthy is going out begging people for votes, I think he's holding his 203, saying, we'll just keep voting, and eventually you guys are going to get tired and come to me. Huh. What do you think, uh, Barbara Comstock? Well, I, I think that's that's very likely. It's uh, unless somebody in those 203 break and decide, you know, maybe they'd get somebody at the beginning of the alphabet, you know, to go for a Steve Scalise and then start getting some of those outside of the 19, and then would some of the 19 go that way? And then do you get people uh, to break and go for Scalise? But otherwise, you know, Kevin has said he's going to keep uh, sticking with that. But the real problem is this looks awful for the Republicans. It shows the dysfunction that the whole MAGA wing has caused. This is sort of the continuation of the Trump hangover for the party. And you have a real contrast to, you know, on the other side, you know, the Senate, you have Mitch McConnell as the longest serving leader ever. And this is somebody who has denounced Trump and hasn't been going down there in, in, at Tomorrow mar and trying to deal with this. So I think, you know, when you look at the election in November, the real lesson here is those who paid homage to Trump um, have not fared well. And this is really the last act in, in all of that. Trump has been an albatross around the party. And today is once again showing that he is a problem, not a solution. And the ultra MAGA wing is that those 19, no matter what you do for them, they aren't happy. There's nothing Kevin can give them at this point. And his trying to appease them is what has caused his problems, not solve them. We'll get more to, to that in, in just a minute. But Rick Klein, you, uh, you have some news uh, surrounding Steve Scalise and uh, getting ready for another nomination here. Yeah, Carly, Ben Siegel has been watching the floor reporting that Steve Scalise appears to be preparing a nominating speech for uh, for Kevin McCarthy uh, to continue this march toward uh, trying to, to, to solidify things for him. Now, you know, I can't help but think that the counter move to that would be for some of these, uh, for the holdouts that are now with Jim Jordan to say they'll go behind Scalise. Instead, Scalise is someone who's been talked about as a potential House speaker, just like Jim Jordan is. Uh, but it would appear that if that's true and that's what happens, that the McCarthy's strategy of, uh, of continuing to try to wait out the other side won't have changed. And I think Heidi's point, Senator Heitkamp's point, is a terrific one. The test now of McCarthy to show that he can keep his votes together, uh, even with another, uh, with, with another round of voting when he wasn't able to peel off any of those 19 holdouts, that becomes absolutely imperative for him. Uh, but if, if, that, if that is the case, then we'd anticipate a speech, uh, another nomination speech shortly uh, that would then be followed by another round of voting. 
And so, okay, so you're, do you think that this could get going quickly then, that they are not going to stop down and take a break as we were assuming they, they might because Kevin Car McCarthy clearly needs to rethink uh, his battle plan if he's going to stay in this fight uh, until the bitter end? I, 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 if this if this is the case, then it would appear that we'd be moving m m sooner rather than later toward a third round of voting. Look, they're all there. Uh, maybe the, the argument is why not and see what you can do. As we see uh, Mr. Scalise now uh, at, the, at the microphone, um, the clerk hasn't, I think, formally called the previous vote, which would then trigger the next vote um, and that sequence of events. So there's a still a couple things that have to happen, but it does appear to be that there's some uh, movement on the House floor that would be moving toward uh, us seeing what the next step is from McCarthy's side. All right, as we watch this then live, if it looks like uh, things are about to get started or he indeed is about to speak, uh, we will bring it up, of course, in full. But with that news, uh, your thoughts, Heidi? Well, I mean, I, th I think McCarthy is playing the long game. Everybody thought he would be anxious. You look at him sitting in that seat. He's not running around. He's not buttonholing people. You know, chances are he's got people sure. out there who are talking to maybe some of the members that they think they can move. But, but he's basically saying, I'm done negotiating. I've got 203 votes. If you aren't able to get any of my votes, we can keep doing this all day, and eventually you're going to have to come to me with a solution. And that solution could include maybe uh, uh, Democrats participating at some point, as Rick has talked about. What is the play there? But I think we're in for a long day and potentially a long evening because if I'm McCarthy, I sit in that chair and as long as I don't lose 203, um, as long as I don't see erosion, as long as people aren't coming to me saying, you need to bow out, I'm going to sit there and wait and take my 203 votes. <laughs> Barbara Comstock, what would you be doing right now if indeed you were there on the floor with fellow Republicans? Well, I, I would agree with Heidi. I think the important thing here is they've got to break these 19. You know, these are the guys that have caused them problems and caused them, you know, I mean, to lose, you know, uh, elections. And, and they're, they're the extremists who don't want to govern. So he's not going to gain them. So he's got to break them now. And if he just keeps going, I mean, some of these guys, I mean, they're not going to get paid if they don't you know, form Congress and, and and get moving here. So if he just keeps holding out and holding out, at some point, some of these guys may want to get a paycheck. Um, they may want to serve on a committee. They may want to go home. Uh, so, you know, their, their families may want to go home. So um, if, if he's, or he should do that on behalf of the institution, even if he isn't going to be the speaker, because whoever else comes does not need to be captive to these you know, thugs who don't care about the institution or care about governing. So they need to be broken. They might as well do it. And if they have to keep them there all night, that's what he should do. Boy, it's just like Heidi holding your breath to see the first one who gives. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, but that's part of a negotiation. You know, the, the first rule of negotiation is if you aren't willing to hold to your position and walk away and with integrity, you're not negotiating. And so I, I actually give Kevin McCarthy some props here. I didn't think, you know, having watched now the last how many months where he has basically capitulated and capitulated, he drew a land line in the sand, got a little testy with, uh, with the dissenters, and now he's holding firm. And so I think if he is able to become speaker after this, he will be a stronger speaker because of it. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Well, it looks like we uh, could be possibly uh, getting started again very soon. We're starting to see a little uh, action up there at the... Uh, uh, no. Okay. Um, so... Let's bring in Mark Updegrove once again, presidential uh, historian. So Republicans uh, now control half of Congress. They, they need to lead, right? This isn't uh, a promising start, Mark. Not at all, Kira. <laughs> and, and it shows the, the, the influence that Donald Trump continues to have over this party, despite what it does to the party. Donald Trump, you know, we lost 43 seats in the midterm of 2018. He lost the presidency in 2018 because, I think, largely of the MAGA influence. Uh, the Republicans had a very poor showing in the midterms last year. And you can continue to see the divisions with this vote as 
both uh, uh, Barbara and Heidi said, getting those 19 votes to join the 203 is going to be absolutely vital. How you do it is going to be the big question for Kevin McCarthy. But as, as Rick pointed out earlier, he has very few arrows in his quiver, and he hasn't seen a single go vote gained in two ballots. So it'll be a major challenge for him to get the speakership, and it'll be a major challenge for him to guide the party in the House going forward. Let's get started and listen in. Will the House be in order? The tellers agree in their tallies that the total number of votes cast is 434, of which the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the State of New York has received 212. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the State of California has received 203. The Honorable Jim Jordan of the State of Ohio has received 19. No person having received the majority of the whole number of votes cast by surname, a speaker has not been elected. For what purpose does the gentleman from Louisiana rise? Madam Clerk, I rise to nominate Kevin McCarthy for the position of Speaker of the House. The gentleman is recognized. Is recognized. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We all came here to get things done, to get big things done, to solve the problems. And I hope when we get through today that all of the members on both sides of the aisle will join together with us to solve the problems, to address inflation that is crushing middle class families, to get control over spending that's gentlemen driving yield. that inflation, will the Madam Clerk. Yield. Will the House be in order? And we all know what those problems are. We've been talking about them for a long time. We've been proposing legislation for a long time. In fact, it was Kevin McCarthy who put together task forces over a year ago to get members engaged in the process of not just talking about what we don't like, not just talking about what the problems are. We know what those problems are. But how do you fix those problems? And so we started rolling those bills out. We've attempted to bring bills on this floor to address inflation, to lower the cost of goods when families go to the grocery store and they can't even buy all the food they need for their families if they can find that food on their shelf. But those bills were rejected. If a family has trouble putting gas in the tank to make it to the grocery store, because we've got such horrible energy policies under what President Biden's done to shut down American energy that families can't even afford to put gas in their tanks. And so we brought legislation to the floor to lower the cost of gasoline. And you know what? Those bills were rejected by the previous majority. And I use that term for a reason, previous majority, because we want a majority talking about fixing those problems. But we can't start fixing those problems until we elect Kevin McCarthy as our next speaker. And so what have we laid out? We've got bills just this week to start addressing some of those problems, to start addressing our energy insecurity that's been created when President Biden shut down American energy. There is absolutely no reason 
that we need to rely on foreign countries to produce our energy. We could produce it all here, cleaner, better, more efficient, and create American jobs in the process. Let's get those bills to this floor. How long have we been highlighting this open southern border? That's not just brought millions of people across our border. Kevin McCarthy's led delegations down to the border to show what the problem is. We know what the problem is. This president refuses to even admit the problem. It's kind of hard for the president to solve a problem when he doesn't even admit it's a problem. Yet let's talk about the numbers. Over two million people have come across our border illegally just last year. That's more than the entire state of New Mexico have come into our country illegal, and this president won't even admit it's a problem. Last year alone, we lost over 100,000 young people to deaths from drugs like fentanyl because we have an open southern border. Everybody should be appalled by that stat. The fact that more than 100 of our youngest, best and brightest kids are dead in America because of the fentanyl coming across of our open southern border. These are drugs made in China coming across our southern border and brought into every community in America. And it should stop, it has to stop, but it won't stop until either the president takes action, which he won't, or we pass legislation on the floor to fix those problems. But that doesn't start until we elect Kevin McCarthy as our speaker. We know what the challenges are. We've laid out solutions to these problems. It's sad to say these aren't problems that are very hard to fix because we weren't in this situation just a few years ago. But if the administration doesn't want to fix these problems, people call on us to do that. And it starts here in the people's house. Let's rise to this challenge. Let's meet the challenges that the American people sent to all of us, not just the Republicans, not just the Democrats, but all 434, soon to be 435 of us. We can meet those challenges, but let's start by electing Kevin McCarthy as our next speaker. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? Madam Clerk, I rise to nominate Hakeem Jeffries. For unity in the Congress. has been recognized. For unity in con Congress and progress in our country, Democrats are united behind Hakeem Jeffries. I recommend Hakeem Jeffries as our speaker. Thank you, Madam Clerk. prepared to call the roll. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Seek place a name and a nomination, Speaker. The gentleman is recognized. So this is what the chamber looks like when we're actually debating and the bodies are in the chairs. How many times have we been down here giving speeches and there's not a soul in the chamber? Yet this is what it takes to get 440, 435 people in the chamber and have an actual debate. The American people are watching, and that's a good thing. What we're doing is exercising our rights to vote and have a debate and have a discussion about the future of this country through the decision of choosing a speaker. This is not personal. It's not. This is about the future of the country. This is about the direction of the country. American people who are looking at this body and wondering why we can pass $1.7 trillion bills that are unpaid for. They can just slide in $45 billion for Ukraine but not pay for it. $40 billion for emergency spending and not pay for it. 10% increase in defense spending, 6% increase in non-defense spending and not pay for it. And not do a thing except put language in a bill that prohibits our ability to use the money to secure the border. That bill gets rammed through, and we know exactly how it gets rammed through, because the defense world and the non-defense world come together and say, you know what? 
we're going to cut a deal and we'll all go to the mics and we'll all go give speeches and the American people are the big losers. That's what happens. We know that's what happens. The Rules Committee sits up there and passes a bill, sends it to the floor, and we have no debate on the floor of this body. We haven't been able to offer an amendment on the floor of this body since May of 2016. The former leader and I have discussed this right here. That's true. But the fact is, this place has to change. It has to change. And the change comes by either adopting rules and procedures that will make us actually do our job, or it comes from leadership. And people ask me, what do you want? I want the tools or I want the leadership to stop the swamp from running over the average American every single day. We can't keep doing this. I'm going to sit here until we figure out how to stop spending money we don't have. I don't want any more empty promises. I don't want any more, oh, don't worry, trust us, we'll do it. I want to know that we're going to be able to exercise our rights as a member of this body to stand up for the American people and actually fix this country. And it's not going to happen when we use our men and women in uniform in defense and wrap ourselves around that and then spend more money that we don't have weakening that defense, weakening our country in the process. But that's what we just did. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am asking for us to come together and figure out how to solve these problems. And to do that, I'm gonna do what I did my very first act as a member of Congress or as a congressman elect and nominate Jim Jordan for speaker. <laughs> now, Jim has said he doesn't want that nomination and Jim has been down here nominating Kevin and I respect that. And again, I have no personal animus towards Kevin. And I've worked for the last two months to try to figure out how to get the rules to make this place better, and we've made progress. But we do not have the tools or the leadership yet to stop the swamp from rolling over the American people. Jim has been doing it. He has a track record of doing it. And for those reasons, I am nominating Jim Jordan from Ohio for Speaker of the House of Representatives. The reading clerk will call the roll. Jeffries, Adderholt, McCarthy, Aguilar, Jeffries, Alford, McCarthy, Allen, McCarthy, Allred, Jeffries, Emma Day. McCarthy, Armstrong, McCarthy, Arrington, McCarthy, Auchincloss, Jeffries, Babin, McCarthy, Bacon, McCarthy, Baird, McCarthy, Balderson, McCarthy, Ballant, Jeffries, Banks, McCarthy, Barr, McCarthy, Barrigan, Jeffries, Bean of Florida, Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy, Beatty, Jeffries, Bentz, McCarthy, Barra, 
Jeffries, Bergman, McCarthy, Byer, Jeffries, Bice, McCarthy, Biggs, Jordan. Bill Arrakis, McCarthy, Bishop of Georgia, Jeffries, Bishop of North Carolina, Jordan. Blumenauer, Blumenauer, Blunt Rochester, Jeffries, Bobert, Jordan, Bonamici, Jeffries, Bost, McCarthy, Bowman, Jeffries, Boyle of Pennsylvania, Jeffries, Rakeen, Jordan, Brown, Jeffries, Brownlee, Jeffries, Buchanan, McCarthy, Buck, McCarthy, Bouchon, McCarthy, Bazinski, Jeffries, Burchett, McCarthy, Burgess, McCarthy, Burlinson, McCarthy, Bush, Jeffries, Calvert, McCarthy, Kamek, McCarthy, Caraveo, Jeffries, Carbajal, Carbajal, Jeffries, Cardenas, Jeffries, Carey, McCarthy, Carl, McCarthy, Carson, Jeffries, Carter of Georgia, Carter of Georgia, Carter of Louisiana, Carter of Louisiana probably votes for Hakeem Jeffries. Jeffries. Carter of Texas. McCarthy. Cartwright. Jeffries. Kassar. Jeffries. Case. Jeffries. Caston. Jeffries, Castor of Florida, Jeffries, Castro of Texas, Jeffries, Chavez de Reamer, McCarthy, Surferless McCormick, Jeffries, Chu, Jeffries, Cicilline, Jeffries, Siscobani, McCarthy, Clark of Massachusetts, Jeffries, Clark of New York, Jeffries, Cleaver, Jeffries, Klein, McCarthy, 
Cloud. Jordan. Clyburn. Jeffries. Clyde. Jordan. Jeffries, Cole, McCarthy, Collins, McCarthy, Comer, McCarthy, Connolly. Well, Jeffries. we haven't seen something like this in Correa. 100 years. <laughs> We've entered into Jeffries. now the third speaker vote 100 Costa. years ago. It took nine uh, rounds Jeffries. of this type of, uh, of voting. And so, Jeffries. yes, we are watching history unfold right. right here before our eyes. And we still do Jeffries. not know who will be right. House Speaker. Kevin McCarthy fighting for that position. Right now, though, it looks like he is on his quest to lose his third speaker vote. Our Rick Klein, political director, following it all along with us. Well, Rick, I mean, this Crawford. is sort of what we expected. Um, the question is, Rachel. how many rounds will we go until uh, we see some type of Crawford. drastic change? And that's, that's hard Jeffries. to predict, considering what we've seen Crawford. now three times in a row. A couple of pieces Jeffries. of strategy here at hand, I think, for the McCarthy forces. One Where is to show that they're in it for a longer fight if it comes to that, uh, that they're not um, willing Curtis. to just punt or delay or, uh, or or cave, uh, that they're willing Davis to put it forward Kansas. with the same options, uh, and this time with just a different nominating speech uh, to, to try to, and, and I think also the other strategy was to try to Jeffries. smoke out the other side about what are Davis. options they may be considering. Uh, we've heard this from some McCarthy forces McCarthy. whispering behind the scenes, well, these guys said they had some kind of a secret person that's going to put forward. All they've had so far is Jim Jeffers. Jordan, a guy who says he doesn't want the job. So what else have they got? Davis so I think the danger here is, are there, are there, is there any erosion in the McCarthy the support? That's the, the drawback of putting Jeffers. this forward as the exact same the vote dead. is you got to be really sure that you've got all Jeffers. your people because if you lose any of them, then you could start to see people trickle away and then potentially McCarthy. open the floodgates once McCarthy looks vulnerable. Delora. And there are members who have said they were with Jeffers. McCarthy for the first two votes perhaps, uh, but then... Del informally undecided. And so McCarthy's going to have to work just to keep where he Delizia. is. Uh, and if he could pick up a vote or two, that would be huge. But right now, he's not shown any Desiree. ability to change those numbers. And if this lands again Jeffers. at 19 or more, Desiree. I don't see the sense of going forward with an additional vote McCarthy. other than to just do it because you can do it uh, or hope that you'll just get people too tired McCarthy. to fight this out anymore. But Diaz. we're not Mars. hearing that. We're also hearing from Democrats uh, who are McCarthy. very cognizant of the idea that uh, that leaving the, the floor or Jeffers. stopping the stopping their Dog votes, head. which would lower the threshold. Jeffers. Several of them have been tweeting or telling reporters Donald. off the floor of the House that uh, they will be there as long as it Jordan. takes. They don't want to do anything to help uh, Kevin McCarthy or any Republican at this stage. So when you talk about what we really would need to witness is an erosion uh, in, in <clears throat> McCarthy support, Rick, I mean, Duarte. you mentioned it could be somebody that McCarthy. just is getting exhausted with this process and says, all right, that's Duncan. it, I'm out, um, which really isn't a, a great <laughs> a great way to do it, right? I mean, these McCarthy. members are voted to represent their constituency, and you would hope that everybody's Edwards. heart and soul would be in this process McCarthy. to do the right thing. But is LC. it possible that this sort of is McCarthy. the... <laughs> The, the strongest people strongest people survive and those that are just tired of, of this um, I don't know if it's, it, it, Escobar is it even proper to say you know Jeffries. a bit of a, a, a circus show um, what's happening here right grandstanding and just Jeffries. you know pull out and say that's it Espiot. yeah I think peer pressure can mean a lot and if you're looking around and, and saying what are we doing Estes. this for all we're doing is putting ourselves on national television is an McCarthy. embarrassment that could matter I remember a member of Evans. Congress years ago Kira telling me that what impressed Jeffries. him about members of Congress wasn't necessarily their brain power he said I don't think they're necessarily McCarthy. the smartest people but their stamina Fallon. is impressive and one of the 
things it takes is to be the ability to to sit there McCarthy. and be stubborn and to vote time and time again and be and to allow yourself McCarthy. to get worn down and uh, and still be Ferguson. standing at the end of all of it. So uh, right now, McCarthy. look, if, unless McCarthy's got something else up his sleeve, Finstead. the strategy is to just show that you're strong, that you're not shaking, and that, that the numbers aren't changing. But he's going to have strong. to worry because if that if that final number uh, creeps up at all, it's going to it's going to be the sign of, uh, of blood in the water for some of the anti-McCarthy McCarthy. forces. And I think that's going to force other other kinds of negotiations McCarthy. to begin. But as this goes forward, once again, we're seeing this thing where we'll go through the dance of it. But uh, McCarthy is not mathematically McCarthy. able to win the speakership Fletcher. in this uh, in this round of voting. And once again, we're going to go through an, another full round of calling Flood. all 434 names and not McCarthy. having a speaker. Smarts Foster. versus stamina. I'm going to remember that uh, as the theme uh, for Jeffers. this afternoon uh, into Foster. the night. Uh, Jay O'Brien still Jeffers. on the Hill with us. It looks like there there was a flip. Fox. Yeah, the flip was Byron Donalds, Republican McCarthy. of Florida, who had said Lois at Frankel. the beginning of the day that he Jeffers. would go two ballots with Kevin McCarthy and then his vote would be up for grabs, meaning he McCarthy. could go to McCarthy on the third ballot or he could Cross. go to someone else. Well, Donalds, true to his word, Jeffers. just voted for Jim Cross. Jordan. He is the first, by my count, McCarthy. the first member to flip over the course Walter. of these ballots from Kevin McCarthy McCarthy. to someone else and a sign that Gates. Kevin McCarthy is not picking up votes, he's Jordan. losing votes because as of right now, we haven't seen anyone change their vote from someone else to Kevin McCarthy. We've only seen Donald's change from McCarthy to Jim Jordan. The other votes that have changed Gallagher. are people voted changing from Andy Biggs, McCarthy. who was the McCarthy protest candidate, to Diego. Jim Jordan, who's another McCarthy protest candidate Jeffries. because Georgian is, uh, Georgia, uh, excuse me, Jordan Jeremy has said Biggs. himself that he doesn't want to be Speaker Jeffries. of the House. So we're seeing defections Barbarito. away from Kevin McCarthy right now at this hour. And as you noted, McCarthy. Kira, Looks like nine people so Mike far have voted Garcia. for Jim Jordan. That is nine McCarthy. Republicans who have said they do not want Kevin McCarthy to be Robert their speaker, Garcia. which means Kevin McCarthy officially loses Jeffries. this third ballot Garcia. as well, unless Garcia. someone else captures a majority, Jeffries. which is very unlikely right now. Garcia we are going Texas. on to the fourth ballot where McCarthy Jeffries. will try to take another Bananas. stab at this and convince Republicans to finally McCarthy. defect to him. But it is a strategy Bolton that is so far this afternoon not proven Jeffrey. successful. As Rick pointed to earlier, Bolton. the strategy has been, it appears, Jeffrey. to have the candidates who might be the most likely of those waiting in the wings to take McCarthy's place to come out and nominate McCarthy. So on the second ballot, we saw Gomez. Jim Jordan, who's not in House Republican leadership, although he's a very prominent House Republican, Gomez. come out and nominate Kevin McCarthy and to say to everyone who is voting for him, Tony don't vote Gonzalez. for me, vote for Kevin McCarthy. That did not McCarthy. prove successful. Then on the third ballot, Vicente Steve Scalise, Gonzalez. who's often discussed as this Jeffries. speaker in waiting if Kevin McCarthy Good. doesn't get the votes Virginia. he needs. Kevin McCarthy comes out, Jordan. or excuse me, Steve Scalise comes out and nominates Kevin McCarthy. It's a mechanism from Team McCarthy, it appears, of saying the alternatives want Kevin, Good. so That's who Texas. are your alternatives to the never McCarthy, McCarthy Republicans? And, and right now, oh, their alternative is Jim Jordan, Jordan, who again, who said he doesn't want to be the speaker. So it appears they don't have viable alternatives other than finding Not candidates right. who will just say no to, or Jeffries. other than voting for people as a no Ranger. to Kevin McCarthy. So how does the GOP McCarthy. come back from Braves, this point and coalesce around a candidate, whether McCarthy. that's Kevin McCarthy, whether that's Braves, Steve Scalise no, or someone else? They do McCarthy. not have a path to that right now, Kira. And as Braves, the day gets Tennessee. further and further away from noon, when the House McCarthy. began all of this, the harder it is to see a path for Kevin McCarthy and the likelier it gets that Republicans try to find someone else that can get to 218 votes. The question is who that someone else could be. You know, looking back at my notes, it looks like, and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, it looks like the first uh, vote, speaker vote, that Byron Donalds of Florida, who just flipped, uh, actually had been nominated and received um, received a vote. Uh, I think that was the first time around. McCarthy. So it's interesting to see, um, you know, sort of the, the small same McCarthy. small amount of players here, whether it's Jim Jordan, now uh, Byron McCarthy. Donalds, uh, are sort of the Amen. ones we're seeing uh, remain kind of in the fold here McCarthy. with regard to changes. Carter of California. Well, the other thing that just happened that we saw, um, it literally just occurred. I just Jeffers. heard it in my ear and watched it play out on the floor. Marjorie Harris. Taylor Greene, 
who, uh, who has been consistently pro Kevin McCarthy, now on the third ballot, saying again she is voting for Kevin McCarthy. She has been one of the furthest right re Republican Arsene. members of Congress who has consistently said she will back Kevin Arsene. McCarthy. I caught Thanks. up with her on her way into the House chamber earlier today, Jeffries. many, many votes ago, Arsene. and she told me she finds it to be, quote, McCarthy. ridiculous that some of her because closest of allies Louisiana. in Congress, Matt Gates being one of them, McCarthy. have said that they will not it back Kevin McCarthy under any circumstances. She is consistently backing Kevin Kill. McCarthy. Um, why, what is her motivation McCarthy. there it, it is unclear. Lines. She looks like she wants to get onto the House Oversight Committee, Jeffries. and that appears to be poised to happen. Uh, but again, she's in Kevin McCarthy's corner, while some of her McCarthy. staunchest allies in Congress, Matt Horsburg. Gates being the most notable of them, uh, have said that they will not vote for Kevin Jeffries. McCarthy under any circumstances, Karen. Okay, uh, Jay, we're gonna take it back to the floor and listen in. Jeffries. Hoyer. Jeffries. Hoyle of Oregon. Jeffries. Hudson. McCarthy. Huffman. Jeffries. Huizinga. McCarthy. Hunt. McCarthy. Isa. McCarthy. Ivy. Jeffries. Jackson of Illinois. Jeffries. Jackson of North Carolina. Jeffries. Jackson of Texas. McCarthy. Jackson Lee. Remain committed. Jeffries. Jacobs. Jeffries. James. McCarthy. Jayapal. Jeffries. 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 Johnson of Georgia. Jeffries. Johnson of Louisiana. McCarthy. Johnson of Ohio. McCarthy. Johnson of South Dakota. McCarthy. Jordan. McCarthy. Joyce of Ohio. McCarthy. Joyce of Pennsylvania. McCarthy. Cam Logger Dove. Jeffries. Captor. Jeffries. Kane of New Jersey. McCarthy. Keating. Jeffries. Kelly of Illinois. Jeffries. Kelly of Mississippi. McCarthy. Kelly of Pennsylvania. McCarthy, Kana, Jeffries, Kiggins of Virginia, Kiggins of Virginia, McCarthy, Kildee, Jeffries, Kylie. McCarthy, Kilmer, Jeffries, Kim of California, McCarthy, Kim of New Jersey, Jeffries, Krishnamurthy, Jeffries, 
Custer. Jeffries. Kustoff. McCarthy. LaHood. McCarthy. Laloida. McCarthy. LaMalfa. McCarthy. Lamborn. McCarthy. Landsman. Jeffries. Langworthy. McCarthy. Larson of Washington. Jeffries. Larson of Connecticut. Jeffries. Latta. McCarthy. Laturner. McCarthy. Lawler. McCarthy. Lee of California. Jeffries, Lee of Florida, McCarthy, Lee of Nevada, Jeffries, Lee of Pennsylvania, Jeffries, Ledger Fernandez, Jeffries, Lesko, McCarthy, Letlow, McCarthy, Levin, Jeffries, Lou, Jeffries, Lofgren, Jeffries, Loudermilk, McCarthy, Lucas, McCarthy, Luke Meyer, McCarthy, Luna, Jordan. Latrell. McCarthy. Lynch. Jeffries. Mace. McCarthy. Magaziner. Jeffries. Maliotakis, McCarthy, Mann, McCarthy, Manning, Jeffries, Massey, McCarthy, Mast, McCarthy, Matsui, Jeffries, McBath, Jeffries, McCarthy. McCarthy. McCall. McCarthy. McLean. McCarthy. McClintock. McCarthy. McCollum. Jeffries. McCormick. McCarthy. McGarvey. Jeffries. McGovern. Jeffries. McHenry. McCarthy. Meeks. Jeffries. Menendez. Jeffries. Ming. Jeffries. Muser. McCarthy. Enfume. Jeffries. Miller of Illinois. 
Jordan. Miller of Ohio. McCarthy. Miller of West Virginia. McCarthy. Miller Meeks. McCarthy. Mills. McCarthy. Molinaro. McCarthy. Molinar. McCarthy. Mooney. McCarthy. Moore of Alabama. McCarthy. Moore of Utah. McCarthy. Moore of Wisconsin. <laughs> Jeffries. Moran. McCarthy. Morelli. Jeffries. Muskowitz. Jeffries. Moulton. Jeffries. Mervan. Jeffries. Mullen. Jeffries. Murphy. McCarthy. Nadler. Jeffries. Jeffries. Napolitano. Jeffries. Neal. Jeffries. Nagus. Jeffries. Nels. McCarthy. Newhouse. McCarthy. Nickel. Jeffries. Norcross. Jeffries, Norman, Jordan, Nunn of Iowa, McCarthy, Obernolte, McCarthy, Ocasio-Cortez, Ocasio-Cortez, Ogles, Jordan, Omar, Omar, Jeffries, Owens, McCarthy, Pallone, Jeffries, Palmer, McCarthy, Panetta, Jeffries, Pappas, Jeffries, Pasquale, Jeffries, Payne. Jeffries. Pelosi. Jeffries. Peltola. Jeffries. Pence. McCarthy, McCarthy, McCarthy. McCarthy. Perez. Jeffries. Perry. Jordan. Peters. Jeffries. Pedersen. Jeffries. Pfluger. McCarthy. Phillips. Jeffries. Pingree. Jeffries. Pocan. Jeffries. Porter. Jeffries. 
Posey. McCarthy. Presley. Jeffries. Quigley. Jeffries. Ramirez. Jeffries. Raskin. Jeffries. Reschenthaler. McCarthy. Rogers of Washington. McCarthy. Rogers of Alabama. McCarthy. Rogers of Kentucky. McCarthy. Rose. McCarthy. Rosendale. Jordan. Ross, Jeffries, Rouser, McCarthy, Roy, Jordan, Ruiz, Jeffries, Rupersberger, Jeffries. Jeffries, Rutherford, Rutherford, McCarthy, Ryan, Jeffries, Salazar, McCarthy, Salinas, Jeffries, Sanchez, Jeffries, Santos, McCarthy, Sarbanes, Jeffries, Scalise, McCarthy, Scanlon, Jeffries, Schakowsky, Jeffries, Schiff, Jeffries, Snyder, Jeffries, Skolton, Jeffries, Schreier, Jeffries, Swikert, McCarthy, Austin Scott, McCarthy, David Scott, Jeffries, Scott of Virginia, Jeffries, Self, Jordan, Sessions, McCarthy, Sewell, Jeffries, Sherman, Jeffries, Cheryl, Jeffries, Simpson, McCarthy, Slotkin, Jeffries, Smith of Missouri, McCarthy, Smith of Nebraska, McCarthy, Smith of New Jersey, McCarthy, Smith of Washington, Jeffries, Smucker, McCarthy, Sorensen, Jeffries, Soto, Jeffries, Spamberger, Jeffries, Sparts, McCarthy, Stansberry, Jeffries, Stanton, 
Jeffries. Stalber. McCarthy. Steele. McCarthy. Stefanik. McCarthy. Style. McCarthy. Stubbe. McCarthy. Stevens. Jeffries. Stewart. McCarthy. Strickland. Jeffries. Strong. McCarthy. Swalwell. Jeffries. Sykes. Jeffries. Takano. Jeffries. Tenney. McCarthy. Tanadar. Jeffries. Thompson of California. Jeffries. Thompson of Mississippi. Thompson of Mississippi. Jeffries. Thompson of Pennsylvania. McCarthy. Tiffany. McCarthy. Timmons. McCarthy. Titus. Titus. Talib, Jeffries, Takuda, Jeffries, Tonko, Jeffries, Torres of California, Jeffries, Torres of New York, Jeffries, Trahan, Jeffries, Trim. Jeffries, Turner, McCarthy, Underwood, Jeffries, Valadeo, McCarthy, Van Drew, McCarthy, Van Dyne, McCarthy, Ben Orden, McCarthy, Vargas, Jeffries, Vasquez, Jeffries, DC, Jeffries, Velasquez, Jeffries, Wagner, McCarthy. Wahlberg, McCarthy, Waltz, McCarthy, Wasserman Schultz, Jeffries, Waters, Jeffries, Watson Coleman, Jeffries. Weber of Texas, McCarthy, Webster of Florida, McCarthy, Winstrup, McCarthy, Westerman, McCarthy, Weston, Jeffries, Wild. Jeffries, Williams of Georgia, Jeffries, Williams of New York, McCarthy, Williams of Texas, McCarthy, Wilson of Florida, Jeffries, Wilson of South Carolina, McCarthy, Whitman, McCarthy, 
Womack, McCarthy, Yakum, McCarthy, Zinke, McCarthy. The reading clerk will now call the names of the representatives elect who did not answer the first call of the roll. Blumenauer. Blumenauer. Jeffries. Carter of Georgia. McCarthy. Cortez, Jeffries, Titus, Jeffries. Breaking news continues right now on ABC News Live. I'm Kira Phillips. The House Speaker race still up in the air as GOP infighting sinks McCarthy on the first three ballots now. The last time the vote for a new speaker went past the first ballot was 100 years ago in 1923. The losses here clearly amplifying how Republican infighting between moderates and hardliners will definitely complicate the GOP's majority in the House of Representatives. What happens next, besides more votes, we know that is a bit of an open question. NBC News, Jay O'Brien live on Capitol Hill. Uh, so, Jay, is it possible now that they will roll right into another round of voting, or is it possible that they could vote to adjourn? Do we know? They can vote to adjourn. There's got to be a majority to vote to adjourn. Uh, as of right now, all steam ahead to the fourth ballot, most likely, unless we hear some lawmaker make a motion to take a break from this, adjourn these proceedings, to step back a moment, and forgive me for looking down, I'm looking at my feet of the House floor right in front of me. Uh, I have to give credit to those two kids of whatever member-elect is sitting there 
Uh, members brought their kids earlier this morning. This is a day of celebration, usually, the day of the new Congress, and most of the kids left because we've gone so many ballots. It's been five hours now since the beginning of the new Congress at noon, and there's still a pair of kids sitting there on the House floor with their mother or father, who's a new member of Congress. Uh, all of that by way of saying this has been a long and drawn-out vote. McCarthy loses on the first ballot, loses on the second, loses on the third, and actually a vote defects from McCarthy on that third ballot. Representative Byron Donalds of Florida, who voted for McCarthy on the first ballot and the second ballot, said earlier in the day that he would leave or at least look around for other options on that third ballot, and he did, and he voted for Jim Jordan. We're seeing what we were seeing for the second ballot as well, which is that those Republicans who are opposing Kevin McCarthy are throwing their support behind Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan, someone who said he doesn't want to be the Speaker of the House. So the appearances now is that these Jim Jordan votes, the 20 of them, are protest votes against Kevin McCarthy because, again, Jim Jordan made it clear on the floor of the House before the second ballot as he was endorsing Kevin McCarthy that he does not want to be the speaker. He wants Kevin McCarthy to be the speaker. Another potential speaker-in-waiting, Steve Scalise, he's the one who nominated Kevin McCarthy for this third ballot, saying that he wants Republicans to get behind Kevin McCarthy. Nonetheless, there are now 20 House Republicans who have said they want someone for Speaker of the House other than Kevin McCarthy. And Kevin McCarthy, because of the House of the GOP slim majority in the House, can only afford to lose four votes. So he's not gaining any votes. He hasn't picked up any new votes between the first ballot and this last third ballot. Instead, he's losing votes. He lost that one vote from Byron Donalds. So he really has his work cut out for him. And again, as we've been saying, with each of these ballots, particularly as the opposition to McCarthy grows ever so slightly, his path to the speakership gets that much harder. So we're now in that period where they're counting the votes. We have a little bit of a break between the voting. So if there's any wheeling and dealing to be done, if there's any consensus candidate to emerge, now would be the time, unless they take a break and say, let's take a stab at this later on in the night or tomorrow. But again, there's no signs of that right now. Those are the two kids who really withstood this entire process, and good for them. They are watching history. We have not seen this for a hundred years, Kira. So kudos to them and their patience. I'm telling you, there's a special report uh, to fire up for extra credit when they go back to school tomorrow um, because it looks like they are the last two remaining kids in there. I did see a baby as well uh, hanging in there with the pacifier. Um, uh, don't, don't see that family anymore. If I was anymore. a kid, I'd be there too, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course you would. Of course you would. Um, and the teacher uh, would love you for it. So uh, Representative uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, putting out on social media, uh, Jay, if the base only understood that 19 Republicans voting against McCarthy are playing Russian roulette with our hard-earned Republican majority right now, this is the worst thing that could possibly happen. Playing Russian roulette with the Republican majority. What do you think? Yeah, and that's in keeping with, Green, with what Green told me on her way into the House floor around noon today. Some of her staunchest allies in Congress, Matt Gates being the most notable of them, have said they will never vote for Kevin McCarthy for Speaker of the House. Marjorie Taylor Greene has been vocally in support of Kevin McCarthy. I asked Green what she thought about that. She called the opposition to McCarthy, again from some of her staunchest allies, ridiculous. She has been discussing this notion that we've heard from McCarthy's backers as well, which is that if you don't support Kevin McCarthy and you're a Republican member of Congress, you endanger the leadership structure because you give Democrats an option to broker a deal with more moderate Republicans and perhaps pick a moderate Republican speaker or a, 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 even a Democratic speaker. I can tell you that there is no indication right now that that's going to happen. Uh, but the other thing we hear from uh, people who want Kevin McCarthy to be the speaker and want this process to be over is that the House floor is frozen right now. In in a new Congress, you can't do anything before you elect a Speaker of the House. You can't put the rules together. So right now, there are technically no rules on the House floor. You can't set up committees. You can't pass legislation. And there's a lot of day one pieces of legislation specifically that Republicans said they wanted to pass as soon as they took power. All of that is on pause right now as this battle for Speaker of the House plays out and drags on. And the more ballots that go, the more that pushes any GOP priorities further and further down the road because they've got to settle their first problem, which is who's going to lead them 
And, and right now, Kevin McCarthy still wants that to be him. He's showing no signs of backing down, but certainly he does not have anything near the votes right now. Representative Lauren Boebert's walking by me. Representative Boebert, is there anything Kevin McCarthy could do to earn your vote? You haven't heard anything from him. Any, but anything he could do? She said she hadn't heard anything from him. The indication she just gave me was no. Forgive me for that live moment of reporting. But there you go. One of the holdout votes saying, at least from her, there's nothing she's heard from Kim McCarthy uh, to work to earn her vote. And she's one of those 20 who's trying uh, or, or is against Kim McCarthy now. I'll tell you what, uh, Jay, if they're coming in and out of uh, chambers there, uh, coming off the floor and passing by, grab them. Uh, that's what we love about live TV. You're the best one to do it. Uh, so please, um, we would love to get comment from anybody uh, that's been there uh, for this for this third round of the speaker vote. Uh, also, ABC News political director Rick Klein has been watching all of this and, and just considering what Jay just said, Rick, I mean, this has to be an embarrassment for the GOP. I mean, they're just not on the same page here. Yeah, this is a debacle. It's a worst case scenario uh, to open up what should be a day of triumph, a day of doing the easy stuff, uh, just electing a leader after um, grappling with the disappointments of the last couple of months. This was the day where they just get to go in there and, uh, and start with a celebration. Instead, we've got five hours of chaos uh, with no real end in sight. And Kevin McCarthy, by the numbers that are on the screen right below me, uh, moving in the wrong direction. Uh, the, the only change in a vote has been an extra vote uh, that went against him. Uh, it could have been worse, uh, and maybe there's some comfort in McCarthy knowing that he's got that many people strongly on his side, but for the other side, that all they need to do is hold, hold out five votes to deny McCarthy the speakership. It's hard to look at what's transpired the last couple hours and not realize that they've got at least that, if not quite a bit more. And I think the McCarthy strategy of going ahead with this vote after vote uh, it, it raises a question about whether he had another plan in mind here that he hasn't hatched yet or whether they're going to have to, to, to reassess. I'll repeat what I said earlier, which is that the possibility of a break in the action has to be appealing to some folks. I'm not sure who it's good for or bad for, though. Uh, if, it, if, if it leaves McCarthy twisting in the wind and the Republicans without a House Speaker, that may not be good. Uh, testing the stamina of the other side might be part of the strategy that's, that's employed here. I, I continue to think there, there's a possibility of a deal cut with another name involved, but it, it's hard to see what else Kevin McCarthy can give short of surrendering the possibility of, uh, of, a, of a speakership uh, ending at a moment's notice by giving that power Power to any one member to call up that vote. That's the thing he's wanted to avoid. That's what he knows uh, would be the, the ultimate uh, win for Matt Gates and some of the, the holdouts on this. Uh, it seems like a process thing, but it's an important one if it gets down to governing. But there's no scenario that's a good one here for Republicans as, uh, as we enter now. It's just an un absolutely unprecedented fourth round of voting that's likely to come. And how long is it going to last? Will we go into five, six, seven? Who knows? Former Republican Congresswoman for Virginia, Barbara Comstock, uh, joining us now. A third vote, now lost, no speaker yet. Is there anybody that can bring Republicans together at this point, Barbara? Well, I think what is keeping the Kevin McCarthy Republicans together is mutual loathing of people like uh, Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert and Gosar. I mean, these are the members of Congress who are always speakers uh, and don't get anything done. So I do think uh, staying united against those 19, I mean, I know it's now 20, but um, they aren't gathering any steam either and they don't have a plan. So I do think that, you know, the safety in numbers and if they just stay committed to, hey, we're going to ride this out. Now, if the members aren't sworn in yet, what I'm not sure of, I don't know technically, do they even get paid for today? You know, uh, you know what, what happens if, if you go through these days and nothing's, you're not sworn in, you start talking about cutting pay, I think, and, and the staff gets impacted. So I think you're gonna have to inflict some pain here and, and hold out. And I think that's what Kevin needs to do because at this point, for the sake of the institution, he certainly has nothing more he can bargain with, with these dead enders um, and these anti-institutionalists. So that is, I think, what they have to keep doing. So Unless if he were there. And give it to somebody else and put all of his people behind some type of consensus candidate, but then you're letting those 19 when you win. So Barbara, if you were there right now on the floor, uh, and you were voting today, mm -hmm. if you had a chance to talk to Kevin McCarthy, what would you tell him right now? 
Oh boy. Well, I mean, I, I would have long before now. I would have not wanted him to be dealing with with these people and empowering them. I mean, back in 2015 and 16 and 17, when I was there, I didn't want these people empowered. So that is the problem that they have been empowered. So I think now is the time to stop this uh, the bleeding because it is just causing. It's it's bad for the institution. It's bad for Republicans. And uh, the only way to stop it is to just, you know, draw the line and say we're not going any further and we're not going to cave to these guys. Let's bring in former Democratic senator from North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp. And Heidi, it, it seems like, you know, McCarthy has played all his cards. So what do you think he needs to do now? Well, I, I think the card that he continues to play is I'm going to sit here until you come my way. And, you know, we'll see if he takes this to a fourth ballot. He lost one vote. That's not good. Um, but it wasn't a landslide against him. And so how many people who are supporting him are now coming to him saying, it's time for you to come to a plan B? You don't see that on the floor. You see Kevin uh, checking his uh, his cell phone to uh, ensure he's communicating with a lot of his supporters. Who knows what's being said? But if you're him, the only control you have right now is control over the floor. And he can keep people voting unless there's a motion to adjourn that gets a majority vote. What I think is interesting watching the floor action is it seems like the Democrats are trying to come up with a strategy. They aren't just sitting and being passive. You see the leader, uh, Jeffries, talking to his staff, talking to other members, talking to Jim Claiborne. We'll see if something comes from that. But what I would expect is, is what uh, uh, McCarthy will do is simply sit in that chair, take another vote, see if they nominate someone else. You can say, look, you know, you already lost, but you know who the big loser is? It's Jim Jordan. He's gotten 20 votes. And I, you know, just to put this in perspective, it would be like six Democrats on the Senate side selecting the majority leader. Um, that the anomaly here is the Speaker of the House is that, that the leadership is voted by the entire body, not just your caucus. But if this were a caucus vote, clearly uh, uh, Leader McConnell would be the Speaker of the House. And so, you know, he's got time on his side. He can sit there and just keep taking these votes and frustrate the other side. They also have time on their side. So the question is, when does it break? Who, who blinks first and who comes across the table to talk first? And what do you think, Heidi, of this tweet that Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene put out and also told our Jay O'Brien that this is, you know, Republicans playing Russian roulette with their hard-earned Republican majority right? Well, number one, you know, first impressions are everything. This is the first impression of House leadership. It's not good. The public is watching this saying they can't even agree among themselves. And so she's not wrong. I, I think I think it, there's a tendency to always be a little overly dramatic on one day's events. This may look different in a week, but I, I think at this point, first impressions matter. And the first impressions of the new House leadership is not very good in the American public side. Yeah, I mean, the question is if indeed this, you know, Kevin McCarthy battles this out, he ends up, who knows, going to fourth, fifth, sixth, we don't know how many votes, right? But does uh, win, kind of like the last person standing here. Um, you know, then the question is, how is he going to hold the party together? I mean, we've already talked about the fact that you said he's already not respected. He may be a nice guy and well-liked by people, not, not respected. Uh, a lot of uh, members using the word embarrassment, uh, this, whole, this whole scene today. Um, it, it just seems like he's going to just continue to have an even more difficult time leading, uh, inspiring, moving forward. Well, I, I think, I think, you know, and I've said this already um, during the last four hours that we've been talking, I think him standing firm actually wins him some points. I think him not capitulating, not compromising, as Barbara was saying, you know, not letting that, that small minority of his caucus win, I think that helps build. If he can come out of this victorious, I think, I think that, uh, you know, he has a better position than if he had won by one on the first ballot and had agreed to a rules change that would allow him to be taken out by the vote of just one person uh, bringing it to the floor.
Rick, what do you think? I think he's going to have to reassess his options in a big way. We just heard from uh, Congressman Donalds, the one who has now flipped sides, uh, the only change in votes. He is now calling for a recess and a huddle to re-strategize. Look, McCarthy's going to have to pull something out right now. You can't just keep doing the same thing and expect you're going to have a different outcome. These 19, now 20 holdouts are not going anywhere. And keep in mind, they only have to have five. It's not a fair fight if the other side is only trying to deny something. So they have leverage in these negotiations. McCarthy's trying to pretend as if that didn't exist going ahead, trying to keep his, his, his folks on, on task as much as possible. But he has to acknowledge this reality or you're going to see more frustration grow in Republican ranks. If he's able to survive this, I think Senator Heitkamp is right. He might be stronger for the experience. But I do not see a path right now. And frankly, I'm surprised. I thought there would be a more of a crack among the, those 19 and now 20 holdouts. That has not happened. Uh, and, and what they object to primarily isn't to the process, isn't the rule. It's McCarthy himself. That might be the one problem right now that is unfixable for Kevin McCarthy. So are there any concessions that he can make to get more Republicans on board at this point? Certainly, conceivably, the, the, the concessions that he's, that he's been offered around uh, just one member being able to, to essentially have a vote of no confidence and oust him with a, with a simple majority vote, that's out there for the taking. But do you want a speakership where that exists? McCarthy's answer to that has been no. He called out the members of Astrid to say, saying they've been selfish on this, saying that calling him out for trying to work with Democrats. Uh, McCarthy has tried to play the confident hand in this, that he's got this. But, you know, five hours plus now of voting with no resolution doesn't do a lot to fuel confidence. Uh, and it's about more than a, than a bad first impression. This is going to be an extremely difficult Republican majority to govern with this very narrow majority and an empowered small band of, uh, of members who might feel like they've got the opportunity to block him at any turn. So how much longer, Rick, will the House stay in session today? Could they stay in session today? $50 million they could, question. <laughs> they can do whatever they want. Look, look at the great thing about being in the House, Kira, you get to make your own rules, you get to make your own hours. Uh, they can go home anytime they want. They can, they, I think that, look, the, the, the break is out there as an opportunity, as a possibility. I do not know who wants it more or who fears it more. Uh, clearly, there's uh, pluses and minuses to, to, to pulling that option at this, at this stage. Um, there are people that are calling for it and saying you have to reassess. Uh, if you're McCarthy, Maybe you don't think you can gain much from this and it just leaves you there twisting overnight, uh, showing how, how powerless you are, uh, just giving other, other forces to intervene. Uh, meanwhile, if you're, uh, if you're Matt Gates and, the, and the, the, the holdouts, you feel like you've got some momentum on your side and, and you go from 19 to 20, maybe you can get that up to 21, 22 to really send a message. Uh, that I, I don't know who wants it right now, who wants to call that time out. Um, uh, you know, and, there's, and there's really isn't a way to settle this. It's not like uh, after X number of tie votes, it goes to like you know, sudden death overtime or penalty shots or anything. They have to figure it out at some point. <laughs> oh, if it could only be that easy. Uh, Rick, thank you. <laughs> Jay, so what do you think? Uh, how long can this go and, and what are Dems doing now? Well, Rick it has a great point there. It can go as long as, as lawmakers want it to go. They could vote to adjourn. Uh, it needs a majority to vote to adjourn. You need the same number of lawmakers to vote to adjourn as you do to elect a Speaker of the House. Uh, so you can imagine there's some GOP opposition to adjourning potentially because one side may feel that they have uh, the edge on there. They have, they have the momentum. Um, that is one element of this. The other part of all of this is that we go until we elect a Speaker of the House. So it, it's somewhat incumbent upon Republicans to decide uh, if they want to deal, um, if, they're wa if there's going to be a consensus candidate. My colleague Rachel Scott very aptly uh, often refers to this a as a staring contest, and that's a very excellent description because both sides here have the ability to essentially say, okay, we're backing down, we're backing Kevin McCarthy, or we're backing a consensus candidate, or we're moving away from the only Kevin group and joining you know, some kind of a more moderate stance. Uh, and so everyone's in their camps here staring at each other and deciding who's going to bend first. Um, and what we've heard from the Never McCarthy Republicans is that they are not going uh, to move. At least the five of them who started this weeks in, ago, months ago, saying they would not vote for Kevin McCarthy under any circumstances, they have said that there's nothing at this point that they can do uh, to change their votes. We've also heard uh, from Byron Donalds, who was the first uh, Republican to change his vote on the second ballot to the third ballot. He voted from a McCarthy on the first and second ballot, he voted for um, uh, Jim Jordan on the third ballot. And one of the things we saw 
in that interval is Byron Donalds came out and said it's clear Kevin McCarthy doesn't have the votes. So the question again becomes, are there other lawmakers that take Donalds' cue and say they don't believe McCarthy has the votes? Does that end things earlier? Uh, to your question also about Democrats, right now, it's incumbent upon House Democrats to, if they want to deprive Kevin McCarthy of the speakership or make lives harder for Republicans, to keep their members in that chamber and voting. You do not need to win a majority of all the members. You do not need to win a majority of the members who are physically in the chamber. You need to win a majority of the members who are voting who are actively voting. And that is something that if Democrats start to peel away and leave as the evening gets longer, that lowers McCarthy's threshold to become potentially uh, the next speaker. And so that is something that Republicans need to keep, or Democrats have to keep their members together um, in order to make sure that McCarthy's current math of 218 stays that math and that is, his, that is the threshold he needs to meet. So how about the new members today? All excited, bring in their family members, their spouses, their parents, whomever. They're supposed to celebrate. It's supposed to be a big day. I wonder if they're sitting there thinking, oh boy, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Yeah, and, and we're getting some reporting now, but in terms of what did we get ourselves into, that uh, there's conversations. Um, again, it is unclear as to what that means, but there's conversations about adjourning. When, how long does that adjournment last? How long is that break for? That is unclear. And under the current rules, or I should say the lack thereof, because until you elect a speaker, typically there are, technically there are no rules in the House, um, you have to pick a date and time to adjourn to. You can't just adjourn and say, we'll come back when we all want to. You have to say, the House is adjourned until this date at this time. So if there is some kind of a break that lawmakers take, we will know when they're coming back, and that will put lawmakers on the clock. It will put McCarthy's team on the clock. It will put the Never McCarthy group on the clock because they've got to either whip votes, get people on board with them, or at least in the case of the Never McCarthy group, stay together for however long that break is and not bend or break and not get in anybody else's boat, stay in your boat um, in order to, um, uh, to withstand anything that might come in the next few hours. To the new members, this is a long process and it, it, this is a day of typical celebration. You bring your family, you're sworn into Congress. Voting for speaker is pro forma, it's par for the course. Everybody usually knows who's gonna be the next speaker of the House. In this case, there is not a member of Congress that has gone through multiple ballots for speaker in a century, in a century, nine ballots in 1923. So that is something that these members are confronting now. The political reality of this, they've gotta whip votes, they've gotta figure out if you're a Republican who your next speaker of the House is gonna be, but also they are watching history play out uh, with their very own eyes as the clerk prepares here, uh, it appears to read the results of the third vote, Kira. Let's listen in. Still discussing a little business there. Uh, when she does uh, start to to speak again, Jay, we'll we'll, we'll take it, of course, um, to hear kind of the final uh, vote tally on the third speaker vote there that uh, Kevin McCarthy McCarthy uh, still did not win, which means it's going to go into a fourth round. And of course, we're waiting to see if they're going to vote to adjourn, and then you'd have to set a date on when to come back. Uh, but Jay, I mean, that begs the question: if you can't, if you can't come to a consensus on who to vote for for speaker. How are you going to come together right now to vote on an adjournment and then set a date for when they're going to come back and try this again? And that's the exact issue that the entire House faces. And I can tell you that the earlier conversations amongst that never McCarthy group of Republicans were they felt they wanted to keep voting. So I was told months ago when the initial plans of this taking on Kevin McCarthy were getting drafted that they felt that Republican leadership, Kevin McCarthy's team, would try to force them off the floor to try to broker some backroom deal or have some backroom discussion to convince these never McCarthy 
McCarthy uh, Republicans to finally end up backing McCarthy. What we're now seeing is that so so uh, the Never McCarthy group wanted to stay on the floor and they, and keep voting because they felt with each passing ballot McCarthy got weaker and weaker and weaker. So the question becomes is that still what they view as their best strategy to stay on the floor and keep voting and keep trying to peel lawmakers away from Kevin McCarthy. The political reality of this, the numbers reality of this is that McCarthy has not picked up a single vote since around noon today when the House started voting. He hasn't convinced anyone that wasn't for him to be for him. He's only lost one lawmaker, Byron Donalds, and now you've got 20 Republicans saying that they do not want to back Kevin McCarthy. Is there anything that he can offer to change the calculus here? As I've been saying to you all day, I've been speaking with sources who are close to those five House Republicans, and one of them told me as early as last night that they didn't believe there was any concession McCarthy could make that would sway those five core Never McCarthy laws. Lawmakers. So the proof will be in the pudding in the next few hours because we are getting to that point here where uh, you are really putting the strains on this process because, again, you have not seen lawmakers confront something like this uh, for more than 100 years. And, and as I'm speaking, by the way, and they just cut away from it uh, on the House feed, but uh, Matt Gates is speaking with members on the floor, so you're seeing those Never McCarthy Republicans talk to other members. Uh, there is Matt Gates on the House floor. So you're seeing that work being done. Kevin McCarthy, I can tell you from watching him firsthand, is a master of working the floor of the House of Representatives. When you sit in the gallery of the House and you watch Kevin McCarthy, every time you look up and look back at Kevin McCarthy, he's talking to a new member. So he knows how to work the floor. He knows how to work votes in his favor and try to push votes towards the direction that he wants. But the question that he's confronting now is, is there enough that he can do to push those votes in his direction? Is that talent that he has to whip votes enough or is the rubber going to meet the road at some point here? Is he going to mix my metaphors here, but is he going to run out of road here uh, and eventually have to give in, Kira? Well, Heidi, what do you think? How can Dems help Republicans here? Well, I mean, I think that they're tired and they had parties planned uh, for their swearing in and they are concerned that uh, they're starting to look very, very bad. And so we'll see. And it, I would remind you that the Democrats could vote for a motion to adjourn. So that would be a, I think that's what the Democrats are probably talking about, whether they would support a motion to adjourn if it's made. So we'll see what happens here. But again, you know, McCarthy seems to be pretty resolute at this point. All right, let's listen in. The tellers agree in their tallies that the total number of votes cast is 434, of which the Honorable Hakeem Jeffries of the State of New York has received 212. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the State of California has received 202. The Honorable Jim Jordan of the State of Ohio has received 20. No person having received the majority of the whole number of votes cast by surname, a speaker has not been elected. For what purpose does the gentleman from Oklahoma rise? Move to adjourn until noon tomorrow. The question is on the motion. The question is on the motion. All those in favor say aye. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. All those opposed, no. No. The ayes have it. The, ayes have it. the motion is adopted. The motion is adopted. The House stands adjourned, until, house stands adjourned until noon tomorrow. Okay, Jay O'Brien, there you have it. I was not expecting that to happen so quickly. After the day we have had, <laughs> I am shocked. But you heard everybody say, tomorrow noon, yes. Only one person saying no. They're all going after that person uh saying, are you crazy? 
I am so rarely surprised, Kira, <laughs> these days. Um, and if you, if you think bipartisanship is dead, just listen to that vote where everybody <laughs> said, yes, we want to go home. Um, because it's been five and a half hours now since the new Congress began. And they are now adjourning. Uh, sun, the sun will set on Washington, D.C. tonight. A new day will begin. And there will not be a Speaker of the House. I have to look back at my records, but I don't even think in 1923 it lasted more than one day. Again, do not quote me on that. I have to check that out. I know the longest one was in the 1850s. That lasted nearly two months. So there is precedent for going multiple days without a Speaker of the House. But this is a, 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 a significant surprise. It came from Tom Cole, uh, who made that motion to adjourn. You heard a resounding yes from the members in that chamber. Again, only about one by my ear said no. I want to stay and keep voting. Uh, so what happens now overnight? Is, does Kevin McCarthy continue to work the vote? He almost certainly will. Uh, is there some kind of plan that emerges from McCarthy and his team to work to get uh, some of those 20 Republicans who have voted against McCarthy to change their minds? He can only afford to lose four votes and 20 people said they don't want him, or 20 Republicans rather, so they don't want him to be the Speaker of the House. Uh, the Never McCarthy group has said to me in the past, prior to this vote as they were talking about their plans, that their biggest position in all of this is what's called, quote unquote, pain resistance. Meaning they believe that when there is an adjournment, again, they were speaking in the future tense because they were making their plans weeks ago. They believed that when there was an adjournment, they would be subject to a lot of pressure from McCarthy, from Republican leaders, even perhaps from former President Trump, who has been both publicly and privately supporting McCarthy for speaker. So you can expect that pressure campaign, if it exists, to churn up overnight and to put the pressure on some of those lawmakers resisting Kevin McCarthy if it does emerge that Kevin McCarthy is going to stay in this fight and still try to be Speaker of the House. So this is going to be a, a quiet night for those who are watching the House floor. There's going to be nothing going on there. But if you're a member of Congress or a member of the press or interested in this process, this is going to be a very active night where we try to figure out by noon tomorrow is there some kind of consensus pick for Speaker of the House amongst the Republicans? Or Kevin McCarthy, can he pull this out, Kira? So, Heidi, what does Kevin McCarthy do between now and noon tomorrow? Well, the first thing he has to do if he intends to stay in this is shore up his 202 votes and make sure they're going to stay with them. And so, you know, I think that that he believed he was probably running the risk given fatigue that he would uh, lose another two, three votes. That erosion would really hurt him. And then I think he has to have a, as we used to say in the business, a come to Jesus moment. Can he actually win? And, and I think it was demonstrated today that that path forward is pretty tough for him and that it's going to be very, very difficult for him to persuade enough Republican votes. So who could he live with as, as the future speaker? And the problem then for the other side is, who's the consensus? I mean, Jim Jordan only got 20 votes. I mean, I don't think he's a viable alternative. So who's the alternative to McCarthy? And I think that's the challenge the other side has. They can they can be the party of no and the caucus of no, but they have to come up with an alternative and they haven't come up with an alternative that could get more than 20 votes. So Barbara, the, the next multi-million dollar question is, can Republicans get their ducks in a row by noon tomorrow? Well, I think you're going to see uh, probably Jim Jordan on Fox News tonight, uh, probably saying, listen, I don't want this. I support Kevin McCarthy. And he's going to be saying those 20 votes for him need to be supporting Kevin McCarthy. And he'll go hard on that. I think Fox News, has been, you know, you've had people like Mark Levin, you know, pretty hardcore Trumpy person attacking these guys, calling them knuckleheads and other names that Mark Levin is known to do, attacking these, uh, you know, Matt Gateses and Lauren Boberts for not supporting McCarthy. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be ratcheted up. Um, so, you know, they've got to, I think, since these guys are the people who like to go on TV, they're performance artists. The place to hit them the hardest is, uh, you know, fr from the from the media standpoint, and that's where I think they're probably going to get hit tonight. 
um, get the phone calls going into them. There's, there's nothing really to do in twisting their arms. I mean, Jim Jordan can tell them to, you know, lay off of him because Jim Jordan would get far fewer votes than Kevin McCarthy because there's certainly a large part of the uh, caucus that would never vote for a Freedom Caucus member. Um, and certainly, um, you know, Jim Jordan's strength has been that he's been supporting Kevin McCarthy, not because he's a Freedom Caucus member. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Jay, Heidi, Barbara, thank you all so much. Make sure you get a good night's sleep tonight. Hydrate. It's going to be probably a pretty long day tomorrow. Thank you so much for all the support and help throughout the day. And thank you all for streaming with us. We will have more complete coverage tonight, of course, on Prime with Lindsay Davis. But first, we do want to take you back to The View after a quick break.